Welcome to Blast Premiere 2023. Twelve Blast Premier teams will begin their quest for victory in a season group state. Teams seed each other, creating three groups of four. These teams then play out a double elimination best of three group stage. The three group winners go straight to the season final. The remaining nine teams will fight it out for three season final spots in the cross group gauntlet. The six teams that failed to qualify for the season final will be cast into the showdown, where they must fight to survive in a merciless single elimination format, where they will be met by 10 teams from open qualifiers from around the world. Each seasonal showdown will be split across two regional tournaments. Eight teams will compete within a European and CIS bracket, whilst the remaining eight will battle in the Americas and rest of the world bracket. Winners of each showdown will secure their place in the season final to join the six teams from the group stage. The eight finalists will face off in a GSL format, leading into a single elimination playoff bracket with quarters, semifinals, and grand finals. The champions of the season finals will be joined by exceptional skilled teams, including winners of the CS GO Majors, ESL Pro Leagues, as well as the two teams that topped the Global Leaderboard. The Global Leaderboard is a year-long point scoring system that takes into account the performance of Counter-Strike teams from leading tournaments from around the world. Teams hoping to qualify through the Global Leaderboard will have until November 28th to claim as many points as they can in a number of events. In the event of any duplicate winners, spots will be open to those who have fought their way to the top of the leaderboard. These eight champion teams will come together for one last clash as they battle it out for a prize pool of $1 million. Join us in 2023 as victors are crowned and heroes are made. of the Blast Premier Circuit and the final Tier 1 event of the year. We are live from Abu Dhabi for the Blast Premier World Final. All year long, the best teams have sacrificed. They have fought hard. They have lost. We've seen tears. We've seen emotions. We've seen so many of these players lift trophies. And we've got some of the best teams that made their way here fighting to the nail. Are you, are you ready? JK, yes, delivers a triple. Oh, 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 oh. What a flick from Yakinda. It's the Blast World Finals show match. Dream Team and Team Mina. Ooh, smoky in here. We love this one. We know what it is. We've seen it before. Kenny looks like he. Oh. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, you the nades, nades the rating, the the nades. Kenny's hiding on the ground. He's, he's on the, the, the ground. He's, he's on the, the floor. <laughs> it's never been done like this before. Kenny, yes. Let's do this, Abu Dhabi. Last grand finals of the year. And here comes Nico's rifle. It's headshots galore. All three dead. Believe your eyes. Abu Dhabi with the newest champions. G2 do the unthinkable. The last champions of 2022 is G2. Finally, it's coming. For a long time, it's a dream for me to play in front of the home crowd in Paris. The dream is coming true. The major's winner will always be remembered. To win a major would mean everything. It will be the most exciting major ever. Making a transfer is 
a big decision for a lot of teams. Like if you're a top five team and you want to change a player, that is a huge risk. When we talk about transfers, there has to be some sort of disconnect between expectations of a team, goals, and what is that frustration or that disappointment is always the source of any kind of transfer. To make a good transfer good, I feel like needs to have a lot of discussion and needs for you to think that it's going to work in the long run. So I think it's very key to know first like which role do you need the new player to fill in your team. I mean obviously the main one is like if they fit in the team role wise, you don't want like two people doing the same job on the team. Uh, most teams try to balance it out with like how people play and try and find like the ideal situation. A huge factor is of course, is he working out socially with his uh, teammates? And you need to know how he is as, as a person, not only as a player, but also as a person, because he needs to fit, fit into the team. The best ever, oh my God. When it comes to the best transfer, there's an obvious choice. If you think about the Astralis era, that's one of the best. Kirby, who kind of initiated that move, willing to move away from the Astralis, and Magis comes in. I think it worked out so well because he was exactly the missing piece that they needed to fill out the puzzle. I think he played perfect roles that they were, they were missing in the team, both uh, offensively and defensively. Unsuspectingly, they become the absolute team that will terrorize everybody. Uh, went on to create the era, win all of these majors. Historically, that has to be the most successful transfer we've seen. In 2022, Rob's joining phase definitely made all the difference in the world for them. Um, Kerrigan finally had last piece of the puzzle. I mean, they won the major after he was on the team for like, what, six months? Uh, I would say the best transfer in 2022 is definitely uh, Monacy. I feel like something I got to be a part of for, for a small time was Monesi to G2. And I feel like he proved himself last year. And I think it's only going to do better. He's young, he's quick, he's an opper. Uh, he has insane movement. It's one of very many clutches. For us, when we changed Jabby in, instead of Refresh, we wanted some like a new boost to the team. I think a lot of people doubted their decision when they removed Refresh. First event with Yabi went horribly wrong. Uh, last place in the main stage of Cologne, of course, but they kept on believing in their project. We could see how they ended up the year, winning in Copenhagen, of course, the grand final in Rio. And as far as I'm concerned, it's also one of the, the most successful changes we've had in 22. Hedrick to NIP is a very exciting transfer. He's like uh, the same type of prospect that Monacy was last year. Nip have needed an opera for so long because S-Tag was kind of forced into it. And then they had Rez opping for a little bit. So I guess role-wise, Tetrick makes the most sense for Nip. I think they're going to be a lot stronger now. I think one team that maybe has benefited from staying together is maybe G2 is a long shot, but I think they played really well at uh, the Blast World Final. I think Liquid can still be a strong team. If Yekindar just keeps doing what he's doing, just fragging out everyone, then I think they can still be a good team. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to start the season. I'm just feeling super excited. They, as well as us and all the teams who picked up a new player, they're trying to prove it now. The most important aspect of being an Arbor is obviously like individual mechanical skill, but there's a lot of layers to it. How you can search frags, how you can make entries for your team. Oh, the <laughs> snap out of Monacy! I think the most important aspect of being an opper is being unpredictable, because being predictable means that a team can counter you very easily. Wiz, good support, gets himself a second and a third. What's really important is that you need to have very good communication. Dexter is now on his own. It's all on his shoulders. Oh, he's hitting some crazy oh, shots. Okay. No scope on top. Some players play aggressive. Some players play like more passive and uh, just like playing the structure with their team. To come into a team and, and instantly occupy the role as an AWP player, especially if you're a rookie, is incredible tough. And the first time I joined, I was not even upping on the team, all of us upping. And then uh, Nico said after some time that, yeah, let's try you as upper. I think the most hardest part was getting used to upping in a team. Broke now, it's all on Jade. It's just like a running no score. <laughs> Prime simply, like in 2018, 2019, I was watching him and uh, I just liked the aggression uh, of his style and uh, just kind of kind of tried to play it like that. When we played in uh, Navi third roster. Uh, I played with Monacy and team, and we like swapped on some maps. Some maps he played main map, some maps I played main map. 
I started playing with him and Ayo Junior I don't know, since I was 14 years old. Like I'm proud of him that he's an NIP now and I'm really happy. You can see my smile, I don't know. I think that definitely is one of the most delicate weapons in terms of balancing in CSGO because kind of the overall aspect of the gun is just unique in this game. The nerf coming in for the AWP I actually personally like a lot. Uh, it, it doesn't change that much. Uh, instead of having 10 bullets you have 5. Sometimes I had like even like situations when I forgot like I have 5 bullets and then when I'm shooting my, my last bullet like what, what's going on? I just opened Reddit and I find the topic uh, about uh, one before on Anubis. That's after update. In situation one versus four, I had only four bullets. So if you miss any of these bullets now, you have no chance to win the round. It adds a little bit of a higher skill ceiling, I would say, to the AWP players. Those who are consistently hitting shots instead of just taking random shots through the smokes and wasting bullets, so to speak. I think I have kind of a really important role in my eyes of becoming um, a good North American opera. But I think that for me right now, I just need to kind of just work on getting better every month, every day. Before like NIP, I wanted to play for an uh, international team, at least for a good experience. And of course, I think we have a good roster and we win titles, you know. I see people watching me around, like on the stage, and uh, it helps me to play my game. <laughs> Maybe I'm too confident to say that I don't have pressure on stage. Those who are able to withstand the pressure, those who are able to maneuver around the chaos with all the utility, today are exceptionally skilled players. I think winning championship uh, roster is a lot of things coming together. The expectations for each other is high. It's like if you want to be the best, you need to go that extra step. For me, what makes championship roster is to have a team that functions in and out of the server. Everyone needs to be like the same sort of motivation on the team. If you're irritated with each other all the time, then you're not going to really get anywhere. The level throughout the years has definitely changed. If you watch games from like eight years ago, you can just laugh at it because people were just weren't as good back then as they are today. Because now everybody knows what to do when anything happens. CS as a whole has gotten a lot more defined. There's a lot more like nuances, things that go into building a good team and the way that the game is played. It's harder to stay on the top. Because everybody's working hard, it's very easy to work from behind to set a target. This is where we need to be. And now we're there. How do you act as a leader and as a team? And how do you keep everyone motivated to think bigger? The next two years will show is it gonna remain the same or is there going to be a team now that is gonna be one step ahead of everyone else? I think championships teams over the years have changed. I think we look at the domination from the beginning of Cisco of the Fnatic and NIPs, right? I think now it's very hard to, to do what Astralis did. They definitely changed the way how people look at CS, how they build their team and how important things are out of the server too. That's definitely the most important era I think that really took CS to the next level. Like these guys dominated for like so long and everyone took everything from them. I just feel like as a team they just were just a really well oiled machine. Like it could just become, it could just come down to like mentalities, like they, they're just all on the same wavelength. This year is going to be really interesting to see which team will come out on top. I can't really rule out anyone, honestly. Like, I saw how many different teams won a trophy last year. The top five or top six even, top seven, they can all win a trophy. I, I still think it's pretty much an open playing field. Um, I think we don't know which teams will come out on top. There's definitely some teams that have more to show, especially we are one of them. I think G2 is going to be punching upwards as well. I think they have a super talented lineup. Obviously hard work ahead for everyone. Everything is up for grabs. One win at Katowice, if you're top six team, you're number one, one team in the world. And now you start rolling on momentum. You also have to see who can kind of remain on top, because in my opinion, from past experience, making it to the top is one thing, staying there is a completely another thing. Finally, it's coming. For a long time, it's a dream for me to play in front of the home crowd in Paris. The dream is coming true. The major winner will always be remembered. To win a major would mean everything. It will be the most exciting major ever.
Blast premiere is coming to North America. NACS is back, baby. NACS is back on home turf. People have been waiting a long time. The Blast stage is something that they've never experienced. CSGO has come to the nation's capital. Blast premiere, Washington, D.C. More spring final spots claimed. Neither of these teams can afford to lose that game. Heroic, the current reigning world number ones. I'm ready to see Heroic come out in full force right here. I'm ready to see Stown once again. And I'm ready to see if Heroic actually is ready to be the best team in the world. Katie in the one-man army. Two kills already to his name. Three kills. Oh my god! Oh my god! 1v5! An absolute beast! I'm so impressed. The level that Big Red showed defied all of the odds. Easy! Taps in! Commits for the spray down. If you had blinked, you would have missed it. I think that this is an opportunity for OG to still keep fighting for the spring finals. OG gonna have to start off hot in this one. The case for OG is almost always the same. They are looking to take down top teams. Excellent tracking! Even better no scopes! And the shots that follow! Dexter, an animal! Dexter, the destroyer! The stars are lining for Astralis. The man of the hour has to be Device. Which gives Device a chance to come through smoke. So this goes perfectly. Oh. More Counter-Strike on the cards indeed, as this is the day of eliminations. Qualification for Spring Finals, overcoming their demons. For both these teams hoping to dodge the pit of the showdown. It's the final day of the Blast Premier Spring Groups and the final chance for our remaining teams to be making it all the way to Washington. With four teams already cementing their spots for the Spring Finals, expect blood, sweat and tears to be going down on the server today as they will be battling for the final two. Joining myself, Rose Pierce. As always, Maniac Pimp uh, down here for the final day. The in final day? Is that yeah. really the final day? I can't believe it. I can't believe we're actually going to have six teams going to Washington by then. It's been a long week. Oh, yeah. A long couple yeah. of weeks. My point is not been a week. It's been way longer than that. It's incredible. Time has like stopped here. So what were your highlights coming off of yesterday? Because man, that was an absolute marathon day of Counter-Strike, obviously starting off uh, with Astralis taking on NIP. Yeah, I think that game was actually relatively high quality. Yeah. Uh, we took a couple of conclusions from it. The first one being Astralis on the CT side mean business. They're very serious clients. And once again, the blame of device duo was impossible to negotiate with on the CT side on multiple different maps. But still, on Ancient, they surprised me. A strong T side, that's definitely where they made the difference uh, with NIP. And now this team, which is arguably at the very beginning of a new chapter, could qualify for Washington. And then we move on down to Na'Vi versus Complexity, where Na'Vi did indeed qualify for Washington. Uh, but it wasn't clean, Jacob, and it certainly wasn't pretty. It wasn't clean at all. Na'Vi came dangerously close to being eliminated yesterday. I would almost argue that Complexity should have won, being up 14 to 8 on the third deciding map. Na'Vi pulled off an amazing comeback. Electronic Symbol in particular stepped up when it needed the most, but it wasn't a pretty outlook for Na'Vi. They've been struggling from start to finish in this tournament, but there's something to be said about 
Charlotte team in a deep, deep crisis, still getting the job done, still qualifying, but wasn't pretty for Navi. Yeah, for complexity, that certainly was earth shattering, heartbreaking indeed, particularly as they lose out on a potentially that spot on home soil for the spring finals. But I believe, Maniac, we will be seeing them gracing the stage in our CS Money Play of the Day, because plenty of highlights coming out of complexity. Oh, the last one, the last one, we're going to be presenting you out coming one tonight, but for now, it is Halzer in a third position so with the ugliest crosshair there currently is in the meta of Counter-Strike. But you know what? If that works for him, he's going to clutch like this with the Glock. Who am I but a peasant to criticize? Should be illegal. Should be illegal. Something that police. isn't illegal is Res Easy coming in for NIP in this regard. With the USP having a fantastic round, a fantastic start to Anubis. Oh, sorry, that's ancient. A couple of nice kills coming in, but look at the position here and the last couple of kills. One bullet, boom. One bullet, boom. The preciseness of Res coming out here was just beautiful. <sighs> Absolutely magnificent. But no better than Grim which is the CS Money Play of the Day. One of the heroes, the sad heroes, I should say, of yesterday with that ace on overpass. You see, you have a look at the scoreline, and this is when he was really putting his best foot forward, trying to get complexity to that slot. That was beautiful from Grim. He even gave us the th double thumbs up. That is really an OG. I mean, that's that's boomer celebration right there. Something even my my older brother would do. But you know what? If you're gonna haste, I'll pass it on. <laughs> Breakout event from Grim, right? Breakout event. He was fantastic yes. from start to finish for complexity. Deserves an awful lot of credit. I'm so sad for him. Unfortunately, yeah. he wasn't able to make it through, right? Oh. He deserved it. The team, maybe not so much, but Grim. What an event. Yeah, of course, Complexity uh, will be gracing the stage at the showdown with that last chance to be making it forward to the spring finals. But let's look at the teams that have already netted their spot there. Uh, let's start off with Group A to see exactly how that one was going down. Of course, it was Vitality to claim a spot, only dropping one single map to Heroic in that grand final. Oh man, Jacob, consistent form from Vitality for once. Started out crazy, EG beating Heroic, but as you said, the main takeaway for this group, Vitality, for the first time in a very, very long time, looking like a very solid Counter-Strike team. Let's not forget that final game against Heroic up there in the end of the bracket, it should have been a 2-0. Vitality were miles ahead on Nuke until a certain Cadian clutch happened, and then yeah. that put a spinner into the works, but they bounced back, won the third map, and I'm left with a very positive <laughs> feeling when it comes to your favorite team. Yeah, I I'm right there with you, Jacob. But I feel like one of, one of these persons, you know, who had a really bad relationship and isn't quite ready to love yet. Like, you know, you can take me on a date, but I don't know, I don't trust your intentions. That's how I feel with Vitality right now. Yes, yes, you have taken me on a very great date here in Copenhagen, it was awesome. You're trying to get me on a second one for dinner, I don't know. Last time you did that to me, you broke my heart. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really going step by step. Never go we back do to with some wine, some cheese, you know. The whole you thing. were feeling the taste. But uh, yeah, obviously they do make it to the spring final. So it was looking great for them, as it was for FaZe. I mean, they were looking incredible considering they came in with a stand in two. I mean, yes, they, they keep on going with the meme that, you know, you can replace pretty much anybody in FaZe and they will still get the job done. That was the case once yep. again. A rain, very, again, a very congratulations. Being a father to him and his family now, he couldn't be here. As attack step then did a great job and they still show everybody that you know we can teach them kids even with or without the full lineup let's test that let's test if they can win without kerrigan i want to see an event where face kind of showing up without all right kerrigan. I'll, I'll join. Yeah, i don't I'll like join. that i don't let's like get that the full test to see if it's actually the entire team that can pull it off because as you said amazing to see a team struggling with so many roster issues and every single time they use a stand-in they play at an incredible high level the final team making it through from the group stage side of things uh that was g2 down in group c which was just incredible to witness not dropping a single map throughout the duration of that group and really capitalizing upon uh, that first land trophy that they managed to lift before the player break. They are looking very scary right now. They just cemented themselves as one of the main favorites coming into Katowice as well, doing it very, very easily in this group, not dropping a single map. You have all the players showing up. You have Nico playing his best counter streak. You have Monesi, a guy that we haven't really spoken that much about throughout this event because it wasn't needed. Yeah. Still playing well, Hunter working well, Hooksy as an in-game leader. There's so many positives to take away, sorry, for G2 in this regard. And I'm starting to believe that as of right now, they're the best team in the world. As of right now, the most in shape team mm. in the entire world, the Abu Dhabi event, and now this, what's going to be at Katowice? We'll have to see. They're playing phenomenal Counter-Strike. There's not a way to put it. I, I do wonder what's going to happen when that bubble kind of breaks and bursts, right? If the next time they lose a series sure. and they kind of leave that high, crazy streak they're on, We'll see if they can maintain that level. But for now, all we can do is tip of the hand because they have been playing fantastic CS. Of course, there are three more spots to be awarded through the gauntlet. Two of them which will be awarded today, but it was yesterday. Obviously, we saw Na'Vi uh, managing to take that one. Unfortunately, heartbreak for basically every NA team. Even though the spring finals are going to be on their home soil, they will have to battle throughout the showdown to potentially be sealing a spot. But we said some more spots are up for grabs. Let's see exactly what's going to be going down today as the final day here in Copenhagen uh, graces us with two more best of threes, Jake. I think we're 
have a lot of Danish winners today. We have me, obviously, being on the desk, but we're also <laughs> going to have two teams making it to the next stage. So it's going to be a great day for you. Yeah, let's take a look at exactly what we have. Oh, actually, we're going to take a look at the teams we've the already teams. got in the spring final. Some question marks, which we're going to be awarding today. Matthew. Yes, we still have two uh, questions here. And if anything, the Navi versus Complexity game has taught us the lesson that we don't know exactly what to expect. We thought Navi would just smack the head out of Complexity, mm. and it turned out to be a crazy three-mapper series. So let's go into today with an open mind. Yeah, let's take a look at the showdown as well, because obviously there are two spots that we see in the bottom right hand side of our screen uh, that's either going to be from the america showdown or the european showdown um and it's looking very american already jacob i wouldn't necessarily be too afraid of dropping into this pool of team it's all the other teams that is coming into the showdown yes. that's going to be very scary because there's going to be one open bracket with a lot of quality european and north american teams for that matter the brazilians are coming into that bracket as well so it's going to be incredible tough if you drop down here you do not want to lose today single a limb as well out. that is absolutely savage you lose one game and you are out but unfortunately that is the case for the remaining teams coming up today it's going to be astralis taking on og to be rounding off the day but first it's big versus heroic who head stateside as Heroic and Big collide. The Danes already with one shot to claim their place in Washington as group champions had it stolen from their grasp by Vitality. Although no strangers to the showdown, this isn't a place that the Danes are going to be wanting to revisit. And if they can bring it to Big today, they won't have to. But for Big, uh, it's been a very up and down 
road so far, Jacob, looking dire straight in their group stage of things, but completely bouncing back versus Liquid. That was impressive. That was a beautiful performance coming out of big against Team Liquid because we were wondering coming into that game whether or not we're looking into a team that has stagnated, maybe entering a bit of a crisis. We were trying to find a lot of the positives in the sense that now they finally have the full roster together. No more stand-ins, no more, you know, unprepared showing up to events. We have had a little bit of a break. We had got B with them for a while now as well. So the full identity of big will have to be showcased during this event. That game against Team Liquid, that's a reference game. That's how I would like to see Big play at every single time. Obviously, that's not necessarily going to happen because I do think they overperformed a little bit, but yes. can we get just a little bit more of that Big Flair? That'd be nice. I echo your sentiment. That win against Liquid was so easy, so one-sided, yeah. that I struggle to believe there is any re replicability in that win. What we had seen in the first two losses from Big were signs here and there. We could see their map picks were relatively strong. We're talking 14, 16 loss, 14, 16 losses, and then they were paying the price of the shallow map pool uh, on the second map, but against Liquid. What the hell was that? Do we do we really believe Big can actually give a correction to Heroic the way they did to Liquid? That was a crazy game. Particularly on Anubis as well, because that was the first time we saw yeah. a, a Big race in the grounds of that new map. Obviously, Gobby was giving us a few tidbits saying, you know, we've been practicing a lot. It's a map we feel great on. And they actually managed to replicate that inside the server. That's where I saw a bit of that identity. A, a team coming in for the first time ever playing Anubis, and we knew they were going to be prepared, right? We knew that Tepson and Gobby would have been nerding it out on the server, figuring out a cool couple of defaults, figuring out a cool couple of ways of approaching the map and just threatening Team Liquid as well and making them look like a bunch of noobs on that server. I absolutely love that from Big Clan because that's what I used to expect from them. Good preparation, understanding of the map, and the fact that you can integrate a new map into the map pool like they did, beautiful. Look, you're talking about maps, Jacob, but open your eyes. Do not this adjust the setting. Interest. Big actually went for a vertigo pick against Heroic. No Heroic problem. going in for Ancient. It feels like both teams are just experimenting wildly into the dark. Yeah. I mean, we, we've seen We've seen Heroic, I think, only once on Vertigo, twice, if I'm not mistaken. They had the loss against Vitality, of course, but yeah. before that loss to Vitality, the record of Heroic on Vertigo is no joke. It's yeah. like five or six wins in a row against top-level, top-caliber opponents. So that is kind of a bluff. That is a curveball thrown by Big. And then the Ancient from Heroic, we yeah. have a bit of a bittersweet memory because that 14-16 loss to EG, but I don't think they were calibrated at all. So I'm a little bit bamboozled by the veto. Yeah, there's no punish pick, right? I feel like they share the same map pool in the sense that the good maps for Heroic are also some of the good maps for Big. So should allow us to get a high quality game. And as you said, Vertigo coming into the mix, and Anubis, oh, sorry, Ancient coming into the mix. It's very, it's two very cool maps and two maps you don't really get seen played time and time again. It's not like your likes of Mirage, Inferno, or Pass for that matter. So it's a nice spicy, spicy little video. Yeah. Yeah, very interested in that one indeed. Let's check in with Keto and Farvin to get their thoughts on Big's current map pool. Oh, how confident are you in your map pool now? Dust2 isn't there. We're not even seeing you pick Mirage today. Uh, I think we are like more confident than maybe the results showed it, like in the maps we lost. And also Anubis, I think we feel really good right now uh, on this map. And yeah, I think uh, we will see how, how we continue with seven maps or six. We don't know yet, but uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, I like it. So maybe we do see big play some seven maps in there after Gob shouting out towards the liquid. You got heroic today though, and while they're the number one team, I don't think they're as heavy favourites if you just look at the stats of it. How does it feel for you? Uh, when we looked at their games, like it looked like more sloppy than usually. Like they didn't like play as good as they can. Like, but we know if they play uh, as good as they can today, it will be a really hard match, uh, of course. But uh, if they do some mistakes and we we play good, I think we can beat them. And in terms of this Vertigo pick from yourselves over Mirage, why was that? Uh, we feel also really confident on Vertigo and they started to like Mirage. Uh, so yeah, we went with our, like, our feeling and I think everyone in the team agreed that we should pick Vertigo. Did you see some weaknesses when they played Vitality? Yeah, like as I said, like, they play not so good right now, like a bit sloppy, not the reflex they get usually. And yeah, I think that's how we can win today. Would you expect it to be a game where you guys' communication and your synergy right now is a step ahead of them? Like, you guys are more synced up? Uh, like, I don't know their communication. I think it's still really good. Uh, they, it needs to be really good in their style. Uh, I think they have a small advantage there, but uh, okay. I think we play better right now. Now, obviously, we haven't seen you play Ancient yet, but in terms of Vertigo, it's always been a map you guys can play. No Mirage, but we see Inferno as the decider. So Inferno's not been looking too good for Heroic. I want to see how important it is that you guys kind of feel like you must win Vertigo, or do you still think you can 2-0 it either way? Um, I think we can 2-0 also because we played a lot of Ancient. We really worked really hard on this map because we 
knew that uh, we will play it and Gop has some nice nades. Maybe you, some guys can copy some. And um, yeah, we like really worked a lot on Ancient. I think we are also, I mean, I wouldn't say that good, but I think we are not that bad like Heroic is thinking maybe. Ah, so you feel like they might have made the mistake here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, apparently Heroic might have played themselves, Matthew. You know what, there, there is an angle here, there is a story that we could maybe ride along. The idea that Ancient has been reworked, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of teams out there, even at the very top, are not yet completely conscious of the consequences of that rework. We've seen teams here being caught off guard by the spawns, being caught off guard by some of the timings, and I don't expect Big to make that kind of mistake. I think they're, as you could sometimes point out, very nerdy with the details of a map. So if anything, you think you might throw a curveball on Ancient, but I'm hoping that they have done their homework on that map. I think we have a very interesting map pool. I think that's the bottom line of this video. Both teams are coming in with a, a new take on what they should play. And obviously Ancient, as you said, relatively new. I think Vertigo, a little bit of a recency bias, as you pointed out, Heroic, arguably yeah. one of the best teams in the world on the map. So they're gonna be in for a tough one, Big. I love that we got to hear a little bit from Kito as well, because him uh, alongside Krimbo, instrumental in that series. Best. Yes, and that's my problem when you're asking me, hey, Maniac, what are the chances that we see the exact same game as it happened against Liquid? Well, I'm telling you, how, how replicable is that, that Kido and Krimbo are your two-headed spears that make the difference for big? Whenever you look at a team and you have to assess what performance they're going to bring forth, what you do is you look at the superstar and you evaluate what they do on average. But actually here, the superstars were not the one delivering. Both Tapson and Serson, which, by the way, is at the bottom of the stats, were relatively calm. It was Kido, it was Krimbo, so are you trying to sell me that pen? that they are going to be the carries of tomorrow for big? I don't think so. I don't believe so. They were carrying against Team Liquid, a very weak Team Liquid. That's part of the, the context yeah. as well. And the problem for me is, and why I don't believe in it either, is that they're facing a well more well-rounded team in Heroic. Player for player, pound for pound. I would argue that Heroic by far had the better, you know, tools in the toolbox. You look at a guy like Stown, he's a superstar. They don't really have that superstar over in the big team right now. Certain maybe perhaps sometimes, but consistently on land, not on par with Stown. So in terms of firepower, player for player, they are going to be outmatched. And I also do think we agreed when it comes to communication, as the big players even alluded to themselves, Heroic is also winning in that department. So where are we exactly looking for the win condition for big? That's what I'm having a tough time figuring out. Yeah, I think that is a tough one, particularly as you're saying, Sirson being the lowest rated player right from that series, um, that isn't something that we should be expecting uh, coming out of Big Lab, particularly when we're looking at Orping and how important that's going to be across these maps. Yeah, listen, it's a broken record at that point. Uh, we know how instrumental Sirson is for big. We talked about how the later stages of 2022 was kind of he coming on his own and having some of these land performances we were hoping for. He's been extremely silent and quiet mm. here in Copenhagen. None of that we've seen in the past. And in fact, something that really shocked me when I deep dive a little bit in the numbers is how little he takes the first initiative. He truly just is a reactionary AWP right now. He doesn't have a whole lot of success when trying to open rounds. So he pretty much relies on his teammates creating situations in which then he punishes the opponent. But if these situations don't appear, I feel like he kind of has no impact currently. Especially if you compare him to his counterpart in, in Kadian, right? You look at him, you remember some of the clutches he's had throughout this tournament. You, know, you remember the initiative that he's always taking, being the in-game leader as well. It's two very different styles of AWP. Absolutely. But I will argue that certain in this zone, you know, he can punish a team like Heroic. They like to be reactive. They like to move around. They like to be proactive. So maybe not too big of an issue for certain to be a little bit more defensive and wait for that reaction coming out of Heroic. I think so far, the story for Heroic um, has been a very rocky road. Uh, we'd argue that certainly. Yes. The fact that Kadian came off of that break and said, you know, when we were getting back into practice, I had to be quite harsh upon the team. Um, and we've seen that play out in a lot of the results, Jacob. It's weird, right? It's, it's been very atypical for Heroic. I feel like they're always a team that takes every single game serious. They are a team that rarely loses to a team below them in the rankings as well. They've been incredible consistent the past six months, to be completely honest, ever since Yabi came in and ever since Cologne was out of the way. It's a team that, sure, at this tournament, they've been showing us a weak side. Obviously, losing to EG, that is unacceptable. But I do think that when they're hitting their peak, which they've done a couple of times, both against Astralis and a couple of other games, then you are looking at a team that still has the power to be whopped there with the very, very best. I can't explain you why they never show up on map number one, but I hope they do. It, they've been calibrating. That's what they've been doing. And, and we could see that there is a fair amount of frustration in the heroic camp that they cannot just immediately get to their level. They've played four series, Freya, and we're talking 12 maps. Every single game has gone to three maps. We have here the graphics being pulled up by production. And as Jacob was talking about, last three series of heroic begins with a loss. Mm. Last three series again, they dropped the first map. So they've been taking a hot minute to get warmed up into the game. And this is not the heroic that was steamrolling people at the end of 2022. It's a heroic that is kind of dieseling their way into this uh, event. Yeah. 
it's okay for now. They haven't been punished, but who knows? We, we've seen what Big did to Liquid when people were sleeping against them. Yeah, it's certainly been looking a bit heavy handed coming out of Heroic, and it hasn't been necessarily uh, the story of the stars. Obviously, we talk about Stan all the time. We talk about Cadian as well and his impact on the server. Tezzas has actually been the man showing up. Yeah, Tezzas has been playing great, and, and he has been the Stan, so to speak, of, of this Heroic lineup for now. Stan has been struggling a little bit. The main right here on your screen, Tezzas, is a very influential player as well. Aggressive with the rifle, constantly looking to take space, constantly looking to take fights. So the fact that he's having a high success rate, the fact that he's up there and trying to be as much involved in the game as possible is a positive coming up for him. And he has not been the issue for Heroic. No. We heard it. That was very interesting. From the Bigs interview, they said the trading game for Heroic is a little bit below what it used mm. to be. And I 100% agree because this man on our screen, he's been doing his job. His mission has been accomplished. You look at his entry rating number, he's at the very top for Heroic. Rating-wise, at the very top. But the second line of attack, the one that is supposed to make the difference once he's got that opening, has been a little bit behind. Stone isn't the one that's closing rounds the way he's used to. Shush is decent, but Tessis hasn't really gotten a whole lot of help mm. behind him in the punch. He does the punch, he goes and dies in the trade, but then the people behind him are a little bit late and not really efficient. Well, let's check in with Tessis to see what he's thinking of this map pool. For me, when I look at this veto, I don't think you can afford to get off to a slow start here. How do you guys feel? Yeah, obviously there is, is no, typical no uh, room for slow starts. Although we have had bad starts in the in the group and still have managed to win some matches, mm. um, but yeah, of course there's no room for errors against Big, and this is a do or die match, so it's a, of a course uh, important with a good start and building on that momentum from the get-go. But I also know if we're going to lose a match or, or lose a map, then we are able to come back to the next two. And do you think that Big might have made a mistake picking Vertigo, thinking maybe you were just weaker because of the last time? Because obviously most people would have expected them to go for Mirage. Yeah, well, uh, we were quite surprised too with that uh, with that pick, but yeah, um, it's fine, and we're very confident on Vertigo, and I don't think they are. Uh, so we are, we're we're going to see what's going to happen on that map. I think it's going to be very interesting at least. So Tezus thinks Big have played themselves <laughs> by playing into one of their best maps, which Tezus doesn't think Big looks so good on. I don't know. I'm very confused about this video. Yeah, me too. You know, but but at the end of the day, two teams who are coming in would would believe in their own pick, would believe in their own abilities. I like the attitude coming in from Tezus. I think it's showcasing as well. He's having a good tournament. He seems calm. He seems collected. One player. As you mentioned, Matthew, who haven't been up there, who haven't been able to hit that second soccer punch, has been down. We talked about him. The 10th best player of 2022 has not showed up yet. And let's not forget that he was sitting out for Abu Dhabi as yeah. well. He took a prolonged break. True. Maybe he hasn't played as much Counter-Strike as the rest of the boys. We need to see more from Stown because he is the difference maker. He is the X factor within Heroic that takes him from being a very good team to a top, 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 top. top. He's a closer. Stown is a closer. We hear them right now. You hear the roll behind me. <laughs> That's our yellow, apparently. That's Heroic getting ready. Man. See, they're trying to get that energy up. Like they're, I like they're that. trying to manufacture or manifest the energy they're not showing in the first map. And why not? Honestly, why not? Well, we speak about the start. Let's get him on the mic with Banks. Now, it's interesting because you guys are one of the teams that have played your entire map pool. Obviously, you don't play Anubis, but you guys have been playing all the different maps, trying to find what I guess is where you're comfortable right now. Are you guys a little bit concerned or worried about your map pool? I wouldn't say we're concerned. I mean, uh, we, we have our plans. <laughs> we have our plans. Okay, I like it. And today, Vertigo from Big. I personally was expecting Mirage is normally what they go for. Was this a bit of a curveball for you guys? I mean, we looked at the video, obviously, and I would, I would say it's hard to predict what Big would pick because it doesn't feel like they have a, a strong pick uh, against us. So, I mean, Vertigo was one of the maps that they could pick and they picked it and somehow they left Ancient out as well. So, yeah, it's uh, going to be a, a fun match today. Definitely a fun match for sure. But do you think it's important you win it in two? Because obviously the decider is Inferno and your Inferno has also been messy. <laughs> yeah, you, you always mention our Inferno in these interviews, Banks. And yeah, what can I say? I mean, we've always felt comfortable on Inferno. That's what I can say. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, obviously it hasn't looked good. So yeah, hopefully we'll bring it, bring it back. Well, Stan, also a bit perplexed rather. And I think that's fair. So uh, who played who, Jacob, you know, in this? I, honestly, this video reminds me of the meme. Caught an ambulance, but not for me! Well, that's exactly <laughs> what's happening here. It feels like both people are so happy about the video, like, ha-ha, gotcha. They're both so confident. Yeah, I love yeah. the confidence coming out of both teams. I, I will argue, though, from an objective point of view, you know, it does feel like Heroic were gifted a couple of good maps right here, but I'm curious to see if they can prepare, because that's what we know them to do. We know them to prepare. We know them to be very, very methodical in the details. So let's see who played who. Well, Vertigo up first. Uh, Heroic did struggle on their CT side versus Vitality. That's where they will be starting, Matthew. Uh, so what are you looking at the, for, for them to be delivering on them? Now, let's have a look at Shush. Let's have a look at Shush, because I think it's one of his key landmark map where he makes a difference on the B side. They struggled a little bit against Vitality, and he is going to be the one that I keep my eye on. Well, this veto has gone a little 
little bit topsy-turvy indeed, and it is indeed time to see who has played who in this one. It's Vertigo being picked by Big, Ancient picked by Heroic, and Inferno if we do so need it. So let's get it on. game of the day coming up and it's big versus heroic we start on vertigo i think this is going to be a great game actually, i think this is going to be a really fun game to watch alex what about you this is one that can result in so many different ways but i see a world where it's exciting in all of them yes that's what's fun about big games that's what's fun about heroic games you're always getting tactics you're getting action proactive nature and what's great is that there are stakes here one of these teams goes down to the showdown the other punches in their ticket to Washington, D.C. So much on the line is actually crazy. I can't wait for it. And starting on Vertigo, it's in itself is was an interesting map. I feel like this is the first time we've cast it, but go you and I, I think, for, uh, for for the for the groups here. I don't think we've been past this map at the moment. So curious how it'll play out. I always trust Big to have a game plan. I think that they're just a team that does so much homework. But Heroic, even if this has not been their best tournament yet so far, they're obviously still a very powerful team. So I'm just interested to see how it'll play out. Looks like they're going to be testing the middle to begin with. And Tessas is waiting around back there. He just wants to maybe slow them down. You can see he's already on the comms a little bit. Some very uh, fast jiggling going on at the moment. But three people going to be coming around the corner. Maybe more. They try and pre-fire him, but he will fall back. And that slows them down only maybe a second. Not more than that. They're really speeding it up. Hunting him down. And Farvin is there for the kill. That's great work. Oh, but the bomb has been dropped. So this will slow big up a little bit. And with their positions right now, it's not necessarily that obvious to Heroic what's happening. So they're going for a B push, and it works in their favor. Yabby's able to take down Krimbo. But there's another player lying in wait for big down here. 
Yeah, there is. They are getting flanked, which might be a bit of a surprise. A boost up. That's dangerous. Gabby finds the shot, and Searson's going to be finding Cadian back there. What a really confusing round. At least they know about Searson now, and they can isolate Keto in this position, but he's pretty good with that drop. Spins around, and he nearly has the 180. That would have maybe saved the round. Instead, it's a triple for Yabby, and a bomb defuse on the other side. 10 seconds, Searson. Yep, you have to fight it right now, or you're going to be too late. He's trying to get close. He's trying to stop it, but he can't. And the defuse fuses in heroic they had to battle for that round oh yeah great push though from heroic again always fighting on their own terms that push down to isolate the duels to make it so much easier on themselves for the retake very well played and we saw right there Cersei he had many opportunities but he couldn't just connect at the very end yeah they even shot the cone at him um which is a little rude a little rude yeah that's probably gonna hurt just a little bit. Not as much as a bullet though. De definitely not. All right, quick tech time out here at the start, but um, what a way to get uh, get the round beginning. Exploiting the middle of Vertigo on the T-Tine, I feel like is something that I just feel like I don't ever see enough. I'm sure that if you do too much, it's gonna be really predictable and it'll, it'll, it'll just have a drop in efficiency. But I feel like some teams, they just almost forget about the middle completely. There's just a few setups that are a little bit strong for the CT sides at middle. The first and foremost, and most obvious even, is just putting it off there. Yeah. And you just have to peek into all these angles one by one. Other ones include the rifle stack on the mid boxes, the pallets kind of thing. That That's pretty deadly too. And so, yeah, it's really going to be interesting to see if Big decide to use that part of the map more on the gun rounds. Because we haven't seen them play this map or any anybody's seen them play this map since... November. They were playing this at the uh, Elisa event, and it was actually with a, a different five. They were playing with Sin back then. They didn't, uh, right. I'm not sure. It, I think it was Cersei. Yeah, they didn't even have Cersei for that game. And that's why this is a little bit confusing on the pick. In the pregame interviews with James Banks, pretty much everybody was talking about this being an interesting veto. That Tessus was thinking that he doesn't actually think big or that good at it, which I don't know how he could even say with confidence because he hasn't probably even watched them play it, but right. it's just one of those things to try to bolster your own confidence. I don't really blame him for saying that. And even if you have, like you pointed out, it's a good chance that it'll be a slightly different lineup because big and just not having their their intended lineup, it is, it's a classic. Right. That was Give the a, story of the last year for them. Yeah, I, it really I, was. I saw at least six different lineups for big. We had... Tizian coming in and out. We had Favin going in and out due to illnesses. Uh, even Krimbo sat down later in the year and got B substituted in for them on an online match. It was topsy-turvy. Sin also proved himself at the major. It was... <laughs> this big team was just going through it last year. It's like... <laughs> they really were. I make a bold prediction about them in the beginning of the year and then just everything had to work against that, so... You still... Oh, I think you almost... Did you hit the prediction? Or did, oh, it was really close, close. at least. In I, spite of everything i said within six months i thought they could hit top five on hltv at that time and they hit seventh basically six months right after yeah. i said in spite of <laughs> yeah <laughs> running into every yeah. possible problem yeah that's um it's been it's been tricky but again i think in spite of everything they just are a fun team to watch one of yes. my, they're definitely one of my favorite teams to watch because if you ever wanted to find you know little freaky smokes and flashbangs or anything like that they have a lot of those and you can always tell that there's a plan. I don't ever see a lot of big rounds where I think, I, I don't know what the plan is. Like, I don't understand what they're doing. There's always something going on, which is, I think, just a delight. It's good to, it's good, good Counter-Strike. And that's why, tactically speaking, or strategically, they can find so many upsets against top teams because yeah. they're very well drilled. That's what's old. That's what I I love about watching Big. When you see Big play, you see this proper map control style where you're going to punish any poor aggressions or individual plays, which is why for last year they were pretty good against Big. They didn't beat them every single time, but they had some really key victories over the world what was the world's number 1 of last year, and that's because they are very good at just punishing a team like FaZe that just wants to just peek out one by one when Brokey wants yeah. to swing, when when Rops thinks he can get a cheeky peek off. All of that, bigger, very well outlining what needs to be done to mitigate the star power of opponents. Well, people seem to be focused up again. So hopefully that means we can get back into the swing of things after a, a little technical timeout. And obviously you want those out of the way at the start of the game so that it's not, you know, when the stakes are super high. But 
Pistol round goes to Heroic. They are actually lightning quick to pick up the AWP. That's a little bit interesting. And Big will chill out for this one. Little slash right yeah. there. It is a bit early to be bringing out the, the off Arcadian. Probably should like know that this kind of buy is coming out for Big. Well, I... They might, they might not know, actually, because they got a bomb plant in the previous round. So, Heroic feeling it out. Kadian, he'll be able to pick off these players at range. This is where the op is obviously best. And that flash in is beautiful. Tessus with the setup. Two kills for him. Does fall. And Krimbo's able to pick up one with the Glock. But it doesn't seem like he's long for this world. No, eventually they'll come and find him. Just a question of how long it'll be. It's going to be that long. Shush able to sneak down. And pick that one up. So a 2 and O lead, which is to expect it, but it'll be an early buy, I'm sure, for the side of big. They did get the pistol around plant. So, you know, saving in this one is pretty obvious to everybody what's going to happen next. And we're curious to see. What's really interesting is what the game plan will be for big. Yes. What's the point of emphasis for a team that never goes to vertigo, that hasn't played it for months, with this five man especially. They haven't played it for a long time. It's tough to just pick this in a match that matters as much as this one. Okay, three man stack at the A ramp for Heroic. It's pretty common on this map. It happens a lot, especially I feel like early on in games where a lot of T sides will default into just trying to take the A ramp control because it is so important. A ramp is kind of like banana on Inferno. We just, we know T sides usually have to try and do something, although it feels a little bit more mid heavy this time for the side of B. I'm excited already. You were asking for it. Wanted to see a little bit more mid control coming out from the T's. Don't always see it the most. Although, Big seemed to be moving away from that position. Not as interested as we had hoped. Something made them change their minds. I'm not sure what. Yeah, they really want that, that ramp space. And the early utility spent from Heroic, Big might have an opportunity because it's becoming a little bit lighter in terms of the nade and the possibilities for Heroic. It really is. Still that three-man setup. Mid is wide open at the moment. If Big were actually there, maybe they could have taken a little bit of advantage. It feels like they're just waiting around for a long time. Flashes go out. Kadian not really feeling pressure just yet. We're down to about 35 seconds. They are still there. The bomb is making its way a little bit back on Searson. I think he might just be checking for a flank that's not actually showing up, but they've waited such a long time. I'm very concerned about this at the moment. Tabson's going to be going down. Tess is with a good spray on top of the smoke, and Kadian, he's been waiting all around for that shot, and he'll take down Keto, and they're just going to crumble. A grenade that lands right on top. There's absolutely no way to get through here. Tess is with the cleanup and the triple. That was a really cool... All right. He's happy, yes. in case you can't tell. Yeah, that's... <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's really stoked about that victory there. And he, and he should be, because obviously there's a lot on the line. This was an interesting late round play from Big. They used so much utility to get control of that ramp there, but it was all, it was just too telegraphed. Heroic knew what was coming. They had some counter utility. They were able to slow it down. And at that point, Big, they are not able to find anything. It's like they got so far on the track, but that last hurdle, it, they, they didn't even attempt to clear it. It was just, it was almost a roadblock for them. Oh, they're gonna be Oh, ready. wow. Oh, <laughs> I need to see the replay. The dink was full. I didn't even shoot the gun that fast. You, yeah, he I, just double dinked him, it seemed like. Or what was that? Okay, did, that's an opener, though. Did he bind fire to the scroll wheel? What's going on? I can't understand how that... That's so fast. All right. Well done. Tess is out of it. It's Tabson with the stolen AK. They pick up the shot onto Stown. That's absolutely sick. Bomb being planted on the other side. Beak has really no claim to this round at all, but somehow... They're in a pretty good position right now. They fake the bomb once to avoid any grenades, and then they finally go for it here. Three versus five, and Heroic, they've got to be shocked, and I'm sure they feel like they should try to retake this. They feel like this is their round. There's a good dunk on the Tabson, but that was also the last HE. Smoke's on top, flash goes out, and I'm sure they need to do oh, If they want to do it, they need to do it while that smoke is still up. Otherwise, it's just wasted. Gabby, that's a very cool double opening. He tries oh. to set it up, but more pistols are coming up for big. Searson with the double kill, and Kadian now all of the pressure on him. He hasn't found the kit yet, so a lot of trouble here as he tries to get the job done. But Searson with the triple instead, and big, they steal the round.
What a huge victory for Big there. You see that they can get it done with firepower too. This first one from Tapson just nails him. Beautiful Sick. tracking on that shot. And then this hold with the AK. This also from Sirs. Oh, ah! snipes him in the air with it. The... Okay. The yelling, it's there for both teams. Nice. Loving it. They should be fired up behind that peak. That's such an unlikely round. The first bullet accuracy on that first P250 around the corner to take down Cadium was absolutely sublime. Don't see that every day. Round number five. And some money on the side of Heroic having won the first three rounds. They can try and put something together, but it's not the most amazing buy. We pointed this out earlier. One of the strengths in the middle is that AWP and Cadian giving us a good lesson in that. Pretty clean fight for him. No trade potential for Big. They have a three, some three-man presence at the ramp. Just kind of dueling with utility right now against Heroic. But comes the slow creep. All right, Tabson, this is super dangerous. He's eventually going to go down, and every single player will fall behind him. Bomb dropped up there in Searson. Eventually, they should be able to flank him as well if they really want to. You can see Kadeen is certainly thinking about it. Just a question again of when they find him. 40 seconds, they know that he's got that AWP, and I, there's no really good reason why they should let him keep it. Although, he's found a way in between. That's interesting. He could... I don't think he can win the round, obviously, but maybe he could play hide-and-seek at a really high level. Yeah. Should enter a competition for it. Because this is the winning spot. Yeah. Doesn't seem like Heroic are going to be able to pursue. There, there is a player beneath him, but he should be able to actually just defend this spot. It's not like you have much accuracy when you're on that ladder. No, you really don't. Yeah, someone walking up behind him is definitely the dangerous part. He's feeling a bit stressed now. Oh. All right, <laughs> he's going to escape. Oh, this is smart. Good movement from Searson. Wow. Yeah, keep it alive. As oh, 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 it was close. Yeah, okay. It was really, really close. Yeah, I think he was pretty pretty lucky there that no one was underneath too. But another ra that's a round for Heroic. A pretty clean hold towards the ramp. Big unable to really find anything. This was a little bit drier for Big than you would normally imagine. Just going for some of those peaks as they approach the corner, and it doesn't go their way, but they still have Sersons off. And I just want to say, when Big were very strong online, seems like a far cry it was a long time ago, Serson was a beast at fighting in this position. Okay, there we go. It's one kill through the tarp already. Yeah can find that pixel angle where you can actually see a little bit of movement up behind it. People become really good at exploiting it. Season orp, season orping when it's good, it's actually such a delight to watch. It's one of those players, we've had a few of them, we were talking about res on an IP where when it's good, it looks so sick. And maybe for that same reason, it's almost disappointing when you don't get it. You feel let down, you feel like, come on, like I want to see this more. And season for me definitely is in that same category. He's 7-3 right now, so maybe... Maybe we are going to be treated to a good system game. I think Sersen is just an example that the, the road to progress is bumpy for many. That yeah. It's not linear by any means. Yabby, though, excellent off angle. He's been progressing beautifully for Heroic, but he pulls the nade out. Oh, no, this might be a poor timing, but he's able to recover to find one. Spray transfers there. Wow, he's able to find that shot onto Tapson, but this is a three-on-three -three situation now. Could they find the AK? Did it fall over the side? It might have. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit disappointing, I guess. But that was really well done. Yabby easily, easily could have just been blown up. He could have died immediately. Keto going to be found. I like the idea of sneaking around like that. But Kadian was holding it. Now they're kind of out of time. And you might just have to save the orb again. I don't think that's much of a choice. Yeah, unfortunately. I think, I think Falvin wants to try to just do something, though. I, I, you don't really want to just keep 2300 into the next round. This is... Ooh, yeah. It's a bit awkward now because his teammates are going to have more money than him and he's not going to find any loss bonus. There's the AK. Great cinematic camera right here. Nice. Yeah. That's oh, it's so unfortunate, actually, because now he's just keeping that in the next round. Probably just going to buy utility off the back of it. Here's the opening pick, though, from Sersen. Yeah. Great vision. Not necessarily easy to spot that at all. This is also really, really important. 
Like, yes. Had the timing against him. The, the, for him to pull out the smoke right then and there is so awkward. But from Big's point of view, having stolen that one freak round, and now it's still a five to one lead for Heroic, is pretty concerning. You want to try to roll some of those early rounds a little bit more, and for the moment, at least, they're not able to. Aggressive push this time, a different setup for Heroic, pushing down all the way down towards the bottom of the ramp, which is definitely something that Heroic will, so that Big will be aware could happen, but it will be very hard to deal with. Will flash around the corner, didn't go quite deep enough, or he was turned for it. Either way, he's going to be good for at least the one kill, but a trade is there for Tapson. That's worth something too. Big are happy with the one for one, especially given that it's down that falls, generally speaking, star player for heroic the dust did have some concerns about sounds performance lately just hasn't been popping off the page as we know that he can for the team but there have been other players that have been picking up the slack yabby just challenging wide right now oh man if he got peaked right there that would have been lights out yeah but look at the rotation they do behind it they feel like nobody's at the ramp and they're actually wrong just as yabby went away Big start to progress up the A ramp, and everyone else is at the B bomb site. So Yabby, he needs another godlike performance. It's on him to buy the time for the rest of the team to get back here. And he just got no nades. This flashbang is all that he has. Going to be calling it out now, saying, wait a minute, we've made a mistake. Now, they are going to be back fairly quickly. So Eric, at least close enough by and trying to stop that bomb. It's so close, but they can't find Krimbo. That would have been devastating to Big if the bomb would have been delayed there. But it is down. Now it's a four on four in the after plant. More smokes are coming in. No more left on Heroic. So if they want to have a defuse, it's going to be out in the open in front of the eyes of Big. Oh, Searson, that's a mistake. They were boosted over in that back line and Searson gets picked off three versus four now. And trouble are coming big way. They, they know, they know that this is going to be a rush coming in from Heroic. It's just a matter of the time. No more needs to be thrown, so it's all down to the mechanics. 10 second defuse initiated. That's not going to be good enough, but look at how they clean it up. They just run straight for it. I don't know if there's enough time. Oh, he did pick up the kid. All right, I was oh, worried wait, for a second. Wait, no! Oh, 0.28! He was so close, but they were both fighting at the ramp. And Big, they're stealing away in about a third of a second. Wow. By the slimmest margin, Big able to find another round victory there. They have to be pretty fortunate, or feeling pretty fortunate, that is with how some of these rounds have gone their way. But that's gonna lead to a timeout. You can see gobby has got a lot to say here. First timeout being used. And I, I wanna say also that the approach from Big, they, they changed it up here. They didn't actually telegraph the play as much. They saved all their nades. They walked up the ramp together. They played off of a timing, and then they had the full exec necessary to take that space cleanly on the site. It was, uh, that's obviously very risky though, because yeah. last time they did that, Heroic just shut him, shut him right down. But this, this kind of leads me to think that there's some decent prep going on on the big side, which one would expect. That's what we're here for, isn't it? We're here for the homework and, and for them to show us how they've been studying Heroic. Who, as you pointed out in the beginning, might have had a hard time studying vehicle that much in return for this particular map. So it's all very interesting. Run boost set up and he's flying around the building with a flash to set it up. He maybe could have had the kill, but he just needed one more jump to get into position. What a sick play. You, I mean, again, big are just a fun team to watch. Unfortunately, they lose Searson on the other side. Kadian out there sniping away at the bottom of the ramp. Looks like Searson was able to find a leg on Yabby, but it is Kadian that finds the kill. Now, double setup between Tessus and Shush towards that B side. That's going to be very tough to breach. Both of these guys have been playing quite well lately. All right. We've had the run boost. Now, just the regular boost. The Tabson. This is going to take away all the attention, but Shush still wins the fight. I thought maybe he could have peeked into it. If he had more bullets, that's definitely a quick triple. Seems to be on point, and the Deagle in the back will do the rest of the work here as Krimbo is on his own. So just a very, very nice defense being put up here from Heroic. And some of the tricks from Big just don't... Nobody playing out in this round. The run boost or the, the follow-up boost over at the B-bomb site, none of them really paying off the way that they were hoping for. No, they were really close on a couple of them. And Trimbo, after dropping that gun, Tessus recognizes his position, swings out for the final kill. And for Big there, not finding a single kill. It's a worrying sight. Feels like when they're winning these rounds, it's with such painstaking effort. But when Heroic win these rounds, it's a comfortable victory. And that is definitely going to help out the money on the defense. 
Yeah, something that now Big have to fight through, and they can't even put up much of a fight this round. No. So just in general, man, this is um, this is starting to get really rough. It's, yeah, it's not looking too good for Big just yet. The surprise pick is seemingly betraying them. You may have just noticed that bomb falling down that shaft, but it's nothing to worry about. It actually goes right back. <laughs> it's one of the fun parts of this map. Can't throw the bomb out. Obviously, it'd be a very different game if that was allowed somehow. Um, the, the griefing would be unbelievable. Un <laughs> yeah, I know. Public games will win immediately. All right. Well, that's that's a couple kills. Yeah. One more would really make the difference. Run boost. That's what they're saying. Which one are you gonna run boost, guys? The deagle. No. Surely. Oh, okay. A1S. Wow, they set that up with almost nothing. That's really interesting. Also, Tessus just nailed him. Yeah. I want to see Tessus's shot there. That's. That was quick. He was unimpressed. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, gift, whatever you want. Yeah. Let's see. That was, that was okay. That was pretty good. Yeah. He just lands and then he's shot in the face right away. <laughs> yeah, they're happy. Heroic are doing a. They're having a good performance. Yep. Seven to two is is a score line that makes you think that Tessus meant what he said about his assessment of Big prior to this game. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Down. Oh, he's almost dead behind it. That's actually so dangerous. He still might be. It doesn't look like he's quite aware that now he would definitely will realize, but that was about to be so dangerous. Smoke and then a Molotov to try and force someone into the fight, but they were already very far back. Instead, Big have decided if we can't take ramp, let's try and see if we can get a little bit of action in the middle, which they kind of almost have to. They've lost so much real estate over on this side of the map. They've lost so much ground. Push and pull. Oh, oh my no, that nade. It's over 100 damage. And they they're right on top of them. They're, they're trying to set up some kind of boost here. I think it might be to run boost on top of the double stack. I, but I, whatever it was, it just wasn't working, or at least a boost to spot the construction player. It's down though, it's got a nice off angle. And Yabby's already there from the top. They probably won't suspect Stown to be this close to. Rare to see a double mid setup like this. So this might play in Heroic's favor, but Stown, he's actually burning. Doesn't quite matter though. He's able to still recover in time to find one, but Tapson's there for the trade. You could tell that they were not re ready for it. Trish, ooh, that's awkward, but he doesn't go down. He could have been dead behind that kind of a forward push. And weirdly, we end up in a two on two anyway. Tapson also finding Yabby. 25 seconds. The bomb has dropped down there at the bottom of ramp, so they know that the rest of Big are going to be showing up for the bomb site. The timing is absolutely perfect, and with only 15 seconds, there isn't anything Krimbo could do about this. It will be an 8-2 to two lead now for the side of Heroic. Just took a long time for Big to find any ideas here or to put anything together in motion. The, the mid-boost that they were attempting, I'm pretty sure it's just to see construction, and they... Just couldn't really assemble it properly. That was really concerning. But we're going to see another timeout. Do you go so far as to say that this feels more like a, more like a, a classic heroic performance? Shout out um, to Flom, stupid chat. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't actually. You know what? I wouldn't characterize this game as a as a classic heroic game. All right. I'm not seeing. Wouldn't use the word classic yet. No, okay. no. The classic heroic is just all those aggressions in the mid round. I don't even think we're necessarily having to see that come out. That's usually when Heroic are really pushed to, that they need, they feel like they need more information. They need to do something different. But to me, Heroic are playing pretty standard for the most part. A couple, a couple mix ups here and there, like doubling up on spots like we just saw mid, but not, not as much as you would really expect in terms of action. I'm so used to remembering just Heroic always flashing in the mid-late round for to get ramp control back or a double right. push mid, something that really just keeps the offense guessing, but I think Big are just having a hard time getting off the starting block. Well, they're fighting for, for that A ramp control, which again, like we pointed out earlier, it's just so pivotal, and when you when you can't find that, the switch up that they had to try to go middle this time also got kind of knocked down. There are not that many spots left. I mean, you could, yeah, then you could go for B, but it just, at that point, it's really obvious what's going to happen, right? You have to be able to control, even if you don't straight up win the fight, just push the CTs back. Right. Fine if you don't get any kills, just push them away from middle, away from the A ramp, and then at least they won't know exactly what's coming. But Big are definitely struggling on that front a little bit. 
It seems like they're struggling on the technical front as well. Right. I would say that one thing that Big can always fall back to, although you never really want to base a game plan around this, is just taking that lower B space and going for a B exec. We haven't really just seen the straightforward B exec come out yet. It's always been a bit too treacherous to even take space away from Heroic or there's some casualty. But a lot of teams just, if they're, if they're in a rut like this, they'll just take that B space, go for the B exec and play the 40, 60 post plan. You know, it's, it's yeah. actually not too hard to retake, but at least it gets you in a position that you have a chance to win as opposed to uh, these fights that big are taking and they're just falling apart. Yeah, feels more winnable. And if you if you trust in taking the B bombs and getting the bomb down, down to begin with, you could still leave a T that's lurking in the middle to yep. try and catch rotations. Like there are obviously ways to play to sort of try and set you up for the after plant, but you do need the bomb plant before that mid player becomes really interesting to to look at. Okay, well hopefully hopefully Big have more in their in their game plan here because this trend is a little bit worrying at the moment. They need definitely more. They need to get up to the first five or six rounds here on the T side before they can have a real fight at it. No way you can be happy with this half just yet. Shush jiggling at the top here, holding what I think is a Molotov, ready to go. And there is an approach. Ooh, I think he flubbed that. That's yes. definitely supposed to go a little bit farther. At least make the T's uncomfortable in that lower space. But now you can see that this is kind of more a classic heroic round for me. They, they lose a little bit of space on that B side of the map, and now they're grouping up in a couple different places right now, looking for a way back into the round, or at least to acquire some information. Pretty good smokes, actually, to try and limit the vision here. But it's down, he's so close to finding it. They are oh. getting run down, and the Molotov is burning. Tetsis, oh, he's dead behind it. That's devastating. He just couldn't see anything and had to run through the whole Molotov and eventually gets chased down, four on four. They've won a round like this already big, where they had very, very limited investment. If they could do it again, that if, that's interesting. Obviously, they need to be able to win the rifle rounds too, but right now, they need whatever they can get. Flashed around the corner, and with the Molotov. If anyone would have been there, that would have been fairly devastating, but they keep exchanging grenades. Searson, is that just wall bang down? I, I think he went into the volley for a little bit there. All right. Okay, exec comes out though. 30 seconds left, and Kadian just peeks right over it. That's a freebie for him. They lost Searson earlier to something similar. <laughs> Throwing the bomb over to a teammate, saying, you do it. It's pretty risky. You try and see if you can get this bomb plant. Oh, it's close. But well oh. done. They're going to get the bomb plant, and Krimbo, he finds the kill on Shush, and it turns it back into a three-on-three. -three. Plenty of kits in play right now for the CTs. They feel like someone's still back there, and they're not wrong either. You can wallbang that spot, but... Could get a little bit risky. They're moving up without any grenades. Just looking for it. They've almost found him. Good kill there. They nearly line up for Farman to get a couple of kills. The flashbang is godlike against Krimbo. And that will be enough to take him down quick on the defuse. Yeah, you don't want to run out of time. It's a good retake. But for what they had going into the round, that's a that's a great round for Big. They just needed, they needed to be able to build on it. Need just a little bit more in the late round. If they had any more utility to set up some kind of way to structure that post plant, or even just maybe a better gun on one of these players, this could have been something for big. And you could be happy about this kind of round early in the half, recognizing that you put together a solid A take. But when you're down two to nine, you need round victories. You can't be happy with just getting close anymore. Needs to be rounds on the board. Yeah, they, they don't matter if you if you don't do anything behind them. And they're just little memories that you could hold on to and say, oh, remember that round where we won with the Tech Nines and the Deagles? Like, yeah, great, but you need more than that. Two to nine. Great lead for Heroic at the moment. Gabby playing back here. Could be a bit of a surprise. A little bit of a shock, in fact. That's the bomb as well, that far forward. Oh, no. It's actually fallen up to the high ground, so they can't really retrieve it. What an absolute disaster. Three people here for Heroic. And Kadian, in spite of an already overwhelming lead in the round, he's pushing forward. He wants to see if he could be extra aggressive. There's no way Farvin is going to be seeing this coming. Unless he makes some noise. He did make noise falling down, but it doesn't matter. The Deagle will take care of business. Very aggressive play from Kadian. Convincing stuff from Heroic. Five rounds in a row, up 10-2. to two. This is big. Again, trying for what they went for earlier when they won a gun round, where they were able to take some of this space towards the ramp, 
and they actually got away with not using utility, but this is the punish. If you if you don't molly out these positions, then there are too many angles when you're approaching that Heroic are going to use to the fullest. Kita 1 and 12 and 26 AD arm. I mean, obviously the team as a whole is malfunctioning just a little bit right now. But that's so tough. It's tough to have a game like this where you just feel like you're, you're having a hard time finding any impact at all. This one is a bit better. Crimbo to open up on Yabby. That, sh especially because it's so early on in the round, that should give them some space to do some of these strategies that we've been highlighting. This has to be a conversion for Big. They have to find a way to break this one down. It looks like they're opting for a B execute play. They don't have too much utility to actually take map control elsewhere, but they're setting everything up so that they can put this piece together and that they could hopefully play an advantage post plant. I'm guessing it's going to be like just a deep flashbang going through. They can set it up with a double boost. They can be over the wall. Oh, oh. the spam before they get there. There's the flashbang, but one of them is dead before they even get around the corner. Kadian is here with the AWP, and they're running up close, even flashed. Wow. That was Tessa's flashbang, by the way. Kadian just seems to be immune to it. Krimbo and Searson now trying to bring it back in this 2 1 3, and Tessa's great work bodyguarding his captain making sure they can't get too close all on crimbo he started the round and he'll have to try and finish it too in a one versus three with very very little health the bomb again lost quite far away this is just painful grenade on top tess has already fallen back Let's pick up the awp because he realizes this is going to be tough and yeah sneak it up behind us down no problems at all 11 rounds on the side of heroic they are absolutely blowing up big at the moment the entire time big were setting that up the vice was just tightening around them there was no way for crimbo to win that one it seemed like and for her, for uh, the credit of tessis beautiful Beautiful flash to help out his captain there. It even kind of blinded him, but there was just great protocols in place. Yep. That, that just needs to be said. Heroic there, they kind of, they expected that B play. They knew what was coming and they had all the responses you needed and wanted to see from a team that should be as well drilled as them. 14th round, Kadian. He might have been dead right there. He was expecting a flash through and instead it was just a walk in, but he does get the kill and Tessa's collateral damage, I think. A little bit of a shot through onto Tabson. Stown gets one more, and Searson's practically dead already. Wow, they get absolutely shut down. No ramp control being allowed for here. 12 to 2. They're 10 rounds ahead. Heroic, they are looking rock solid on this CT side. A furrowed brow on Tabson. Yeah. The frustration is sitting it, setting in for them. They're, they're not really finding any consistent recipe for success here. Heroic. Their initial defense towards this A ramp has proven too strong in this half. And so what was a gamble, a surprise pick, however you want to characterize it, it has not worked. Some part of me was really hoping that it was just some kind of crazy underground pick where they just haven't played it for two months and then they come out with something that's a little bit sicker, but so far we're not seeing it. Krimbo though, good for another opening. This time it's Shush that he's able to pick up. He's been a bright spot for them. Yeah. He's on 10 kills. It's nothing too crazy just yet. Not not popping off completely, but all right. Tessa's position challenge, but okay. This is wow. this is a little bit sneaky from Big. Uh, they throw that molly there, and then they're just getting onto the bombsite. Kadian is definitely <laughs> caught off guard. He did not expect that. And Sersen with the shot right through the smoke to take down Tessa's. This is some of the sneaky plays that we wanted more from Big. And now they put themselves in a massively advantaged situation. Yeah, those are the kind of rounds where you can see that they have a good understanding, but they shouldn't be oh, losing no. this down with no. another headshot. What is going on? They had the five versus two, and now it's back into a two on two. This is unacceptable. Big need to control themselves right now. Scout to take this peek, but it has to be a headshot. Stallion gets one more, and now the smoke on top. They're going to go straight for... Oh, they tap it. They fake it up. Krimbo knows he has to spam it, and with the M4E1, he's going to run out of bullets real soon. Oh, no! Yabby, if he had the M4E4, it would have been fine, but instead, it gets stolen back 13 to 2. That is heartbreaking for Big. They need to recover themselves into this second half, and it has to be quick.
Welcome everybody, I am Maniac here and I turn myself into a TV host, finally. My childhood dream happening right here at Blast. We're playing The Right Price, presented by CS Money and I have in my company, Nico Twiston OC. I am going to give you a skin with its condition and a real world item and I need you to tell me which is the most expensive of the two. Round one, quick fire. The first one who feels like it, you can buzz, miss it. We move on to the next item, no points being won. First question. An AWP, a Theris, minimal wear, or a cup of coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Nico got it first. Yeah, I thought it was Nico. I'll go with up, man. There we go. That's the first point for Nico. He's got it. Now, if the set has survived, I think he's good. <laughs> I'm so He really wanted to be first, man. <laughs> it's good, it's good. I like, I like it's good. Too hard. <laughs> it's exactly what you need. A USPS Cortex well-worn or a bunch of bananas? <laughs> I'm gonna say a bunch of bananas. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Nice. You're absolutely right. That's two dollars. <laughs> so. An AWP wildfire, field tested, or a gaming mouse? <laughs> you were first. I was a gaming mouse. There you go. That's a point for you as well. That was sixty dollars here on average, and you were correct. The gaming mouse was more expensive. The average so. is a bit higher for gaming mice nowadays. Yeah. AK-47 Empress, field tested, or CS:GO price on release? Oh, I'm so slow, man. The Empress. There we go. That was actually $15. $15 indeed, the Empress being more expensive than that. And finally, a butter knife, Gamma Doppler Phase 3, or a gaming laptop? I would choose a knife. That's wrong. That's a miss on the end. <laughs> it's Black Friday, bro. <laughs> so now we're moving on to All In. I'm going to give to each of you guys the same question. But the twist here, no pun intended, is if you get it wrong, you lose the value of the skin. So there's risk here. You have to consider it carefully. You guys ready? Yeah. That's Nico, good. I'm going to start with you. A gut knife Doppler Sapphire, factory new, or eight? Det er godt. Det er Okay. Oh, okay. Then getting hyped up is just always a good time, isn't it? Uh, I've got to say, there was, a, for my taste, a lot of screaming happening at the start of that. But um, they, they won the round. They're, they're super hyped up. I don't know if I can even criticize it. It's 13 to 2 going into the second half. And right now, they are looking absolutely brutal. Heroic. They've left big in the dust, and now the question is, can they do anything on the CT side? A four-man push to the middle. Searson, oh, the counter flash is amazing! And the cleanup is even better. Three headshots for Searson, and now Yabby is entirely on his own to try and win this one back. One versus five, and he's already going to get shut down. Mid-air headshot. That is a beautiful start, really, for Big. I'm going to give you a brutal reality of the situation, Anders. Big aren't walking away with the victory in this game. But what they can do is they can warm themselves up into the next map. Yeah. If they are able to build a little bit of confidence now, if they're able to show that they can fight back against Heroic, earn some of Heroic's respect, that can actually give them a chance to build some momentum to at least make Heroic sweat a little bit. So it's up to Big to just make this one a little bit more competitive and show that they are breathing in the server. Because in that first half, it was... 
not much to take home. It was not much. There really wasn't. But I think that's a good point, though. The warm-up factor is so important going into a, a second map. Although, oh, well. say that, but yeah. the tech lines are taking it away. Come on. Two versus four already. And the bomb being freighted onto that B bomb site right away. Shush is almost looking under the smoke. When it fades, Tabs in it better be ready. He's trying his best. He's guessing the right one. But again, the crossfire is so strong and heroic. They're not going to allow for any kind of warm up. They just take the round. I was trying to set up a way that you could take some solace from this game as big or a big fan. And now you're left wishing, wanting, waiting for them to enter the server. This is really tough to watch for for Big and their coaching staff, I'm sure. But Heroic gotta feel great about this. This is the form you wanna see from a team that is trying to show the world that they had unfinished business left in the last year. Yeah. That they want to be one of the three best teams guaranteed their world rank number one right now by HLTV, and they want to show that that EG loss earlier in this whole thing was the <laughs> biggest fluke we'll ever see in the group stage. Gabby's 20 and 6, and I think that's right. It is also about correcting the narrative from the start of the group to say, yeah, okay, so what? We had a slow start to the year. No one cares. This is what we plan on delivering for the rest of it. Tessa's boosted up looking over the smoke to take down Keto. And they have plenty of time and everything else to try and take this fight with deep grenades landing back there. And Tessas, as they're trying to retreat from the fire, he's picking them off. Absolutely merciless. Primbo on his own and it's just a grenade away from death, surely. Gonna be getting that one kill and then it is over. 15 to three. Heroic, I don't know. This map was definitely not the map pick that Big were looking for. They felt like they needed a surprise. And when you're the underdog in a matchup like this, you want to go for something that's a little bit riskier, a little bit cheekier, but you would have wanted to see that plan show some signs that it made sense in any regard. And I don't think you can confidently say that when you review the footage for Big. But again, Heroic, you just put this one away. They've got 12 map points. That took more math than usual to, to tell you that. <laughs> Fine. We've got time for it. It's, um, it's going to be a long time before this game becomes interesting again from Big's point of view, especially because Heroic are just cleaning it up. A little bit of an attempt there, but the push towards middle is incredibly successful. The trading looks good. This is something the desk was talking about too, that Heroic haven't been trading as well. You, I mean, this is just, they're on top of each other. He just did a 360 while blind. He just jumped into it like a, like a maniac. Crimbo, one versus five right here. Oh, it's gonna be all over. Shush will find the last one. 16 to three. An absolute destruction of big on Vertigo. Heroic never looked back. That is, it's gotta be one of the most comprehensive victories we've seen so far in the groups. I don't know if we've seen one even more lopsided than this, Anders. And so for Heroic to be showing this kind of form, going into this match to potentially find their place in Washington, D.C. That's huge for them. And we've got James Banks to hear more. Exist. That was one hell of a way to get kick started. And we saw you guys getting fired up in your, your team huddle beforehand. But finally, a good start here. Were we feeling like things are back on track? Or was this your big making the wrong mistake on, on the veto? Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it was a mistake from their side. I mean, Vertigo is, I think, one of our best maps. Um, so, but I think we got got off to a really good start. Um, I think uh, Tessas had a really good game uh, on A side, and that's really important for us. And yeah, everyone was just hitting their shots, and the communication was on point. So I'm happy. So finally, the start you would have wanted. But we're going into Ancient next, and at least for Ancient, right? They have not played this since back when Tizium was on the roster. It's been a long time since we've seen it. But we know they can get very tactical, a bit more strat heavy on it. What are you expecting? What's your mindset? Just playing completely the same heroic style and waiting to see what happens. Well, I think uh, the mistake we did against EG in the previous games on Ancient, we kind of focused too much like on their style. Okay. Um, so I think it fits us pretty good now that we, we can just focus on, on ourselves because we don't really have any info to, to go on. Um, so yeah. And how motivated are the guys because of this like, whole going to the spring final? You want to avoid that showdown at all costs, right? <laughs> yeah, it would, uh, it would help a lot uh, <laughs> to win this uh, regarding uh, the whole schedule and everything. but. Uh, one game, uh, one map at a time, and uh, yeah, we gotta stay focused. I'm sure you will exist. Thank you very much, man. Thank you.
Welcome to the round table of in-game leaders. I've assembled some of the greatest minds. I've got Nitro, Nexa, and Karakan to discuss all the things around being a fantastic IGL when it comes to Counter-Strike. This kind of discussion I want to start off with is becoming an IGL. Now, I know for you, Nitro, as an example, they just kind of fell into it. You know, you went from being one of the star players into this. But how does it come into it? How do you just start becoming an IGL? How did it work for you, for example, Carrigan? I think already in a young age, uh, when I played 1.6, I kind of was, was always a secondary caller in, in that sense. Okay. Um, I was a star player back in the days. People might not know <laughs> from More CSGO, times, yeah. Um So yeah, I, I think I played under great in-game leaders uh, back then uh, in the Danish scene, but also got B was like, kind of the last the big IGL I had before. Mm -hmm. I kind of took it myself up. Um, so yeah, it kind of came natural with when I was 16 that I had like a strong voice and a vision for the game and how it should be played. Um, but I waited until the right moment. So I was mature enough to kind of lead the uh, bigger teams. I mean, for me, I never really wanted to to be the IGL, right? I was always the secondary caller, and I, I, I guess the thing for me is I never really played with any like top tier in-game leader, you know. Mm. So I don't really know how others do it. I just know that like I was always a secondary caller, and people kind of like looked looked up to me, and they said, "Yeah, bro, you should do this. Like, you know, you have what it takes. You should be the in-game leader. You know, you can do it." So I always went into that path, like I tried to stop being an in-game leader like three or four times, but it, like, <laughs> like it, it just, yeah, like, you know, I was like, I, I think I'm better as a secondary caller, you know, mm -hmm. like I can help my actual in-game leader, you know, and then just somehow I just kept, kept coming back into it, you know, and then I decided to take the responsibility and, and, you know, see, see where it can take me. For you, Nick. I think like 2016, I first tried and I was really bad because I was like, I was really skilled on my team and like, I was like the second voice. And I think the second voice in the team is like the best because mm -hmm. you can kind of do what you want and like also be playing your own game, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best, best job in the world, but, I think, uh, and let's just go. 2017 is when I first took over and uh, just went from there and uh, it was not something that I wanted. <laughs>
has in this DCT side defense coming in for Heroic. So I'm having a very tough time, you know, saying much more than that was just a blowout. Yeah, you mentioned Trish. I think that the one bright light for big, and that was really like a really in the distance kind of. There's trying. a car it's coming a over, and you can just see the headlight, you know, from really far away. Krimbo had a couple of times Trish's number figured out on the B side. The okay. problem was that Heroic had done such a pristine job at any other side of the map that they had the rotation bright and ready. Everyone was here. Yavi was coming over. Caden was coming over. We saw a couple of highlights where Tessis is on the B side. Like, it's very easy to know where your opponents are going to be when you have already cut short 75% of the map. And that's what happened for Heroic. Yeah, Big was certainly allowing Heroic to just simply get away with murder uh, on that ground. Obviously, we were desiring a lot more coming out from Big. But uh, Yavi actually stepping up to the occasion as well on this one, as you were mentioning. Yeah, you know what I love? A map specialist like Yavi. He's very, very good on Vertigo. And he's shown that time and time again in this tournament. He's shown that time and time again in general. I would argue he's a very, very profound player on Vertigo. Even in Copenhagen Flames, when he made his name for himself, Vertigo, one of the best maps. You know what you get with this guy. As you said, he was all over the map. Then he was on A-side, then he's on B. You saw in, in these highlights that he's constantly moving around, constantly taking fights. And when he's in this, I guess, mood to play Counter-Strike at this level, then if Yabi is supposed to be your third or your fourth best player, you have a very good player at hand. Look at the difference right here. His stats on Vertigo compared to the rest of the maps at this tournament. He's a specialist and I love it. Actually unreal. And I think it's one of the perks of Herrick's play style on a CT side hmm. because they're so mobile and because they're not afraid of changing setups. Whenever one player is catching on fire, he's not just going to be segregated to that one area where the map he is. No, 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 no. He's going to be sometimes using the spawn on the B side. We saw it. He's going to be fighting down Ram with Tezzas. So it becomes really complicated for Big to avoid whoever you're scared of because Heroic will very likely not play two or three rounds in a row with the same setup. Now, we aren't exaggerating when we were saying this map was dire straits, unfortunately, for Big because uh, Maniac, even when they had the man advantage, still can close out the round. Lovers of Counter-Strike, I would advise you to close your eyes right now because this is about to get weird. Round 15, very strange situation for Big. We will see. It starts once again, as I talked about, this duel, Krimbo onto Shush, opening kill for Big. Then a little bit of creativity here. That sneak towards Yellow here. They catch, us, they catch sorry, completely Kadian off guard. It's a 5v2, this should be over. This should be round number three. But then because they're in such a bad situation in this game, everybody's taking duels they shouldn't. Yabi and his counterpart star are doing a pristine job here. Terrison is caught off guard by the flash and a one versus two with the smoke down and the smokes pop. And we know what's going to happen. It is straight up impossible, straight up impossible to lose a 5v2 when you have the entirety of the bomb site right here. I have no idea what they did wrong right here for Big. They're all fighting when they're not supposed to fight. Obviously, give credit to Yabi and Stam for hitting some nice shots, but let's be completely honest. There's absolutely no way you can allow yourself to lose a round like that. Not only for this game, it didn't really matter. They would have lost anyway, but that's a confidence blow right there in the face of Big. Well, let's hear how Heroic managed to swing that round in their favor in this mic'd up moment. Det har den her, Lund. Jeg kommer. Jeg laver Marke hurtigt. Jeg har to flashes. Kig med en Marke. De smukker mig kort. Flash over højt. Ja. Den dårlige der. Der flash over Marke igen. Så ja. pikker jeg lidt. Flash. Pikker lidt med på den. Det går. Død. Fight it. Død, Død lige nu. Nice. Reloader. Hinder om gul. Død side. Nice. Jeg pikker Jacob gul væk. Jeg pikker gul væk her. Ja. ja, kom. Jakob smukker bombe, og så flasher han til gul. Ej, vi gul, Lund. Gå tæt, gul. Gå tæt, Lund. Kom tæt, Lund. Gå tæt. Smuk bombe, og flash gul. Jeg har flasher. Okay. En lige på. Oli, smukker bombe. Han trykker. Er du bag sand? Ja. Gå venstre rundt. Gå venstre rundt, ja. 3, 2, 1. Er du del? Nice! Nice, man! Fandelig! Sygt, sygt, gulder! Nice, man! Hvordan kan det lade sig gøre? Det er helt varmt, Jakob. <laughs> we get to hear exactly the passion you were talking about, Jacob. Yeah, how is it even possible? It all starts off with a bad smoke in CT spawn. Yeah. They even localize it. He, he says it's a bad smoke, bad smoke, let's go for it. It's terrible for Big. It's absolutely terrible and it cannot happen at this level. Simple yeah. as it is. Things going from bad to worse, unfortunately, for Big as it is Ancient Heroics map pick coming up next. So, Danny, what should we be looking out for from the Danes? Yeah, we saw Heroic play this map against EG at the beginning of the tournament, and there was actually this one interesting tactic that they showed. So let me break it down here. So what we're going to see is just early mid control here from Heroic. And what we're actually going to see here is a bit of a donut take. So ever since the new update, uh, Heroic have been definitely one of those teams that know how to take this donut position. So I'm going to show this round here. So first, what we're going to see is just a simple Molotov towards the back of Donut. This flushes out anybody towards the backside and allows Heroic to basically set up as they come in towards this Donut position. The key thing here, though, is actually Yabby's smoke here. Yabby's smoke here lands towards the CG spawn area, and it's basically going to help facilitate them as they come up from Donut. The smoke lands right about here, and this smoke here cuts off this position so that as these players come through this Donut area, there can't be a CT here, and you're going to see how that helps them. So what you're going to see is that Yabby, he's also going to throw this flash here, allows the players to swing out, but 
pay attention to the pathing that they have here. Notice that as soon as that flash pops, they all path along this very left side. Now they do this for a couple of reasons. So the first one is, is that as they come through, you'll see that by hugging this left wall, they're making sure that they're not exposed to somebody who could be playing that left side position. Next, you'll also see that this smoke that Yabby throws, it actually gives Tess's space so that he can come in and clear this right side more clearly with more space. Next, you'll also see that with them pathing along the left side, it actually gives Caden the long range angle so that he can punish anybody who decides to peek up from that left side. Now, the interesting thing here is that as they come in towards the entrance, they actually swap sides. They actually go from the right side to the left. They're all gonna fan over towards that other side. And by doing so, they're making sure that they're not exactly blocking Kadian's shot because if they decide to go along this left side, they'd still be blocking his shot. By going along the right, they're making sure that lane is still open for him to take the shot. And you'll see that by going along that side, it allows them a wider angle for players that are playing towards the site. So you see that for Tessas, as he comes in here, he has a wide angle to be able to fight these players towards the site. He's able to get that kill. And then Kadian, lastly, with that long range angle, he's able to punish a player coming out. So nice round here from Heroic. Once again, taking advantage of that donut position. We'll have to see if Big are ready for it. Yeah, that is going to be the question, and I'm worried for Big in this one, not just because of the preparation, but the fact is, Jacob, we haven't seen this iteration of Big playing on Ancient. We haven't seen Big as an organization playing Ancient for over six months. I think last time they were playing uh, Ancient was with Titian on, on the lineup as well. It's been a very, very long time since we've seen them play it. We know he wrote to be a very decent Ancient team as well, so I don't know about you, Matthew. After watching Vertigo, after watching the video, after watching everything that has transpired so far, I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith in Big even making this game competitive. Uh, originally, I didn't have a whole lot of faith but my only question was what kind of heroic were we going to see today because here in Copenhagen they had shown a couple of moments of doubts couple of moments of second guessing themselves none of that on Vertigo Fria. they were lights out they were very on point and I don't see any reason this would change yeah this is heroic with claws and they are looking to take this one in two for big a completely new ground for this iteration of the roster and the pressure is on their shoulders if they want to avoid the showdown
worked really hard on this map because we knew that uh, we will play it and Gop has some nice nades. Maybe you, some guys can copy some and um, yeah, we like really worked a lot on Ancient. I think we are also, I mean, I wouldn't say that good, but I think we are not that bad like Heroic is thinking maybe. Ah, so you feel like they might have made the mistake here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. I think we're not that good, but not as bad as Eric. I think <laughs> maybe. If, <laughs> if we can take anything from the last game, well, what we can hope for is that it can only be better. <laughs> yes. That's true. The, obviously, Big's map pick of Vertigo did not go their way, but if Auvin thinks that Heroic is underestimating them on this map, maybe they'll get more than three rounds. Maybe we'll see a closer affair here. Maybe we'll see a third map, but that's a huge maybe. At least, Alex, tell me that they're well experienced and routine at playing the map. Surely, surely we can we can give them that, right? I'm sorry, Anders. Not the case. Last time Big played Ancient, it was in June of last year. Oh. I'll paint the picture a little bit here. Blame, blame F and Config were on Astralis then. <laughs> Farlig was on Astralis then. Ancient history. And Tizian was on big. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I still, I had the same dream for Vertigo that it was, you know, some kind of crazy pocket pick that no one's seen come. I want to, I'm just going to keep that going. Maybe this is it for big. Maybe they really have improved and practiced and they're just going to be sick at it. They better be because Heroic are looking fired up. We are ready. And it's already an attack towards the B-bomb side. Bomb being planted without a single casualty on any side, which makes for an interesting retake. There is a kit in play on Krimbo, so watch out if he dies somewhere where exactly that is. That one defuse kit is definitely the only ticket big after retaking and winning this round, and they need it badly. Gabby is throwing shots from the P250 all the way back here. That's interesting. Shush set up for potential wall bang, it looks like. And Stown gonna be the first point of contact. They're trying to run him down, but everyone is blind. No one can see anything. Shush coming through with the kills. I don't know how he's alive. And Stown with the last headshot. What is going on? I am glad we got Stown's perspective on that. Just showed how crazy that round was. The fact that he was blind for the full duration and was able to recover, casually swing back out, find another kill. Well done by Heroic. Just good post plants overall. This just felt like a very labored fight from Big. They had ideas of where they wanted to throw their flashes to get back in this one. It ju it's just that the time to kill was so long. It really was. And I think surely part of that was the fact that there were flashbangs everywhere. Yeah. I think the big players, I don't think they knew what they were shooting at. And half of Heroic didn't really either. So what, a, what an interesting round. All right, it's going to be a full-on rush into the middle, but again, the flashes might be making it tricky. Good couple of kills there for Kadian. Dinks are coming out, making life hard on Tessas, but the backup is going to be there before they can really run him down. So all they've lost is a Mac 10, and that's acceptable. Not bad. Pretty clean stuff. Big heading into the gun round here. And I want to see what Favin was talking about. He said Gobby had some lineups. They've got some ideas for this map. Baroque are underestimating us. We'll see what those are able to accomplish. And if Heroic are going to keep up the play that they've shown us on Ancient. Mahone obviously had a great breakdown in his zone in the map, the game versus EG. Yes. And I'm sure we're gonna see similar strategies employed against Big. My only complaint is that I can't spend more time in the Mahone zone. That's really top of the list for me. Is the Mahone zone somewhere that you'd like to spend a whole day? I could. Set up a couch, get some popcorn ready. Yeah, I, I think I could do that. Would you trust your kids in the Mahone zone? I, uh, imagine how good they would be a Counter-Strike if they spent time in the Mahone zone now. Of course I would. That's, that's true. Yeah. Tessis and Searson both going down to an even trade to start this with. They have that smoke that Mahone was talking about that's actually set up on that towards CT spawn. So they have a little bit of an entry, but they, they're not pushing really Donut to start with. It's more of a straight up A hit. Yeah, wow. I mean, even Flash, he gets the headshot. But the grenades were very similar from the heroic side, and it's landed them, if nothing else, in a two-on-two, -two, which is pretty good. Big, they really do need to come back into this game early. They they needed the warm-up even on Vertigo. They just never got it, because heroic took it away from them right away. But the start of this map has to be great. And look at how they're rotating around Kadian. If Big have to come back through the map, how do they check all these corners? It'll be really tough. Keto, this is going to be on him. If he can find this kill onto Kadian, then this is possible, but Heroic have definitely outmaneuvered big. Although, Favin is here on his own flank too. 
so this could play in a, in a big part in this, but Keto with the clear, okay. This is very doable now for Big. Yabby pushing out, just wants to take Keto's life, does a great job on that. And now we have the 1v1, smoke on the bomb. Yeah, but it's a 10 second defuse and it would have been out of the way. It's not like uh, Keto had a kit either. So this is very tricky. Just lining it up. That's a lot of damage, enough certainly to get Farman off of that defuse. And he has to find this kill right now. Yabby's playing it expertly, slowing it down and making it very hard for the CT to find anything. And the USP, even missing the shot, it doesn't matter. It'll be a third round for Heroic. Painful, and the bomb will take down Farman. It's another death to the bomb on Ancient. Add it to the list. Kadian calling his own number as the contingency plan for the mid round there. Cutting off the rotation, at least able to feed Yabby that information. But really, it is Yabby who is the hero of this round. Four kills. That one, that blind kill, that was something too. That's a lot harder than it looks. Making those kind of calls for Heroic, and obviously when they push that early in the round, it allows them the time to be able to do that. Even if Kadian kind of missed his opportunity there, I would say nine times out of 10, he just gets that kill almost instantly. So very, very good play. Hard beginning once again here for the big side. They get taken a timeout, but they're going to be without any real cash going into the next round. Just want to see if Big can keep this one competitive. Obviously, Vertigo really got away from them, but they need to really rethink their map pool, or at least find a way to just have a way to be competitive versus tier one teams. Because yes. right now you could say that we're always going to get a competitive game on Mirage. It's hard to look at the other maps right now and say, this is a sure thing that Big is going to be in the fight because Inferno has been tough for them. Vertigo was obviously treacherous too. They could make something of this ancient game. That would be nice. And they go one for one early on. There's pushes actually all across this lane, but Heroic, they're able to contain it. Also just in, in terms of the future of Big map pool, if if Vertigo is looking a little bit sketchy, if if Ancient isn't looking good either, and we've just got Anubis in there, that's that 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 could be a lot of maps that could suddenly be thrown into question for Big. And then in best of threes, when it comes to the veto, you you are going to be in trouble. Very concerned. A little bit of a couple of kills coming up for the side of Big. Tessis and Yavi both go down, but it won't change the outcome here. Big will have to sit this one out, and we'll. Obviously be buying in the next round. I'm curious to see how that's going to be unfolding for them. There are a lot of options, even on the CT side. We've seen, I mean, teams like Heroic make a lot of use out of, you know, throwing in the random round where you're pushing the A hallways and just generally you can be a little bit aggressive. It's risky, but it's fun to see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what Big has in store. We'll see what Heroic has to counter that. At least we saw in the first gun round Heroic having to make a very solid mid round to try to thwart Big, but got it. just have to see more from this one, or else Heroic will easily walk to Washington, D.C. Supposed to take a flight, it's supposed to be a bit harder than that, but you know what? They can make it in time now? Yeah. They probably could, yeah. Gotta get across Alaska somehow, I don't know. It might be, might be tricky. To get to Washington, D.C.? Well, just to get to the States in general, I mean... I don't think you have to... Oh, oh, you're saying over the... I'm just saying... The, if you actually want to walk there. Yeah, I thought that was you, what you were saying. I just meant the difficulty of the... Oh, okay. ...of the process. Fair enough. That is... You know, it's much more reasonable to take It's a little more metaphorical than... I appreciate role. it. Yeah. Opposed to the real life, I appreciate it. <laughs> Fifth round. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. They do have an AWP, they have some M4s to back it up. It, it's up to Big to show us how this works out. Smoke's going down. They're thrown from a different direction, but they're very similar to the ones that we saw earlier. They've smoked up Donut and also the Ruins in the back line, so this could get interesting. The spray is great for Krimbo and Tabson back here. One more headshot will do it. He's going to take down Stown and Kadian in the middle. That was a very well defended A bomb site, which typically, actually, especially in the early round, there's only going to be one person there, so I can appreciate. Who are trying to do it, but Big, they were well aware. Just great hold from Krimbo. He's one of the few bright spots there for Big on Vertigo, and he's showing that form continuing into Ancient. For a, a budding star, somebody that German CS is putting a lot of faith in for their future, it's, it's great to see him have these kinds of steps because you would say last year was a little bit tough for him 
uh, given the fact that he had to switch positions so consistently. Basically, when Big were subbing players in and out, he was actually the one that had to switch spots. Yep. And it kind of led to some inconsistency. But it was it's it's nice to see that he can just keep his head up, recognize that he does have a job to do, and he'll do it to the best of his ability. They do need that. This project, you're right, a lot of eyes on it in the German counter-strike scene. All right. That was kind of interesting. Just He felt very, very confident <laughs> yeah, that was, that's where he was going to be holding. He just oh. knew, yeah. <laughs> But this is this is great from from Krimbo and Tapson. Ta uh, Krimbo also just kept dodging flashes, dodging flashes, and then finally picked the right timing to swing out there to find the opening double. Good stuff. Yeah, can't can't just that. exec that easily. That's what they're saying to Heroic. Can't just exec into my bomb site. Gonna All shut right. you down. Timeout being called for Heroic behind that. This is certainly interesting. They've been on a nice enough roll, but I guess they want to make sure that. They can slow it down. Also gives, obviously, got be a chance to have a little bit of a conversation. And we'll see. It's a big problem still to solve for the CT side in terms of proving that they can secure the mid control. And I don't know if they're the kind of team that want to defend outside of B. Obviously, some teams notoriously phase. When Rain is there, it'll be Rain and Kerrigan pushing out like that. I don't know if Bigger have that same mindset, but either way, they certainly need to make sure that that at least the B ramp is not just open business for Heroic. Because some of those pushes that can come out early to that side of the map are also very, very dangerous. Wow, they really... Oh, oh Rimbo, he's alone here. Okay, he's going to fall back, but he gets caught. No, he can't fall back. That seems like a big mistake and a little bit of a disaster. Tabson is set up in a similar position, but they're going to Molotov him out of this one. He just has to use the smoke, and he comes barreling right out into the fight. It's a team kill to follow it up, but still, the A bomb site is compromised for the minute. It should be a bomb pump, but the bomb is stuck back here for a minute, and they might wait now instead for Tessas to show up. Oh, this is worrying for Heroic. They had all that space, but now the smokes are fading, but Tess is still on the lurk. Able to take down Keto, and now Big, they're going to start feeling pressure from that backside, but Shush just stays. He holds on to the site, takes down Favin, leaving Sersen in the one versus two. He needs to fight back in this one. You need to build some momentum for Big, and he's going to start with the first. It's a very, very weird round. sersen has got no idea, but oh. he's almost catching it, and now the problem is there's so much time he could make a run for it, or he could fake it and run back to the bomb site if he really wanted to. It looks like he's just going to be almost knife out the whole way. He is aware that Searson could be coming through this way, so now he's going to slow it down 35 seconds and allow Searson to maybe make a mistake. This is so scary. Back turn now, 30 seconds. Tess is going to come check it out. Oh, quick scope coming up, and Searson will land the shot. That is critical. A one versus two and a great clutch for Searson. Needed to see something like that to give Big some momentum here. Even off the back of a heroic timeout, even off the back of an opening pick, for heroic, big were able to recover. Ooh, this was looking almost. This was looking really promising for Tessus too. So many ways he could have played this one, but just great positioning from Sersen though. It's interesting how they don't really want to try and run for middle. They're just throwing grenades down there to do some damage. If any of the T's are trying to rush it, I'm. I'm not sure if I've seen that too often. It feels like most of the CTs right now, they, they do still want to try and pop their way through. Easy pick off. Searson well aware that there was a gap in the defense in the middle. Don't know what Heroic do from here. They've got Shush in the middle still, so if the rest of the squad can put pressure on B, he could be put back into use, but even he's been spotted. I don't know. I feel like Shush was still in a, in a fun position in there. Could have unlocked something, but it does seem like they just want to use their numbers to go for a 2-2 B split. Maybe they're actually even going to shift those numbers a little bit here. Three towards Cave, in fact. But this setup, or this hold from Keto is very strong. Great off angle. Flash, though, is coming out from Kadian, it seems like. But and I, Okay, Keto gives up the chase, actually. He doesn't want to keep fighting. Yeah. Smoke going down right behind him. Flash around the corner, but he's in front of it. So good spray for him. Good double kill. And that should slow everything down. This seems like a very controllable round from the side of Big. They're losing one more player in here, but it's still very respectable. Starting to get a little bit more warmed up. Every single round counts at the moment. Every single rifle that Big could save and just build an economy behind. 
It's still very much at the foundation of what you need to do here on the CT side, but at least it's working in this round. Those were some fun movement options from, from Keto there. Kind of crouch swing backwards yeah, and pivot back into the angle. Good hold from him. That double was really important to slow down Heroic. He just fell for free. Easily could have been a Heroic round, actually. But this is looking like a pretty one-dimensional play from Heroic. Yeah, They are just grouping up towards this B lane. They have some of that space now. And you would expect that they're just going to be making their way up the ramp, given that Cave is... That's a no-go. Well, you can see Yabby's already set up in the back with the flashes. Already thrown out the first one. Second one's going to be following it up. But Sisson is still absolutely untouched with that AWP. Now Farvin's going to be showing up. It's three quick kills. The two flashbangs were not enough for Heroic. And this time it's a really nice cleanup. Nobody dies on the CT side. And yeah, this is shaping up a lot better. Yeah, this game is now competitive. That's what you can say. That's something that we weren't able to say on Vertigo. And so another timeout use by Exist. And I, I think that th things are shaping up here for Big. They've already demonstrated that they have a pretty solid B hold, A hold. You would th you would say that the one point of contention that maybe Heroic put in, haven't put him as much pressure on would be mid. That's true. and. This feels like right now, Heroic, if they just don't run into the early grenades in middle, they could have middle and outside of B almost for free. Yeah. And that's a lot of map. I mean, the only thing that maybe could screw it up is if Searson is going to be kind of orping and donut, which he, I guess he was been close to a couple of times, if he could be there or just in middle in general, maybe he could make it expensive for big in terms of pick, getting a pick off here or there. But it does feel like there's some real real options for Heroic to try and get some map control. They're going to be setting it up. They were actually expecting the grenade. You could see they were waiting on the other side. And Tabson trying to get the timing down. But they will run right out. And here's Searson at the donut position. That's something that they have to get past. It's going to be a peak. Oh, oh. flick, though. He's so quick when he's fast. Oh. There we go. What? Oh, oh, the no scope headshot on top. He is destroyed heroic in this round. Shush and Yabby. They have nothing left to do. That, that is some expert play from Searson. They tested him. And he survived. He keeps going. Fourth kill coming for the smoke. Spamming away with that tech nine. Oh, that is so shocking. What a lockdown from Sersen there. Four kills. Shush. Trying to make something happen. And Sersen, he's hunting for it. He definitely wants this ace. But might not be presented to him. Shush is making his way towards middle. Trying to play in front of that smoke. Expecting a re-aggress from Big. And Big, they're... Just making sure that this is very difficult for him. Not going to give up anything for free. You, just, you actually can't even really... You don't want to give up any more casualties. Keep that money moving forward. After what Sersen did, this is a round that you should be walking away with. Four alive at least. And they do. Favin to close it out. But that was just beautiful from Sersen. We saw so many glimpses of this. We even saw a sustained performance like this years ago. 2020. It would be beautiful and something that you could grasp onto for yeah. Big if he can actually bring that into this year. Yeah, that would change the whole narrative around the team in so many ways. Because there are, there are so many opponents that Big will be up against that have Orpers that just deliver over and over again. And they need Searson to step up to. They just, they just absolutely do. This was so sick. And Big, I mean, oh, sorry, Heroic, they were almost trying to set up the... The double elevation peak here, right? They wanted to have both people swing at the same time, but KD was a little bit more forward. And it gives him maybe less than half a second to get the scope back, and it's enough for Searson to just destroy them. The no-scope at the end was pretty stylish, too. Got way more excited I, than Searson is. I don't think I've ever seen Searson smile. No, <laughs> he's just... Yeah, he's a bit stoic. Just leave him be. He's in the zone. Yeah. I'd say don't even touch him. Just let him, just let him sit there. Don't don't try and pull him out of it. <laughs> when Kavi touched his arm, he's like, "What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing?" It? <laughs> oh man, five four. That's five in a row for Big. For anyone that's keeping score at home, you've got some flashes that are going to be coming down, some smokes as well for the heroic side. But so far, this A defense has been pretty tight, I would say, for the CT side. Good flash around the corner, and Krimbo he can't get his eyes back in time. He goes down. And he was the only one there for once. There was a bit of a weakness. Bomb being planted. This is actually kind of scary for Big. They have a lot of weaponry, but if they lose one more, 
player in this retake, they might have to cancel it almost immediately. And there we go. Shush with the kill to take down Tapson. And now it's getting real sketchy. Big. They're still setting it up, but Farman is in danger here. Stown misses the opportunity. Farman just keeps on going. Great kills to try and get oh, them back. What a headshot, though. And Tessus will claim the last. So all of the rifles gone and Heroic feeling fired up once again. Energy's there for Kadian. He recognizes how big of a round that was for him and his team. Just good utility, heroic. They got stopped in their tracks the last time they tried an A exec. Oh Th this time around, it really works so much better. Yes. Man, makes you want hexed in the server against him. I, I really still want to see that again. You know? <laughs> yeah, that could just keep on giving. Rematch that one more time. That could be fun. Searson is very aggressive with no backup. This is so scary. He's going to be there though to pick up Tessus. And again, they kind of know that if they hunt him down, it could be the end of them. Keto's going to get killed on the other side. So still a four on four. That's an important retake. I kind of like it though, because you have to assume a lot of the attention for Roig would have been towards the middle. Oh, look at Searson. He's sneaking it in. Good stuff. Yabby nearly getting one more. And actually, oh. the bullet, it went around the corner. How does he get the kill? It looked like it just bent the corner there and caught him. That is sick. The Tabson, though, will be able to bring it back. A Molotov, put a little bit of pressure on, perhaps. Not going to burn anyone alive, obviously. Down and Kadian. It's put in a position where you can wallbang it from the other side. Very unlikely that that's how you win the round. But on the other hand, Kadian is low on health, so maybe that is a way to do it. Good shot for Stown. Taking down Farvin and buying a couple of extra seconds here. No kit currently picked up. And Stown, he's going to try for it here. A wide swing into Tabs and he catches him. And Searson, one false move. And Kadian is on the other side waiting for him. Oh, and he's going to get side swiped instead. Stown to bring this one back for his team. That is a very interesting round. Searson is doing so well in his positions, but he just can't be everywhere at once. Right. Big are falling apart, it seems like, everywhere that he's not. Very concerning. And this that shot right there from Yabby, that... I... I need it in more slow motion, that's a problem. I, I Yeah, I could use it again, too. Because that I don't think that was on him. I, I, it looked I think, like it was really far I, away. I think he was shooting while moving, or... Yeah. Yeah, and, and somehow he just mastered the recoil of moving while shooting. Okay, Krimbo. Tested again. He's got the only premium rifle for Big, so he has to come up. Huge, and he's getting at the double. Oh, that is... I mean, that's almost enough to win the round. A couple of more bullets. Maybe that's a, a, a four-man spray down. But the rest of them, like you said, that was the only premium rifle. Is, that one? is he getting caught by that? He saw one. Does he not realize that Keto is there? I don't think... Oh, he's thinking about it. Surely he checks. Searson goes down. All right. Well done. I was, for a minute, getting nervous that he was getting absolutely bamboozled. Farvin with a rare C set 75, but now they know where he is and they can play around it with more than a minute left. Already Stown in the middle and Farvin, yeah, he should be dead and he will be. That's 13 kills on Stown. Katie, <laughs> doing all the yelling. Hey, what is he chanting? I've, I actually have no idea. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe probably nobody can understand it then if you can't. That was, a uh, got a little bit hectic for Heroic there, but they were very quickly able to correct their position. They slowed everything down and didn't look back. Seven to five, score line, big. Not what you want to see for the CT side of Ancient. Maps evened out a little bit, but still you want to win the half. That's for sure on the defense. If... Oh, wait a minute. They might be setting up for a little bit of a fast push here. Already climbing up towards the B bomb site. Flashbang, and they're ready to go. Shush, that's a hard fight to win. He's moving forward and checking two different angles, and he's still got the job done. Swinging wide is Tabson, and some good headshots. Another dink would have maybe done it, but Stown takes him down, and we're right back into a two on two. Smoked off, and again, because they do this early, they have so much time, and this is where Heroic are just a very hard team to play. This is where Kadian does his best work. Outmaneuvering opponents, guessing rotations, and understanding timings. Sersen makes his way back to this A site, and he has to hit the shot. Okay, wait, Kadian actually spotted him, and Sersen's able to recover just in time. Not sure if he was able to hear that, but regardless, it's a one-on-two. And Stown, 
He hears that scope, but he doesn't know where Krimbo is just yet. This is a huge fight, and Krimbo finds the timing, and Big, they're able to withstand that push and mid-round play. Critical work there. I... So a couple of different options you could tell for Kadian. He could have maybe thrown the Molotov. He went for the straight up fight. Either way, I would still say it's, I, I don't even really understand how Heroic win the opening fight here. It feels like this is such a hard bomb site to breach when there are three people like that. But um, good entries and even getting into the two on two is, uh, is pretty respectable. But nice defense at the end. Six to seven opening oh. shot for Yabby to take down Tapson. That's that's that timing. Yep. Probably had the best spawn there. And this is a quick play into B once again. One for one. But that's not good because Big were already behind a man. Now they're playing with a man deficit. But Favin sniping Tessis right through the corner of that box. And he pushes for more. Oh, a third actually for Favin. All of that behind a failed Molotov that landed at the corner of that brick instead of all the way in the back line. That's what allowed Favin the space to even take the first fight, maybe especially. That's kind of shocking. 14 kills on him. Him and Searson right now, absolutely leading big back into this game. Even if seven rounds is still amazing for the T side here, it's not like Heroic going to be too sad, but at least big are giving themselves a chance. And Yabby is waiting for the mistake. He wants somebody to feel the pressure, to get a little bit curious and take one more step forward. But... They're very regimented on the German side at the moment. They don't really want to move anywhere. And I can respect it. Yeah, he eventually realizes it's on him. He's setting up the instant peak. And yeah, that's the right move. A little bit of damage on the Searson. Bit of a peak coming out. Got to be careful because Yabi's not someone you want to give too many fights. Down to 30 seconds. He's trying to jiggle out that AWP shot. Look at him really testing it all the way through. But Searson is unimpressed. He's going to find a 17th kill. And that'll tie up the scoreline. Favin bringing that back by his lonesome. Got to see this one back. Yep. That first kill on the Tessis is just so precise. And also just sniping Kadian as well. Great stuff. This is, this is looking a little bit better for Big, but they're still not really too happy about this half regardless. 7-7 seven seven scoreline. Would love to see a little bit more dominance on the defense from the German side. But they might be able to find the lead at half. Yeah, that would at least just feel like you're you're winning a little bit. You set up maybe to win the pistol round two. And we did have that interview going into it, sort of talking about, you know, they've been prepping, they've had some different smoke lineups and all the rest of it. So maybe their T side is gonna be the one that's gonna be really innovative and, and could change something here. Again, push towards the B bomb site. Just a distraction over at A. Some grenades being thrown in. It's only keeping one person out there, but a missed spray down. Oh, and this is disastrous. Kido and Fabin both going down. Searson up close with the AWP. He's going to sneak in one kill. He's Ooh. trying to do this all on his own. Great shots coming through. He is a machine right now. And moving forward, getting the leg shot. That should have been a kill. Oh, I wanted Searson to do it. He is so godlike when he's in this mode. Nade will take care of Tessus, and now Krimbo will have to follow up with Searson left off. Already getting the one there, but time is swiftly going to be running out. Good spray down. He takes Kadian, but has no idea where Stown is. And he's low on health. He walks in, oh! and he still lands the headshot. That should never happen. What a crazy round. Somehow, they find a way back in. Krimbo with the one versus three, and that's how the half ends. The first experiment's underway. The first experiment, it's not much of an experiment. We wanna let these guys size each other up. We want things to be even. We gotta figure out before things get crazy, who's actually coming out on top when it becomes Yakinder versus Stown. Let's go. Clearly, it seems like Yakinder's got the hot start, uh, but what Yakinder doesn't know is what's to come. Uh, for now, again, things will be simple. Things will be easy. We'll keep it nice and clean. Uh, but they don't know who's in the chaos room, who's in the zen mode, and ultimately, it's this guy right here, Kinder, who's about to get screwed with. So we'll let him enjoy his moment. We'll let things go as they do. Uh, at the end of this, though, things get interesting. We'll go check in with Stown. Stown has started the day a little cold, but that's fine, because again, things are gonna stay quiet in here. We're gonna give Stown a great environment. 
we're gonna give you Kinder more and more challenges. This was the easy round, okay? This was when things were the most normal. Alarm round. So, Stan, we're gonna send you back to your room. Some things stay the same, some things are about to get very different. Okay, what's going on here? This is uh, an interesting mood set for gaming. We've got the bathrobe here, <laughs> some candles. That's pretty nice. I'm down to play some CS. In your kinder's room, we're gonna start to crank the dial, so to say. Let's hit it. So, what's this? <laughs> if you think it's gonna distract me, it's not gonna work. Okay, maybe it does work. <laughs> Chill out, I'm losing. <laughs> Boy, focus, Tony. We need to win this. Geht durch. Zwei haben 1 AP. Einer noch 1 AP. Aber Pico, 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 Pico. einer hat 1 AP. Window einer. Ey, er lagt. Ich pick jetzt wieder hier. Okay. Einer AP immer noch, Josef. Close. Einer AP und Window. Window hat nur die. Einer AP Headshot. Bombe lag Armin. Letzter war. Letzter war Window. Nein, Armin AP tot. Er hat nur eine Diegel, aber der kann jetzt AK picken. Donut raus. Nice, What the really good rounds, one of uh, many good rounds being brought up from Searson. He looked so godlike in the opening. Still, they actually, I mean, they get up to eight rounds really impressive. Some of those rounds were super clutch on the side of Big. They need to win the pistol, they need to keep this momentum going, and they jumped right in. It looked like, you know. Looked like he wanted to actually headbutt the bullet there. He just jumped right into it. That's not how you do it. A Molotov to slow them down. They've taken Donut, but now there's a crossfire established. And look at the rotation from Heroic. They are bringing a couple of more people over here, trying to crack it open. Yabby will get one more shot, but they still are in a three on three. This is a solid post plant for Big, one that they want to convert so badly. Nice gush onto Kadian. That's going to make his life difficult. And you can see that the defense is solidifying for Big. Couple players in Donut. Taps in taking that first contact. Okay, this is a bit of a risky fight, as a matter of fact. And it's actually baiting Krimbo to peek out too. Big, they're giving opportunities to Heroic here, but no one is seizing them. Taps in though, one shot for him, and now it's a two versus two, but there's not much room to, to work with for Kadian. Krimbo closes it out. I think he caught him mid-air as well. All right, nice recovery from a, from a very, very powerful start there, it looked like. And they keep with the plan and get the plant and into the three on three in the after plant. This is just. Yep. He, he did just jump up into it. I've got this bullet. Don't worry, guys. Regardless, it's big winning the pistol on the second half. Krimbo doing excellent work once again. So you can see that fired him up. Quick Good. hit from big. Again, we were talking about how they just haven't played this map with this five-man lineup. It's been since June since they've even booted up into an official with this org on it. Shush. Are they going to check him the whole way? They have the idea, but oh, this is kind of... Oh, there we go. At least the one. They're quick to return it, and that's fine. A little bit of a surprise. Just don't let it spiral into more than just that one kill. He could never pick up the rifle either. Nade out. Scout up close. Okay. If he could have stayed alive, those scouts... Scout tags could be very interesting. Missed opportunity with the Deagle. Try to bring it back, but all of the bullets are going nowhere for Yabby, which is unusual. Three versus four. But the bomb down, I think, they are fairly safe in this round. They should be 
Even after that kill, I'm still not worried yet. Tabson there with the Galil to take down Tessus, and now they have the crossfire established. They've got everything under control. Stown going to be walking away from it. It will be 10 to 7 in favor of Big. Okay. They were able to withstand the force by. Stown still getting tagged here, but looks like he'll be able to take that scout moving forward. This is a cool pinch from Big. They they actually had some donut presents uh, that was going to be able to take out Kadian, even if Primbo didn't win that fight on him. So, all in all, really good A hit from them. Have to see more like this from Big. Want to see that they can take map control cleanly and that they can pinch on the bomb sites well, because this is a, this is a game where I mean, Favin was saying also that he thinks that Heroic might be underestimating them. I I don't know how even they can be estimated when there's no data though. <laughs> yeah, that that is a bit of a nonsensical statement. I won't lie, but you know, I still think it's um I think it's encouraging to see Big play the way that they are right now. Stand with a headshot though. Don't don't lose to the scout. Whatever happens, just don't do that. Although Stout is having himself a game as well. 19 kills right now, tied with Searson for the top. Looking real sharp. But it's gonna be tough for him to get back into this round. Smokes are here to block off his sight. And this should be a pretty clean plant for Big. Unless there's some just crazy shot through the smoke right now. It'd have to be a miracle. But this should be an 11th round for Big. Yeah, good find. No no panic setting in in spite of an early casualty. I don't even know if Heroic can find the rifle back there. If they've thrown it away in the meantime. It seems like it's being guarded pretty well at the moment. Tamson's hanging out, so... 4 on 5 and... Maybe the USP could do a little bit more damage here, but ultimately it will definitely be 11 to 7 as a scoreline. Uh oh. They have to get rid away from the bomb. Yeah. That's that's obviously what they're setting up for here on the heroic side, just trying to limit them, trying to make this very expensive. Searson is probably dead behind this. They're trying to see if they can escape Tabson. Oh wow, yeah. Three more people go down to the bomb. But from Heroic's point of view, that's actually pretty great. Yes, that's a ton of damage. Sets them up nicely if they're able to win this upcoming gun round now. That bomb radius, it continues to claim lives on Ancient. The increased bomb radius back in December is still showing that, that even pros have a hard time dealing with it. It's it's leading to a lot of these late round fights, and I'm actually really appreciating it. It's, it's, it seems to me like it's been a good change. It's just at least led yes. to more action. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a nice, nice trend. Need more of it. Early Molotovs down, putting on the pressure. Stan's going to throw one grenade. Oh, but Jabby's willing to challenge in the middle. He did get the instant headshot. First bullet accuracy, even jumping up like that. So at least he got the one kill because that could have easily been just overwhelming. And if he doesn't get the, the kill, he's shot in the back anyway. So four and four to start the round with. And that's fine. Big will take it. They're feeling pretty good about this but they might not like what Shush is up to. Already pushing into A main. This is going to find a lot of information very soon for him and his team. And we can see that this is setting up to be a B hit for Big. Shush could find the timing here. This is actually a little bit worrying because that is a great smoke to block coming out from Heroic. Also buying Shush more time to find this flank. This could, this could be lights out for Tabson. And then Big are going to feel really bad about their positions. Yeah. Oh, instant pick off. No miss there. But a good return. It's not over yet. They need more like that. The smoke is up though. And right through Tessa's not able to pick anything up. So it is back into a three on three. They are sandwiched in on the bomb side. They really can't escape very easily right here. Shush shooting in the back. Searson's not ready for that one. And they're in a lot of trouble. You could see them getting picked apart here. So sure, they get the bomb side and the bomb plant, but they just have no way to escape. So good retake from Heroic. And obviously a good setup with that uh, push out from the A hallway. Shush definitely the hero of that round with that push and that's just demonstrating a pretty common concept on ancient that when you have that bomb site being just being on the site is never good enough for a post nope. plant it's there's not enough angles when you're defending from cts that are retaking there do they just have too many angles to kill you from and so big they just got trapped felt like they were taking that space they were hunting it but they became the hunted another timeout being used big which 
I don't know. It's still a little bit early on. Still some map left to be played. They want to make sure that they have everything in order for this upcoming round. You can see a lot of communication coming out from God B. This already feels like a great bounce back from Vertigo, where there was nothing to be happy about regarding Big's performance, but you don't want to drop it here. You want to make sure you keep that momentum up, give yourself a chance to push this to a third map, to push it to Inferno, and to find a spot in Washington. Yeah, so much on the line. Big, they're not that far away. Five more rounds on this map, and at least we get to see a third, and they can keep up the fight a little bit longer. Maybe even a map that they feel a bit more comfortable on. Flashing their way through, and Tabson, beautiful opening. Yabby, he knew someone was coming, and double from Tabson, he keeps it up. Kadian finally shutting it down, but he's ready. There's more coming, and he knows it. The pressure is on. They only have that one AK. It's lost in the middle, and now Kadian has slowed it down. The AWP shot, the Molotov to slow. He keeps going. It's such a great defense from Kadian. Everything was absolutely perfect there. If he doesn't throw the Molotov, they keep coming at him. And if he doesn't hit the op shots, then he's also going to get run down. That was a beautiful opening, but it wasn't enough. What a wonderful recovery from KD in there. It's almost, on the big side of things, unforgivable. Five versus three, you're crunching him, but then the spacing wasn't there. The trading needed to see him die, KD and die earlier in that one. And so big, just such, such a close one, but still felt so far away when you look at actually how many people survive for Heroic in this round. That that should be it. That should be the yes. that should be the round right there. It really should be. Kadian's been proving himself though as an opera in the last six months. He's been he's been looking much better. When the old complaint for heroics lineup was that they're capped because of their captain's ability on the gun, he's showing that he can improve as an individual as the tactics level up, and he wants to force the issue here. He's got great timing to take down Tapson. Early advantage, but Sersen, the opposing sniper, is able to even things out. Favid almost walked into death right there. I'm shocked that Yabi went down on that one because you have to assume that Kadian was dragging all of the attention with him into Donut. So they shouldn't have been ready for that fight at all, but they were somehow. Sersen, he's been a little bit better with the AWP. Actually, not just a little bit. He's been much better with the AWP so far than Kadian. Not going to be able to hit the shot here, and this slows the game down. Four on four, but Big are pushed back all the way to their side of the map, except for Farvin, and even he is starting to feel uncomfortable out here. Let's see, Big just want to group up now. Farvin's not feeling too comfy with that lurk, and so this will group up to be an A hit. There's only a couple smokes for Big. This is where it gets really tricky. Sure, they can smoke off those sight lines, but that anchor player is going to have a feast once those players walk right into his crosshair. Shush, set up with the MP9, has the option to use his own smoke, and now this oh, is no. brutal for Big. There is no great way to breach this. They have no flash. Get a miracle shot through somehow, but he's hiding right in the middle of it. They actually know that's not bad. Another dink comes out. At least it's an even trade. Searson is out of it, though. And Keto, because he's already low from that MP9, he doesn't have much of a chance here. Not even the bomb plant allowed for. The timing on that smoke is suffocating. You hear, when you hear those little dinks when it bounces on the floor and you're on the T side, you know, oh God, we're in trouble. Especially with 25 seconds left. Yeah. If they ran through, if they waited for it, it wasn't going to get any better for them. Nope. And so Heroic, they keep bringing this one back. 10 to 11. Big had a nice lead in this, but now Heroic have an opportunity to even it up. Just three deagles on the side of Big. Can't really see a world where Heroic dropped this one. And I think importantly too, they have a chance to actually build that CT economy. That's the other thing that's kind of been worrying for Heroic is that they weren't building that much. But this time, if they could survive the deagles, that at least should be an option. Maybe a chance. Yeah, I feel like it's been a bit unfortunate here in the middle. A nice boost over. I like oh. it. They tried to hit that shot, but the pressure is on once again. And actually, Heroic decided it's not really worth it here. Maybe it isn't. Jabby, he's almost caught. It's very risky. I don't like anything that I'm seeing in the middle here. Even if Kadian has got one or two kills, I feel like some of these positions are so exposed. And Heroic don't need it. They don't really need to fight them that aggressively. They know that Yabby is wedged in the corner, so more backup is being called for. And the timing could not have been better for Tessas. Heroic just tightening up in this one. Okay, there's still some damage being inflicted. Tapson's 
Don't want to necessarily test him, but when they all peek at the same time, they're going to feel a lot more confident about that. Yeah, that felt like Heroic was getting a little bit wide-eyed on those mid-fights there, but yeah. they're, they're still able to, to put Big down and tie up the game. Big, they've been having a little bit of trouble in the last four rounds. Still very curious about Yabby in the middle. He, obviously, he was sick on uh, on Vertigo. Yeah. So I don't want to discount him, but it feels like he's had a couple of opportunities now that he hasn't really made the most of. Hopefully, that'll change for them. Adian is set up. The Molotov will actually spread mm -hmm. deep enough to push him back. Yep, that's one of those luxuries afforded to the T side with the spawn changes and Sersen though okay that's a huge scalp to find Kadian down on the bomb site there's nobody left on B big don't know this though and so they're not just rushing in yet it's down he has time to deploy that smoke he has time to rotate in big they're trying to convert here but we see that Yabby's pushing in too from the oh. other side of the map it's down spending the extra second to pick up the AWP they're going to try and smoke it up one way, flash on over, and Stouty makes good on that AWP. Trying to turn around for the flashes that he knew was going to be coming. A smoke up just to buy a little bit of time, but he lands one more kill, and the flank is slowly coming. Yabby, he does get spotted, but it's going to draw away all the attention. He is occupying most of big right oh. now. Crimbo for the smoke, though. He'll take one more, and it's a three-on-three. Three. The bomb is planted. And they need this round big. They need to stop Heroic right here. Shush is the next to hit the ground. Crimbo is unstoppable. Three headshots to make sure that they win the round here. Tessus, I don't think he has time for it now. Walking into this crossfire in a one versus two. He's going to try and see if he can smoke off the ramp, but already in a fight. And Tabson will be the one to drop him. Good round out of big. Crimbo, a turret on the bomb site there, being approached from so many different directions. And this felt like the situation just shaping up again, where Heroic, they're gonna just constrict you. They're gonna find ways to push in every side, even though the T's get on the bomb site, but this guy was the hero. Crimbo just locking down these angles, precise shots. I they they needed that. And okay, I love that. <laughs> a little kiss on the forehead. It's perfect. Forehead Absolutely kisses. Perfect. He deserves it. Is he handing those out to anybody? No, I think you need you need triples like that. Okay. To uh to qualify. Maybe there's like a little book where they get little stickers and you yeah. know Anything. get enough multi kills and yeah, that's the, the reward. The positive reinforcement is noted. Wow. Well that shaped up to be a very, very unlikely round. Yes. I, the fact that Stown could pick up the AWP and find two kills like that was a huge sign of, of worry. And then obviously the flank from Yabby, which if he finds Searson almost immediately, maybe that changes everything. Regardless, it is 12 to 11 in the 24th round here. Heroic, they've spent all of their cash in this one. Kadian, he is a little bit shaky, though, a little bit of a wiggle in the aim there that you don't like to see. And they've taken over the middle part of the map. Shush. Surely going to be called on now. Much different approach for Big. Contesting this top mid position, but Shush holds the line. Nice shots from him, even while blinded. They couldn't take him off the angle. Takes Tapson to come in to be the hero, and Yabby just pushes right through the smoke. This is so bold from him, but he's actually supported by a teammate. Tess is pushed from the other side. They are actually, Heroic is actually finding a way to flank Big as they're pushing into top mid, and yet Big is still able to reroute. They find some space on this A site, and this looks like to be settling into a more standard position. That's where everyone lost their mind in that moment. Everyone just kept fighting. Nobody wanted to cool it down. Searson, it's good that he has the AWP because he's very low on health already. They're both behind this. Smoked up. More Molotovs raining in. They want to try and leave. They want to try and go to the other bomb site with the bomb, but it's been heard. Are they going to be aware? Crimbo, he's chasing them from this side. Nobody seems to be making that call yet. And actually, they bring the bomb back. Oh, this is where Big are so sick. R late in the round, and it seems like they have completely mind-gamed Heroic. The bomb is going to be planted. Is anyone going to be aware? Again, they're just running knife out, and it's an easy pickup for Crimbo. Tactically, this is a sick round for Big, and now they're ready and waiting. They have outplayed the Danes in a massive way. That was a very well-deserved victory for Big. The way they were able to outmaneuver them, that is, that's bold. It's great calling. Whoever put that idea together, they deserve all the credit in this one because that was looking hopeless for Big. They were getting crunched on. Heroic knew exactly where they were. They were even making a rotation ahead of time, but just doubling back and making it work.
I'm so curious about Heroic fighting off the Shush got the double. I realized that they wanted to save him, but there was a moment there where they could have had, a, I think, a much more stable four and three. All right, a little dink, but only the USP is in play. The Eagle on KD, and I suppose, but this should be a very easy round for Big to try and find 14. Didn't think going into Ancient that I'd be saying that Big are outwitting Heroic, but we're actually off. Yeah, we're, we've been seeing it. That's really nice. Inferno will be a huge task for Big if they bring us to that. Still, a couple more rounds needed for Big to even think about it. Yeah, they're not there yet, and they surely will keep the focus. I'm sure that some of that Tabson is, is making sure right now that they just keep this level up because one slip up is all it takes. Heroic are not that far away. The real problem for the CT side, obviously, is the money that they're working with. That's the thing that could really ultimately end them here. But yeah, I'm impressed with Big. We were memeing about it at the start of it, how long it's been since they played the map. That was the same on Vertigo and they didn't have a good time, but this is much, much better. Tamsin, again, with the same kind of swift opening of those shush, is there to slow it down right afterwards. Fallen, he's making noise and fallen down, Yabby. Strong headshot to begin with and shush. He's managed to contain this for a minute here. Counter flashes are coming out. They still want that bomb site, but the rotation is in. Everyone from Heroic is showing up. And yeah, this is great work. The rifles are chewing up big. Yabby coming in with a couple of strong kills at the end. And it's 14 to 12. Yabby was pushing Shush into that fight, actually. Yeah. Shush wanted to back up. He pulled the pistol out and said, okay, if you're right next to me, we're going to finish things out together as a unit. This is really cool from Yabby, though, to just push right down mid. As soon as Tapson dies, he just gets all of that space, recognizes that it was just that single player catching Favin off guard, and that could have been a win condition for Big later in the round, but it was snuffed out before it could even get going. If Big loses this round, it probably ties up the game. They don't have any money in the bank, so... Surely, if you're big, you're thinking, let's just end it here. Do not give this team another chance to get back into it. Searson, oh, that's a nice find, but Stell doesn't even really peek him. He shoots him for the wall, and now for the smoke again. All right, that seems like justice. Tabson is there to save his fellow teammate in Keto, and it is back into a four-on-four. Stown was running wild with it. He just pre-fired the corner. He heard the burning, recognized there was a player there, but... The fact that Keto's alive means that this is still a great chance for Big. Backed up into so many different angles. There's a push outside of A. Tessus is actually trying to make his way up this B lane still, and it looks like Yabby just wants to play to defend right now. Maintain this position towards Temple. Don't give it up for free, and see if anything else develops on the rest of the, the map. But Kadian oh. right through there. Krimbo dancing with death, and he's punished. Three versus three now, though, and... Big actually have some pretty good positioning, but yes. it's all centralized around this donut. Oh, no, wait. Actually, Keto, he wants to approach from A main. Yeah, they should know that, that someone could be coming from there, but this could be a very tricky retake. I agree. There might be a shot here. Again, this round is everything to Big. If they lose it, they could be letting Heroic right back into it. Tap on the bomb, but Favard could see right on top that no one's defusing yet. Are they aware that there's a gap? It doesn't even matter if they are. Favard will clean it up. A great three on three. Big at 15, and they are one more round away from getting onto Inferno. Oh, so close. Big can taste it. To get us to Inferno seems so unlikely given the history of Big, or lack of history there, yeah. that is, on this map. This felt like Heroic were piecing it together. They were in a four versus three there. Very nice. I hope that's okay. I think you said something. good communication, keep it up. Okay. Something, something along those lines. Nice. My German's a bit crusty, but... Um, 20... Eighth round. Oh, Searson. It's close. That's a scout on the other end. Not the AWP. He misses the chance and the swing for Tessas. It could have been a double. But Farman is there. Just barely enough. And Stown trying to make the Yabby play from earlier. Tabson is there to catch him. He's been great in the middle, Tabson, throughout the second half. Keto getting oh. one more. And a great swing. Oh, my God. Yabby running right in front of it. And that is absolutely it. A bomb plant to follow and shush in a one versus four. Big. Having no history on the map for the last... Six months. Six months, yeah. Crazy. All right. Good shot. Shouldn't change anything at all. Wow. This is not what I expected from this map, Anders. No, 
I don't think anyone, no one could have expected this. You hear this all the time, you talk about, ah, oh, we've been practicing in the off time, and usually it means not that much. Shush, getting a bit closer. He's just running for it. One versus four, turned into a one on two, but he doesn't have the kit, and there's a lot more work to be done. Surely gonna get shot on either front or back. 16 to 12, it is big, giving us a third map on Inferno. I think that's very well played. I'm certainly impressed. This is something that Big can take with them moving forward. This, regardless of the outcome of this series, this is actually looking like a Big that's confident on Ancient, that knows how to mid-round very well, that does have some plays. I would love to know what Gabi put together for it. I'd love to know if James Banks has that. Gob, you managed to get the job done on Ancient, a map we hadn't seen you play since uh, Tizian was back on the roster. When I did the interview with Farben, he was telling me that you had some things planned for it, you guys have been working it out, so what is it that you were doing in particular on this map? Um, I mean, just spending time on the server, basically uh, learning all the new uh, stuff on the map, learning, watching a lot of demos, theory crafting a lot with analysts and all the players, and uh, yeah, we feel really good on this map. Um, even uh, like sometimes my player doesn't, but I believe really in, in the system. I uh, try to uh, explain them on the city side, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, on as and on T side we have always the good comes from uh, Thompson. But I mean overall, why we won this map is basically just because we were start hitting shots, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, individuals showed up. Um, not like on Vertigo, that was more chaotic. We said, hey, let's play without fear, and this is what we showed. And I, I want to just touch on that, Vertigo, because you mentioned it as well. That was just not acceptable from you guys, right? There was no energy, there was none of this this, this room of communication. It was just quiet here. I heard you shouting at times, but even you were losing in pistol rounds, you shouldn't have lost. So what was the issue at that point? Um, I mean, it was just like basically bad communication, bad vibes. Um, mm. Um, like not feeling comfortable was like telling in the in the break. Let's be more comfortable, be more uh, uh, more brave, and all the stuff. And uh, yeah, it uh, it went well on ancient. Well, let's hope you can carry it into Inferno. God, thank you very much, man. Jason, make it make sense. You're so sick, Monty. You're, you're so sick. <laughs> That's what he always says. I love Ilya. Ilya, you're nuts. Brain just swinging with the bat, but what about pistols? The prowess oh, no, the of bomb. the pistols. They're coming down. They drop down ladder. How does he manage a kill like that? AK from Hooks, he recovers. And G2 out of nowhere. Oh, they've got a little bit on a low buy too. Pop, pop with the pistols. And we've got another tight game. It felt like all the X Factor was in face. That's so sick. Wow. Flames is rotated oh. off. They're putting a lot of faith in the hands of Dexter. Config's going to challenge early. And quietly. dropped mid <gasps> and doesn't commit to B. Instead, he's clearing out A. They which can't is fall back. The bomb is. And if the bomb tries to come back now, it's going to go right into Whoa. it. But no! Why did he turn around, Jason? Make it make sense. Cadian's found him. And that was a huge opportunity. That was the chance for OG. And it's just sailed right past them. <laughs> oh, and now Config has infiltrated the CT side. What a heartbreaking maneuver. I'm so, whoa, what happened? Dude, that is brutal. That is like walking into a room and upon getting there going like, what did I need from this room again? Yeah, like why that, did I come that here? That was like the Counter-Strike equivalent. He gets all this way up and then he's like, what am I even doing right now? And then just turns around. And now that AK, given over to Nico, fully HP, nearly, sitting into this back site. And it's his brother right in front. Body guarding, body blocking, and JKS goes down for essentially free. Three CTs meant to work this forward. Utilities off of the mark. Can Hunter sell this? Can Nico clutch it? Will he be needed? Because that Tech 9 drops, and here comes Nico's rifle. It's headshots galore. All three dead, and Nico's gonna keep it back and forth. Tuck them in, son. They're put to bed. What a round from Nico. Was that possible to defuse after that kill? I don't even know. I don't even know. The first two might have been good enough. Of course, he had to make a show of it. This has just got to be the read. They've moved into the site. They're closing the gap. No, you oh, tell coming out. A bit. That is a crazy shot. One more, man. He does do damage. He threw a bit of util down under the bomb. The molly.
two very different chapters in this tale between big and heroic. This time around, it was the Germans to put pen to paper and write the script on ancient, uh, which is particularly crazy, Matthew, as we had literally zero data for big coming onto this ground. Yeah, we had absolutely no data on big. What we knew is that heroic had shown signs of weaknesses and mistakes here and there on EG. And the least I can say is that the very similar scenario happened again. I'm not going to take anything away from big. I thought their game plan on the T side was superb. Search on the CD side was lights out, but heroic, far from perfect. Yeah, far from perfect. I think that's a, a pretty fair sentiment to put out there. I think I saw a lot of times Hero getting caught off guard by the timings. You spoke about it coming into it as well. These new teams, the new way of playing Ancient, it, it smells like to me that Big are actually the more prepared team. They knew about the timings. They knew how to utilize the timings. They knew how to make Heroic feel uncomfortable on the map. Whereas Heroic, again, got caught off guard just like they did against EG. The first half was okay for Heroic, you know, a T side where you must uh, a decent amount of rounds, but it also came off the back of a couple of Force Spies that went the way of Heroic that probably shouldn't have been the case for Big. So overall, a uh, very, very disappointing result for Heroic and I will say the big by far to me were the better team here. Yeah, I mean we have the round history here and we can quite very clearly compare. You can see from Heroic once that 4-0 start was passed, they only managed to bring three rounds on that T side. Three rounds kind of isolated in the middle of the first half, whereas big, as soon as they got control, that was it. Five rounds out of six towards the very end and they seemed in control much more than Heroic. The rounds big were winning were very clear, they were dictated, they knew what they were doing. I never got that impression with Heroic. Some of the rounds did get kind of close though, and we were relying on Crimbo actually to pull off some heroics at the tail end of that first half. Relying on Crimbo and relying on mistakes from Heroic again, we can round, uh, run, sorry, round 15. That's a great example if you're a big fan, it's a sad example if you're a Heroic fan. Let's have a look at this together. We see the buy from Heroic is not exactly great, but the entry is here. Storm with a great rhythm, the pacing from Yabi right behind. That's a double entry. It's a 5v3 for Heroic. Getting caught off guard by Sersen. Fantastic no scope, fantastic scope here. But still, the three versus two should be enough. They have information onto Sersen, and the secondary player is out. Now, this should be over. This should be it. Jason, uh, Jason, I call you Jason. Jacob, he's behind the smoke. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that it should have been over. Look at Kadian right here in a position. In a couple of seconds, he's going to push up ramp. He could have hidden. He could have played the bomb, but he wants to help his teammate get caught in no man's land, gets punished by Krimbo, who's aware that there's a potential that down is coming from behind, gets the last kill as well. Again, an unlosable situation, an unlosable round, and another symptom of mm. heroic not feeling it on Ancient. Yeah, the 1v2 is, is really criminal. Mm. I, I don't mind the first frag. That's, mm. that's a nade that lands on the first. That's okay. I will give that to that. But the one versus Two, you have information, you have position, you have timing, you have everything. Kadian is calling no man's land, and then he leaves his poor teammate caught in the middle who still had the chance. That in itself was a uh, symptomatic of heroic. Yeah, Krimbo certainly back to that clutch bow status, which uh, if you're a big fan, you'll be liking indeed. But it wasn't necessarily the tale of him coming into that second half because as we saw, Sirson, man, he came alive. He kept big alive, to be honest, in that first half. As much as I want to say that heroic underperformed as well, there was potential for heroic to really run away with the game on the T side had it not been for Sirson. In this highlight package, you're going to see him with the AWP on the CT side bring big to life constantly winning duels, constantly assertive, constantly moving around. Double kills right here, and he's moving into a new position. That's a beautiful no-scope as well. But the fact that Sirson was all over the map gave Big a chance, gave enough rounds in that CT side to close out the game in a second. Had it not been for Sirson, I think Hero could have won away with perhaps, you know, 9, mm. 10, 11 T rounds, and then we probably would be finished by now. So well done, absolutely well done by Sirson. An instrument of victory for Big, without a doubt. I also think that Kadian maybe was a little stubborn in the calling because the rhythm that that they were trying to play with was so pacey, so fast. Yeah. And how many times in these highlights did we see Sirson find kills at one minute and 30 seconds, one minute and 25 seconds? They were trying to keep up the pace. They were trying to drown Big into that sprint, but it just played into Sirson's hand and it's exactly what he wanted. Props to Thompson as well in that second half as well, because we saw him having a, a lot of aggressive plays towards middle, sometimes paying off, sometimes not so much. But it was kind of uh, showing that they've obviously done their homework in terms of this new update and the timings on this map now. He was the one, exactly, timing is the key word. He was the one finding the timings. He was the one utilizing the timings. And he was the one making him look like he knew better than Heroic when to hit and where to hit. As you said, very aggressive. It's been a while since we've seen Thompson take so many duels and, and basically just swing out in an all or nothing duel and get away with it the vast majority of the time. Sure, you're not going to have 100% success rate playing that style of Counter-Strike, but that was Tapson being very, very demanding on the server, knowing the map and creating an awful lot of space for the rest of the team. You're right, and it was to Big's advantage because they were winning the trades and they were winning the 3v3s. We saw Heroic being caught off guard a couple of times, rotations from the B side towards mid, boom, there's a player waiting for you. We have Stone who's trying to get information towards mid, boom, Tapson is waiting behind that box. It was actually Heroic who were committing the mistakes and Big who were punishing them, which if you, are, if you argue, they should have been the other way around, but not in here.
Let's talk a little bit about Inferno. That's going to be the third and final decider. Um, when we look at the statistics for this, um, I feel like the numbers actually can lie a little bit because the win rates for both teams don't look so hot, but different caliber of opponents there. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. You might be uh, susceptible to look at that 10% win rate for Heroic and think, man, they really suck at that map. Well, actually, they play S-tier opposition time and time again, and they have a boatload of very tight games. For Big, the last time Big took down a Tier 1 opposition was June 22 against Cloud9 in the Rubeck Cup. Outside of that, it's Young Ninjas, it's 500, and FTW. These are the three wins for Big. So let's take a little bit of distance from these numbers. I would argue that they both suck on the map of Inferno, to be completely honest, because I buy into your argument that Heroic is playing only S-tier opponents, only Tier 1 teams, but they're also ranked number one in the world, so who else are they supposed to play? Sure. And only That's when seeing 10% 10 of your games on Inferno as the best team in the world, that's a clear weakness. If you're Face Clan, if you're Vitality, if you're G2 right now, you're looking towards the rogue and thinking, if we get Inferno into a best of three, we at least give ourselves two chances. So that's a map they need to work on. Hopefully that's a map they have been working on. Mm. Otherwise, I don't really understand why it would be left as a third map as well. So I want to see yeah. that now. I agree with you, but it feels like today, this should be enough to beat Big. I'm not talking about yeah, the Face. Yeah, I'm not yeah. talking about G2 or Vitality. Yeah, yeah. We know that Big we'll have see. flirted with the veto of Inferno for a while. Now they're coming back to it, kind of re rediscovering the light of what is the best map of Counter-Strike. Strike, there I said it, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I still think Heroic should have it. We've kind of talked about the bad and the ugly on this third and final map. Uh, what should be the good, maybe? First of all, let's start off with Heroic. What are you expecting them to be showing on this one, gentlemen? Rhythm, Kadian, once again, I think with the AWP, uh, we've had a couple of occasions here in Copenhagen where we saw him being very forward with the AWP, very assertive. I very much remember that first game when he was disrespecting the roles of Counter-Strike with the AWP. I would like to see that again. I think Heroic need to see that again. I think it's the calling from Kadian that I'm going to look towards, right? Because you're right when you said that throughout the tournament, there's been a tendency for Heroic to play very fast, very uncontrolled Counter-Strike. And I think of Heroic as a team that is absolute best when they make their opponents sweat. When they, their opponents are the one running around figuring out what's going on in the map. Heroic playing fast-paced Counter-Strike, sure, from time to time it can work, but Inferno is a map that invites to slow-paced, invites to a map where you take mid-control, you make your opponent second-guess what's going on. So the pacing coming out of Cadian, I would like to see it much, much slower, and I would like to see Heroic try to dictate the game instead of playing into the whole big narrative of just playing fast-paced Counter-Strike, because then it's going to be a very equal game. Is Big going to have to bolster anything specific then if they want to counter Cadian? Mm, I mean, you have to count on the Crimbo Clutch Factor, which was used to be the song ever since he joined and I feel like we got a little bit of a remix here on Ancient, so that might have to play a role on Inferno. Well, it all does come down to the perfect third and final deciding map of Inferno. For one team, the Spring Finals awaits, the other, the depth of the showdown. We're going to see how it goes down in just a few.
finally it's coming. For a long time it's a dream for me to play in front of the home crowd in Paris. The dream is coming true. The major's winner will always be remembered. To win a major would mean everything. It will be the most exciting major ever. Well, if that doesn't get you hyped up to watch some Counter-Strike, I don't know what will. Parents major coming up. But right now, we need to find a team that has to qualify for the spring finals in Washington, D.C. It's going to be either Big or Heroic. The other one will be sent to the showdown. So everything is on the line right now. This is going to be crazy. We're on Inferno for the final map. And it feels like we're in a similar position here, Alex, where we don't have a lot of data on, on Big at least winning against some of the top teams. No, the desk pointed out that the last time they beat, the last time they beat a top team, it was against Cloud9 in the Rubet Cup. I'm pretty sure that was online even too. So it's been a darn while since Big have been able to take a huge scalp on this one. But Heroic haven't been looking pretty on this map either. And that's why Freya described it as such a great equalizer, the best decider. It is. We love having Inferno as the third map. Let's just see how this will play out. Big, they won the knife round. They get the start on the CT side. Heroic, already putting a bit of pressure on Banana. And you can tell Kido, he lo would love a nice and meaty grenade. It lands right on top. That's so devastating. He thought about it a couple of times. And he picked exactly the right time for it. That's great. That'll soften him up. The rest of Big, though all over that bracket, and they are holding that position. Keto has an opportunity to thin the numbers as this will be an inevitable retake. Yes, it will be. He's making some great choices. If he would have played on the coffins itself, he would have been double-nated and probably dead right away. So very well done. Oh, they're pushing him. They want to get him before the teammates show up. Oh, there's just no way that he could have held that. So a four and five, in spite of the great damage to begin with, it's still looking amazing for oh. Heroic. Finally, there is an answer back. Simultaneous kills coming through. Farvin, he keeps it going. Oh my God, this is so quick for Big. They do not have a kit right now, so it's a 10 second defuse. They need to find these kills right now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. If this bomb stops now, if the defuse gets canceled, it is done with. Four seconds left still. Kadian trying to open it. The defuse will have to go. There's the shot they needed. Yabby to save the round for Heroic. I wouldn't know how close that was. It looked like less than a second. Oh, that's so heartbreaking for Big. They were in a three versus one. All they needed to do was to protect the diffuser, protect the president, and they couldn't quite do it. So Heroic, they'll be able to win. And oh, look at that timing, 0.24. Come on, a quarter of a second left. It's just unbelievable. Wow. I mean, the fact that they were able to get that retake on so fast is in itself very impressive and big, but you're just a little bit short of the end. That's so frustrating. What a shame. The shots were looking so good on that retake yeah. too. Such swiftness in dealing with those opponents. Big pushing through the apartments. Three of these players here. Just the upgraded CZ on Favin. It's the only real thing to hope for. But it is a ways away. Yep, it is Keto that's being hunted down now. And Heroic will be able to find a second. Interested to see if there can be any damage inflicted on onto Heroic from Big. But this is definitely a round victory. 2-0 start for Heroic. Both of these teams struggling lately on Inferno. And so this kind of start feels like it's so needed. Either team would have breathed such a sigh of relief if they found these rounds. Yeah, and I think Jacob was making a good point as well in the desk, talking a bit about where there is some casualties there. Uh, talking a bit about, you know, how, from Heroic's point of view, against some of the other top teams in the world, fixing Inferno is going to be critical. It's such a common map in best of threes to find in there somewhere, and if, if Heroic can improve it a little bit, it'll definitely set them up pretty nicely. So this could even be a good opportunity to prove that you know, they could build some confidence on it and, and just have a good time of it. By the way, that rush into the B-bomb, so it's obviously a bit risky. They don't know if there's a stack going on. That's probably why they sent the Mac 10 first. So they wanted to make sure that if there was a crazy stack, that it wasn't going to be the full lineup that just went down. So either way, good second round, even if there were a couple of good shots with the CC. Big in the third round, able to buy. They have some grenades. 
see if they could do anything with them here. Three man stack at the B bomb site, looking to defend Banana. Oh, and it's all five players for Heroic. Right around yeah. the corner. Keto defending from the sandbags. Tessis quickly takes out his teammate, but actually Keto finds two kills there, and they might not suspect Favin. That was a super impressive spray that on the second kill. He tracked him mid air to get that headshot. There is a rotation. Oh, they keep going. They don't even fake it. Molotov is burning. Farvin alive. He just stood in it the whole time. He was hoping that somebody would run right into it and he could at least get the kill before he died. But that, in retrospect, seemed like a big mistake. Two versus three. And Krimbo and Searson are already going to be making a run for it. Pretty straightforward approach from Heroic. Five manning this early. Feels like a bit of a risk in its own, but... They just called big out. They said, We're, we don't expect you to actually push behind us. They, we don't expect you to flank on ra on gun round number one. Yeah. And and it works out for them. Just overall, the trades were always going to be in their favor if they're going to make this kind of approach. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It can be part of a larger strategy, obviously, if you keep hitting a bomb site early on in, in, in the game, especially if you're successful, because it, it, it will eventually force the CTs to make some decisions that maybe they don't really want to make. Oh, yeah, it sets a, it sets a precedent and one that definitely favors Heroic. Still a couple guns for Big moving into the next round, so an opportunity presents itself. But this is looking pretty, pretty clear cut for Heroic. I just have to see so much more from big yeah we don't have the have enough rounds that we can really start to say too much about it right, there is the potential for some of those quick flanks down the middle but it's not uncommon and oh wow the nades and the molotovs and everything else that's a little bit devastating usually you want to play some of the early rounds on the ct side a little bit more default right you want to check if that actually works Grimbo, that's an interesting fight to win yabby on that galil on the other side and not enough stopping power to take him down and this is a risk when you group up all on one side of the map. Heroic, they had five players towards A, apartments, bracket, and Big are able to rotate another player over to A to solidify that defense. And there's a good chance that Tapson could just rotate on over too, but he's still kind of sticking around as they keep two towards Banana. Still a minute left. See how many more grenades they can manage to land down here. Let's see, Keto doesn't certainly have one, but second on oh the molotov in the corner down that's a potential opening he realized someone else threw the smoke a little bit further back so he's going to try and push forward and see if he can contest this part of the map searson swings right into shush and even if he had got the kill you have to assume there would have been a very fast trade coming in and now they're putting some pressure on a little bit of a crossfire but it could get broken up Farvin down in the pit that's the second rifle picked up and they're fighting it openly this is risky for roy 30 seconds left they're just trying to hard clear it and eventually they will. Krimbo, the only one I think that could save big in the round, but he gets double swung upon. One jump up, and then Tessis on the swing. Tabson goes down last. I think there were a lot of moments there that could have gone horribly wrong for Heroic, but they've managed to make it through. I'm, I'm surprised Favin just kept presenting himself in, in that fight there. That was a, a pretty, pretty long time to think about tucking back in and, and letting Krimbo get activated, but... Either way, it was, a, it was a pretty disadvantaged round from Big. It was going to be hard no matter how you cut it. And so Heroic, they're up 4-0. Which is nice. That's a good stop. Banana, this time, they just toss the grenades down. They don't really want to try and contest it in any meaningful way. This could be a game-changing moment for the side of Big, surely, too. With Searson on the AWP. What a delightful show on Ancient. I, it, I really love watching him all like that. It's so entertaining. Yes, he can be so swift, and it was brilliant, the display he put on. I really think that Big know that if they want to compete this year, a couple players for them need to start popping off. You'd like to see the development in Krimbo. You'd like to see Sersen reach his 2020 peak, but all of them need to come together. It needs to be a perfect constellation for them to really have a chance. Oh, no. And this is brilliant also from her. Double nade on a taps in, seven HP, softening up that defender. Just great stuff already. A frustrating experience to start the round with. And they're gonna cancel it out. They're gonna say, all right, we've done what we came for. 
you've thrown out a lot more utility to try and get those way. I think they managed to put in like three Molotovs and maybe a smoke on top. So a lot of grenades gone from that B bomb site. Still about 30 seconds left as they are pushing middle, but I am being kept a little bit honest here. Look at the timer. Yeah, 25 seconds. Heroic have to make a decision very quickly. That's a beautiful nade, but there's only a couple defenders on this A site. This is still a risky and tough hold for Big. Yeah, and Farvin is there, so they probably know that. Searson is on his own. The only one, again, that could try and save them. Two good shots. They need more. Still only eight seconds. Searson, oh, he's done it. No time left, Stout. He's oh, going to just barely get the bomb plant down. And I can't believe it. One more second for Searson there, and he would have stayed alive. It's so close. He is an absolute superstar inside of that bomb site, and it still might not be enough. Stown, he's picked up DAWP. They've got another one on Kadian as well. The flick is not going to ring true here, and now it's on Kadian, and this is actually very tricky. He's already tagged up just a bit. They don't quite know where he is, and he has to go and just take a peek, see if anyone's defusing. Keto wasn't. Now the no-scopes are on, and the pistol's out. Kadian is fighting, and the two-on-two -two goes the way of Heroic. Oh, I feel like Sisson was robbed. I was so sure that he had stayed alive for just long enough. It felt like the hold was good enough, but there was just that second heroic needed. Barely getting the bomb planted on in time. And also such an interesting way to play the post plant between Kadian and Stown, both moving away from each other. And Kadian recognizing how Tapson was lit up in that round. Or actually, I, I, he kind of guessed that, actually. He had to have guessed that. Yeah. Because they didn't know for sure that those nades nailed him. So a bold choice to pull, up, pull out the pistol, actually. It wasn't something that he was sure of. That's true. Yeah, unconfirmed at the start of the round. Yeah. It, and that, that felt like everything was going Big's way until the last few seconds there. They, yeah. they had the nade damage in middle, they had Sersen positioned well, but it just wasn't enough. Tactically, the round was well played from Heroic, right? They isolated the Searson, which normally he's not going to get three kills, so yeah, just a crazy round. The jump down flashed forever and a day is Crimbo, otherwise maybe he could have got a kill there, but now the Mac 10 is running wild in the back line, up at the graveyard. And even if Searson is hiding back here, I'm sure they're going to be testing it. You can tell they already are. Hard clearing that one. Yeah, this was what probably always going to happen, especially with the flashes being as good as they were. It's about to be 6-0 in favor of Heroic. Obviously a very, very powerful start. And with keeping five alive, it's going to be tough for Big to break this economy. You're going to have to string so many rounds together consistently. Keto giving it up there. And Tapson just has this 5-7, but he'd like to take that armor into the next round. Allow him to buy maybe a nade or two more. And Heroic, they're looking real sharp here. They're finding so much space pretty cleanly. Their conversions onto the bomb sites are also very nice. They look very well drilled. Like, Krimbo had no chance in that round to put together a defense. He was just blinded. Yeah. I think there was a second flash, probably, if it lasted that long. And then the trades have been on point. What's the main complaint so far for Heroic's, oh, sorry, for, for Big's defense? What's something that, that they could be doing, but they're not currently doing? It, it kind of feels like they're just defaulting to leaning heavy B. We've seen a 3B lean a couple of times now. Uh, the very first gun round, they did it. The round where Sersen put up that defense in the A site, they had three towards B. And you might just want to say that we should just play a 3-2, 3A, right. 3A, 2B. Because everything everything else, I mean, they, they slowed them down enough. If they just wanted one more player there, that's all. That's, that could have been the difference. Also, something Heroic does a lot when they're on the CT sides is when they do those stacks, they actually do something with them. So if, if they if you see Heroic sometimes, if they have True. three or four people in the spot, they will, won't just be guarding the spot, actually be moving forward. So maybe that could be another interesting feature of some of this. That's a great point. Usually it's it, it means that there's some more info that yeah. Heroic's gaining or the other, whatever team opts to do that. Here we go, counter flash coming out. It's so good, but Keto, he doubted himself for a second. He didn't swing on it, and he's going to get traded. That's still... Almost counting that as a triple at least. That's so much damage, but it'll be Sersen that fights with the op. Doesn't matter how much damage is inflicted when you're wielding that, but they, they give Heroic all of this space. They give him so much to work oh, no. with. Oh, they're getting so close. This is very worrying for Big. Krimbo is here by himself. Sersen is behind a smoke right now at Moto, so Krimbo has to do a lot, but actually, Heroic, they pump the brakes. Yeah. That could have gone horribly wrong. Imagine if Krimbo just gets caught. If yeah, I think if that jump up kind of gave Krimbo the opportunity to escape. If not for that, who knows? They've rotated another couple of people back to the A-bomb site. 
They're still not committed. Now they're going to go and investigate. I like this from Big. Yeah, go find the information. An easy fight to win again. Almost all of Heroic are dead. Yabby, he's got the right idea. But Searson is now scoped up. And I'm sure Yabby heard at least one of those scopes. Oh, that could have been awkward. Walking away like that. 20 seconds. And the Danes are back to try and see if they can haunt this A bomb site. Down to 13 seconds. This has to be flawless. This setup is looking so good for defense. For the defense, eight seconds. Some spam coming through. Sisson's finding a kill, and they can't quite stop the bomb from going down. So at least it's a two on three. But again, they're practically dead already. This should be an easy cleanup here on the side of Big, what? but it's not somehow. Stellar headshot. It can't be real. Kadian is on his feet. That is ridiculous. That's never supposed to happen. There's no way Heroic were supposed to be able to win that one. Battling through the smoke in the site, finding the bomb plant on top of it. It felt like everything was shaping up perfectly for Big to come back into this one and yet Stown, the hero, the whipping this off at them. Oh my goodness. Oh, no way. Absolutely no way. I, he said it's no joke you're sick <laughs> it's um yeah that's completely shocking absolutely shocking that's unbelievable that's they were in they were low on health inside of the smoke they had no escape if any bullets connect just random bullets coming through the smoke they probably die right away and that's it i, I don't even know how that works that's such a huge gut punch to big and heroic they are real they're on fire right now not even just with the graphic but just in terms of the individuals and it, they, they feel untouchable yes yeah, this is so tough to battle back into now it's absurd when you're playing a team where it feels like even when they do make mistakes or even when they're at a big disadvantage it just doesn't really matter it's like oh they'll just find a way to roll their way into a round somehow so silly nice little boost over with one m4 that they have currently in play It'd be a test around the corner. The flashbang is pretty good. Might be hard to repeat for Tamsin. Yeah. The problem is you can't do you can't actually do a fast peek into that corner because if you fall off, then you're obviously gonna be dead. So I um, appreciate the fact that he came off that boost. 7 0. Oh. I am still I still haven't really recovered from that last round. Oh yeah, that was I mean, the the last shot, the no scope. Stown had two no scopes in that round, actually. Yeah. That's why not? I, wow. I he, the desk was talking about it. He's been a little bit quieter here at the spring groups. There's been other players that have really stepped up for Heroic. That's the team element playing in. But it's nice to see him show up to potentially qualify for Washington. Has a chance to find some more kills here. There's one. Tessis, though, getting right in front of him. Taking down Tabson and Favin still lying in wait with this CZ, but it's going to be very tough. And Stown, he does not need to see people to kill them. Whatever. Whatever. I'd be so tilted. Just like, playing against an opponent like this, that is just having one of those games, especially like you, you just touched upon it, right? The gravity of this game, qualifying for the finals in Washington or getting sent to the showdown. And you've actually, you've already surprised everyone by being able to win Ancient. So you feel like that's great. And then you come into this and somebody like Stound and somebody like Tessis, they're just having very, very powerful performances, and Heroic as a whole just seem to be completely fired up. Eight rounds in a row for Heroic to start this map with. Nothing saved either. Kadian almost acting like there was a recoil to that shot, kind of backing up in his chair. He almost just shook by the fact that it's coming so easy for him and Heroic. 8-0. Yeah, no, he didn't... Uh, he, it's like he did a double take. He's like, oh, I, I hit that? I guess I can hit everything. All right, Stown. Wow. He's been lights out. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, no. He's just admiring his own work. Yeah. Who wouldn't? That's, um... That's disturbing. Big have to find a way back into this game, though. Down 0-8. It feels very tough. Nothing's been working but you can still put together a respectable half. And we've seen t side yes. comebacks on Inferno before. And so, Heroic, they have not been playing flawless Counter-Strike. They've been winning flawlessly in terms of the round total, but 
in terms of how these rounds have developed, a big, big have put some ideas together. They've had some advantages. It's just been about closing things out. Holding on to that mentality, saying, even if it's so grim right now to look at, you you have to believe still. Yeah, if we can get six, seven rounds here, it's there's a lot to fight for. We just just been a slow start. All right, juggling the grenades seems like risky business, but as long as you don't pull out the pins, probably be fine. Just carry them all the way up through the middle. Forty seconds, and again, heroic have done this a couple of times already, where they they just spend so much time waiting around. Looks like they're going to try and execute onto the B bomb site, and if they catch a rotation, the flashbang is already good. Let's see if anyone on the A bomb site is going to get lured into a frag against Yabby, because that can easily happen. Oh no, they bring it back! Come on, they've got no mercy whatsoever. Is it going to be a pullout? There is uh, ro rotating back as Tamson. He might be here in time. There's almost no time left. Yabby to open it up. Crimbo's in trouble. Ten seconds on the clock, but they find another opening, and they'll get the bomb plant behind it. Yabby with a headshot. They are absolutely twisting big in the knots. They've got no idea what's happening. Tactically and individually, this is sick from Heroic. Bigger in the blender right now, and they are getting tossed and turned. There is nothing that Heroic can do wrong. That was such a bold mid-round call from Kadian, and finding the weak side bomb site on top of it, that is just crazy stuff. He is in Tapson's head right now. He's yes. in Big's head. This is just wonderful calling. That, some of these rounds are so close. They look like the kind of stuff you would see vintage now. You would Seuss playing, where it's it's one bullet away from going wrong. Yes. If the, if, it's to the point where if the guy carrying the bomb dies and the bomb rolls in the wrong direction, you just might not have enough time to catch it and plant it anymore, but somehow it works. Wow. It's impressive stuff. You got to tip your hat to it. Felt like this was another round that was shaping up, that there was potential, but for Yabby to catch Fobin out right there and for him to just rain from above, swinging from that balcony. Triple and kill for, y for Yabby, yeah. That's so impressive. It, Yabby has really been such a great addition for Heroic. That is just a tough to contest statement. They have looked like a team that is really competing now, whereas before with Refresh, I mean, they were darn good, but now they're just one of the best in the world. <laughs> yes. Crazy to witness like this. Another time out. Another time out. Definitely you could tell a lot of frustration, a lot of talk back and forth here between the big players and, and Guppy. Don't know exactly obviously what, but they, they, they feel super tilted and it's kind of hard not to, I mean, I, you could understand why. Who wouldn't be at this point? Some of the rounds that are going so late and it feels like big, just all they have to do is wait around and they're going to win the round and then somehow it doesn't work out. And some of the individual performances from Heroic, it's just going to put you on edge. Yeah, Gabi really getting in Favin's grill there. And, and Favin, in some ways, is the person you would like to point a finger at in the last round. I don't want to bully, but he just giving that space up to Yabby when he's supposed to be that first line of defense to sure. cover Krimbo's yeah. back there. You can see that that's a bit upsetting for, for Big, and especially Gob. Yeah, yeah. if he takes down Yabby, then it's over. There's yeah. no push that can work any longer, but that's been true for a couple of rounds. You gotta look forward, though. Yeah. Nate is amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Three of them land right on top of Kido. If you had a plan, if you had some sort of a dream to come into this one strong, then Heroic have already taken it away. Four and five to begin with, and they're looking to catch an instant headshot from Stown. I, I swear... His bullets go faster than everybody else's. He's beating physics in the game somehow. But the oh. crossfire in the middle will bring it back. It's a one versus one. Stown versus Searson. And Stown, he's actually made so much headway. I think Searson might be off on his inter internal clock here. Because Stown ran this whole distance. Although fortunately for him, he's moved all the way out here. This is a very weird... Now, I don't know, it's a coin toss about who's going to be peeking the right corner at the right time. Sersen has really snuck around. This is tough for Stown to read. It looks like Sersen wants to move into the pit. He finds this timing, peeks up towards top mid. Stown will be a dead man. All yeah. about hitting the shot, though. And Stown, he's still trying to figure out exactly where it is that Sersen got off to. And yeah, he can't find him. He's got the right idea. Smoke, though, for Stown will actually neutralize that position. 
thinking about it. Searson not letting go of a shot yet. Now the bomb has been picked up. Still 28 seconds. And that smoke won't fade anytime soon. Searson has to wait it out while Stown gets closer to the bomb plant. What a mind game. This is the other side of Counter-Strike. This is the chess part of the game that we love to see. Bomb gets planted. Can Searson keep his cool on the other side? One more smoke picked up, so he only has to worry about this particular angle. Stown, he's thinking about it. Searson, he's catching him. Oh, the timing could not have been better. I don't think Stown could see him from that pillar. It's finally a round that's picked up from Big. Took him a while. Took Searson a while, but Big are able to get on the board. This is a great start from Heroic and a bit hasty to move into this bracket control play. And you could see how well played between Sersen and Krimbo that was. Just a great crossfire. They were able to connect off of it. And then Sersen just kept his cool in the clutch. All right. It felt like Stan was going to put that together, though. It did. It really did. But you've got to give, got to give it to Searson. He gave himself a lot of opportunities there. Even the, the first movement around, he yeah. could have just as well fallen right back into the open arms of Stan coming through Archie at the beginning. Either way, 9-1. to one, They need definitely the next five. Make it six. Then you can finish on a bit of a high note. You can start to convince yourselves maybe that there is a way back into the game, even if it feels very difficult at the moment to say the least wow a lot of a lot of flashes there really want to take this angle away from Searson. i think that's at least four or five expended for heroic already good nade to get him off the angle too they are just dumping utility to push Searson back same setup yeah you're right Abby, up in the uh, apartments just ready and waiting but a little bit different with Searson at this corner flashed around and they're trying to run him down they're spraying through that's so great the crab wall and the headshot through come on Everything is working for Heroic today. It's got to be just absolute pain. Yeah, I was saying, Tamsin, walk away before you get the same treatment. I don't know what's in the water here for Heroic, but... Something, something, they've sacrificed the right animals. I don't know what's going on. It's crazy. They are just decimating big. That's, that's all that it is. The, the entry was there. Stown almost actually opting for a kind of a bunny hop in route just to make space for the rest of his team. And yet he still is able to collect a double kill yeah. to open up the site. Uh, that's when everything is going right. When your entry fragger in that is finding two, then there's just nothing you can do. Yeah, yeah. entry fragger just wins the round. Like, all right, cool. Well, they are hunting for them in the pit and they should be. Big need every rifle they can keep on to right now. And it doesn't really matter to a rogue if they lose a couple here, they're not gonna really camp. We'll oh, lose two shots coming through, but Krimbo will be all right. Okay. Still good. Yeah, Kadian just donated an op, actually. Something to consider. Actually, this particular fight for Stown is so sick because yeah. it keeps Searson honest, right? Even if Searson is somehow getting that shot on Stown, he's, he's definitely dead because of who's coming with him. Whereas if Stown just runs wide, he's actually going to beat his teammates to the fight. And then Searson could get another scope off. So I just, I love everything about how Stown did. Obviously the follow-up for the smoke is ridiculous, but but the first one keeping that all just locked in on the corner. He can't escape and more teammates are showing up. All right, nice timing on the smoke there. 10 to one. They need to keep this up. Yeah, big really playing a the block. They've smoked off so many different angles right now, but. Heroic, they're just charging right through, but they overlook Keto. Okay, backstab is here. Two kills for Keto, and this is looking like a second round for Big. So many nades, though. So much spam, and they're able to find him. But Krimbo has taken some advanced positioning towards apartments as Kadian takes a lot of damage from that Molotov. He looked pretty upset about that, actually. Yep. I think he. I think that was Kadian, you know, getting a, a feeling that he maybe could try and clutch his way out of that one if he could beat the timing but slow down behind the Molotov. Good use of the grenades. This, there should be no way for Big to lose this. You say that. And Falvin this time, he's learned his lesson. Yep. He killed Yabby last time on that apartment slur. Okay, nope, okay, there's no, surely not. Okay. You're right on it. It felt like the timing was gonna work out for Yabby somehow. Yeah, that was the only thing that mattered. Just hold that line. Yes. Kadian. We'll have to wait out the round. They have quite a bit of money, and he has the AWP, so he might as well just try and save it here. A second round for Big, and that is very, very 
slow and very much not a good start for them. Yeah. The scoreboard. Crimbo is pretty good. Searson's pretty good. Farvin's also trying to get there. Slowly is. Three of them. But Tabson and Keto have had a very <laughs> rough time at it over at the B bomb site. Exactly. The fact that they've been playing B and have that sort of score line tells a story in itself. Good, good job from Keto that'll push down. Very sneaky play to dig himself into the broom closet. And, you know, I don't know why he's so frustrated there. Well, he wants to win all the rounds. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Timeout. The first one being called, I think, big. Did they use three or four? I feel like they've just been burning through them quite a bit. I think three. But yeah, yeah, I know they did the back to back. Oh, they're going to get a chance to get one here. Everything just has to be so, so flawless right now for, for them. And even this round, it's good they get the early kill. And it's Keto sneaking through, but that's not something you can replicate. It's that's a, a bit of a freak accident. Yes. Heroic were looking for him and they just lost him in the smoke. You need to keep keep doing whatever it is that's got you some of these rounds 14 on stalin that's still a big problem when he's just running wild on the map it's it's looking like stown is trying to get to dc he wants to get to the capital of the free world well he's not far off six more rounds he's almost done it okay carrying his team on, on the back Pretty clean banana control once again. This might be one of the few places you would critique big that they've given this up relatively easily, but it's a triple A setup still. Big aren't rotating over too early. We've seen so many rounds. They just have that three B setup, but this time actually maybe, maybe you want that. Heroic ping ponging between both ideas between A and B, but now they are encroaching. Yeah. Pushed up back there. Can be Molotov, which is always interesting to see how people react. I wonder if Tabson is going to throw... He could underhand... Oh, he's a Molotov instead. I was going to say he could create that wall between the pillars with the smoke, but he doesn't really have one. So there could be some real pressure with the incoming grenades here from the Heroic side. Tabson's timing on the Molotov is going to be critical. Heroic counting the seconds. There's a three-man setup, but... I don't know if it'll necessarily work. That's a very, very deep Molotov to hold them back. There's only 26 seconds. And Heroic, this seems very telegraphed. There's no fake this time. They're going all in on it. Need the opening here. And Keto will get at least the one. Farben trying to get put into play on the other side. Tabson's dead already. Only 15 seconds. They find Keto and they find Farben on top. Slowly play this time for Heroic. They wait it out. They wait for the smokes to fade and they find the defense. Such wonderful composure from Heroic as they get into that bomb site. There's not much time. So many things can go wrong. We've seen this multiple times this half, but they just hold on. They hold their nerve and they're able to take out big. And you know what? Jacob was actually making this point at the desk going into the game that the kind of rushed and very fast Heroic is not necessarily his favorite. And this kind of style where, where you can tell that they have some composure in some of these, they're, they're willing to let their opponents sweat, which you definitely are in that moment. If you're Farvin inside of the smoke, or if you're Keto in the back, you, you actually kind of want them to keep fighting. When they slow it down like that, it's just not a good time. 11 to two, the scoreline, and Heroic right back to their winning ways, suffocating for big, I have no doubt. Yeah. That is just so pleasing to watch for an offense. On the other side, it's, it's tough for the Germans. And Tabson, too, that opting to play in that fountain right there, it felt like he, he he had a read on how much utility Heroic had left. That position is incredibly powerful if there's no flashes, but practically speaking, any flash is going to fully blind you there. And yeah. Tabson wasn't able to do much because of that. Her it is. Yeah, Stown, Stown also just probably feels like he can do anything here. Yeah. Would not surprise me if he just goes through. Okay. That's that's earned. Yeah. That shouldn't, that shouldn't work out for him. And so... That two-man advantage. It, you're pretty right. It feels like the kind of play you're making if you just are so confident in what's going on. You feel like it doesn't matter what you guys do. I will find a way to make it work anyway. This time, they're getting blown up. No deaths yet on the big side. Heroic obviously have money to buy in the next round, but it's going to be flawless. A third round for big. 
Yeah, t I can expect it. That's fine. <laughs> Take out some aggression if you need it. Yeah. Yeah, Krimbo himself has been actually playing quite well as an individual throughout the series. And on this this map, he's at the top of the scoreboard uh, along with Sersen. But this was a pretty quick play from Heroic. They just got they just started just gambling. I think multiple people were pushing smokes in it. Definitely one of those rounds that if it works, your opponents feel terrible. Te like just aw just yeah. awful. And and so big are just able to hold on playing that fundamental style. Great news. Crimbo here. Yavi crouches in for it. So unfortunate. But a good entry once again. Oh, Sirson. That could have been such a beautiful, almost a triple. They want to hunt him down. He's able to claim at least two, but the trouble is still here, though. Tamsin has to hold his own. Back up is starting to get there behind him. I think Farman is trying to get there, turning for the flashbang. But he goes down and stab hit one more headshot through the wall, I believe, and then tags up Farman enough to get the kill. Keto now in one versus two. Coming in to try and see if he could re reclaim this. He needs this round so badly. Anything that they could get. And a grenade down towards the pit will force. Maybe not. Tabson. Oh, sorry, Tabson. He just runs into the other corner. He's safe in there. Oh, that Molotov. It looked like it was going to be sick, but it's not enough. And now time is running out here. Keto. He has no teammates left. He's fighting out in the open. And Tessas will trade it. It's a beautiful first half for Heroic. And big, they are in trouble. I think throughout all the players I've had, the most important thing was to let them know my vision and like getting trying to get all five of us on the same page. And obviously I've had like a lot of like I've had Taco, Steel, I've had Zeus as a coach. So I've had like different cultures come mm -hmm. into my team and try to apply like different concepts. And I think nowadays like I can apply everything that I've learned to my own game and like my team's game. But I think most importantly, uh, and, and CS is like getting your players all on the same page yeah. and having that same vision. And then from that like vision, you can create your structure and like have your, all your different plays off of the structure. And um, everyone like believes in the system because once one player stops believing, then it just, it becomes really hard. Like he was like Nexo was saying with like, you can feel that disagreement and like, you can just, you just feel it. Like, you know, they're just sitting next to you. Yeah. You just, it's just like such a bad feeling because <laughs> ultimately you're the leader. And no one knows what's going on inside the team besides you and your teammates, right? Yeah. And uh, like I think I think that's just the most important part of the game. It's all been on the same page now. Now, real quick, last thing: who, in your eyes, is the greatest leader of all time? Well, in in my eyes, it's it's Kerrigan. Um, since when I like when I actually became first time Agile, I was mm. following him a lot and like stealing things from him and <laughs> and like you know listening to to his like youtube and like all the interviews and stuff like you know trying to see how he thinks and like what why why he thinks this way like why does he make this decision you know like watching his povs like you know why did they go be now like this and that you know so a lot of things i have in my game is actually um from 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 kerrigan so in in my eyes he is the the best thing in the thing nick um not to boost the ego, but I think, uh, <laughs> I think, I think Finn is, has been like, you've been pretty consistent throughout your whole career, like on top. So I would say him, just like the longevity of him being at the top. Uh, I think Glaive obviously had his peak um, where he was really good and they had really good structure and all that stuff. Um, and they beat the crap out of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I think overall, I think, I think Kerrigan has been. Yeah, take one. Up next. Up next. Up next. Up next. Up next. Up 
Well, that is a round that very much sums up some of the madness that we saw in the opening half here on Inferno. Right now, Heroic are absolutely demolishing big. They are trying to book a ticket to play in the finals of the spring tournament here. They're going to be in Washington, D.C. If they can win four more rounds. Big, I have no idea how you could summon a comeback from this stage. They look so defeated right now. This is maybe their one chance. Win the pistol, at least try and do that. And there is a little bit of a crossfire. Actually, a three-way crossfire it could be soon, at least. More people are starting to rotate in. Stalin getting pushed back. He's trying to see if he can throw that grenade just to slow them down, and they're still running for it. Very aggressive start. Kadian gets run down. And Searson peeking through the smoke, and this is dangerous. Yep, they're coming back for it. Oh, chaos is everywhere. Finally, Yabby oh. and Stalin. Oh, it turns on a dime. Unbelievable. Heroic. They were about to lose that round. They were getting just jiggled all over the place and toyed with and somehow in an instant it's turned in their favor crimbo's now on his own he's lost the bomb and it's a one versus three i just actually can't believe it's like they cast a spell on the round that is everyone was dead towards the archway crimbo now triple peak they're all fighting him and he's getting the one good headshot there they gave him a chance they did that was an opportunity for crimbo he's not going to find another one like that 40 seconds left you could already see that Yabby's making his way to B. That is seriously some insurance on the round. Yep. He even wants to flank, potentially. And so it's up to Shush. He's in the one versus one here. And so this is a way for Krimbo to crawl back into this round. 20 seconds left. And this is so interesting. They're going to give him the bomb right now, and they're just going to play back. They're playing to give, but look at where Yabby already is. You could never guess this. You just can't know this if you're Krimbo. Already making noise and being found. That play started 15, 20 seconds ago. Yabby with the triple, but the flank at the end is so sick. So no pistol round in spite of a beautiful opening. I, I, it just happened all in one second. Four kills. Y Yabby and Stown just deleted them as they were trying to make their way through the archway. That is heartbreaking for Big. It was going to be tough already, but look at this. Oh, oh just tap, tap. And that's it. Everybody dead. Okay. I think Tapton was even admiring that a little bit. Yeah, that first half, it was just, if it wasn't the strat, if it wasn't the tactic already beating you, it was the individuals. Another example of the individuals doing work for Heroic. And they're so relentless. Look at Kadian. Not even giving them a rest in this round where all they have is a couple of Glocks and two Deagles. He's saying, yeah, that's great, but... I'm going to be very aggressive and just take it away from you. If you have any plans, I'm canceling them right now. All right, a little bit of a spot. Big don't even realize they've been compromised. They feel like they might be setting up some sort of a play. But in the back line, Kadian is just hungry to find the kills. They've been slowed down with the Molotov. All right, a little bit awkward on the timing there. He's still doing a good job, and they might just come look for him at this stage. Oh, he's making all the money. Three big kills, a fourth one in there. He's denied the ace, but still... It's 14 rounds on the side of Heroic. They look indestructible right now. Five alive, five SMG kills. It's not going to get much better than it is for Heroic. Unless they win. But uh, I guess, actually, you know what? It's pretty hard to even see a world where things just aren't bright for Heroic in this. We've seen comebacks and collapses before. We actually talked about this on the break now at the top level of Counter-Strike. It's really rare you get to see this just because of how well drilled these teams are and how mentally strong they tend to be at the top. And obviously Heroic fall well within that category. So it's just, you know, you, we run back to like 2015. You'd see more of these mental collapses where even a team that's up this much could potentially give it away yeah. just because they fold in the middle of it. But I don't think that's going to happen here. Kadian taking down Keto to start. It's a four on five here beginning in the 18th round. I think it's safe to say that Heroic has shed most of those demons where they were labeled on liners that they couldn't get it done on land. They've already proven it at the fall finals. They showed that they had what it took to reach the major grand finals. They want to show that this season is theirs and that they can sustain that number one placement in the world. Big were supposed to just be a stepping stone for them onto that goal, onto Washington. And there's a chance for Yabby to keep pushing his team forward here. He's alone in the bomb site still, though. He did some damage. He nearly could have had the kill. 
50 seconds. There actually is a way for Big to get back in the round. Although now that Stout has shown up, it does get a bit more tricky. He takes down Krimbo. It's a three on four and an after plant. That's not necessarily going to be a success here for Big. Trading over the Molotov to Tabson. He throws it out onto Banana, where nobody is at the moment. So that was maybe one of the last nades that they actually had. I think Farman's picked up an Ichi in the meantime. Plenty of nades on the heroic side. They're going to throw one of them back there. Surely going to be another one coming as well. Tabs it up close to the coffins. It's a good kill, but not enough to continue the spray. Farvard and Searson, if they have any dreams of a comeback, they must win this afterplant. Smoke is up, and Tessus finds one right through. It's just Farvard left. One versus two. They do not have the kit at the moment, and Kadeen is making a run for it. Good kills at the end. Heroic, they'll be slowed down, and they will even lose the AWP. Big winning the three on four afterplant. That was pretty impressive stuff. Just able to hold on there. Good 1v3 from Favin. Took a little while for Heroic to get into that play, and that hesitation, that delay, whatever it was, works in Big's favor. So another round on the board for the German side. Otherwise, this was uh, looking pretty good for Heroic in most portions of this round. But that is good stuff. Needed to win that fight. They did. I really thought... They were going to molotov off the back and then smoke the bomb instead. Yeah, they, were, they had a couple smokes, actually. Yeah. But either way, it's a moment maybe for Big to try to get some control, especially given the money on the heroic side. They win this one. I mean, it's, it's still, we're not talking about a comeback. We're just trying to, trying to seem like you have a chance to prove something on the T side. You've obviously been studying. Oh, oh whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well done! Shooting him through the window. And that boost is dead and gone. Kadian says, I, I don't, I don't want to face the same thing. Nope. I'm good on that. That's You don't see that working that well too often. No, almost never, right? It, it doesn't seem like people usually have the lineups, but Krimbo does. Just a little flick of his wrist, and that's a dead body. And, and look at... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Campbell. Huge saying, gamble. We either save, or if you come B, we might just win the round. Stown sticking around. At Again, this seems like just him playing off how sick he's been lately and just saying, maybe I can just win it on my own. And he actually does get the double, which at least brings it back into a three on three. The bomb is also lost here. If Kido can't recover it, they, he needs some teammates out here. This could be a bit of a disaster, although Big, or, or sorry, Heroic actually pushing before the bomb is even planted. That, if they had known that the bomb was there, I feel like they would have played it differently. Very interesting option there from Yabby to just try to play around that moto spot. But this will be yet another for Big. Five rounds. It was getting a little bit hectic there, actually. When Stown found the, that double kill, when the flash support was there, it, it felt like things could have crumbled. You're right. That bomb position was a bit precarious. But Krimbo right here. Yeah, we're going to get this. Okay. Yeah, he lined that up. Look at that. He's being precise with it. Good God. Yeah. People are going to start doing that a little bit yep. more because people have just been weirdly just shooting almost aimlessly sometimes through it. But there's a there's a there's kill potential there. It's not even that hard in terms of how many bullets it takes. It's not like you have to spam for 15 or anything. No, it's pretty quick. So yeah. that's probably worth trying every once in a while. Like you said a fifth round on the side of big. I, I think for keto. There was a moment there where he could have panicked and just tried to run for the bomb, and I mean, I'm glad that he didn't. That's some good composure, especially being down this much. That's where people usually make a lot of mistakes because you're just feeling exhausted and probably feeling a lot of pressure too. So that's nice to see. Yeah, it's just it's just one round at a time for for big. Yeah, not gonna start really believing in this until they reach ten or so, but. Like we were saying, this is just kind of big showing that there might be more to their Inferno than we saw in the first half. They can construct a couple nice rounds, something to take with them moving forward. Good flashes out for Heroic, but actually they, they weren't able to maintain that space. Keto was there to fight them back. And no, no team firmly in control of Banana just yet, so Krimbo peeks on towards that bracket. Look at the risk again, the gamble for Heroic. They're saying, you know what, we've shown the rifles at top banana. What if we just stack the A-bomb site and they all show up? We only have very little to work with. A boost on top. Oh, the timing is pretty decent, but Tamsin, he somehow ducked right under it. 
A little bit of a nade over. That one will be good. They take down Keto. Tabson looking to clean it up. Down in the pit, waiting with the pistol. It's Shush, and he is feeling lonesome for some backup. They try to get there through the smoke, but Tabson is absolutely denying it. Good hold on that side, and eventually the isolate Shush. He was never really the real danger. He probably was that retake coming through on the other side. So six rounds for Big. Heroic. They gambled back. They rotated on in, but they just kind of grouped up towards that arch side. Didn't actually full commit send it into the bomb site, And yeah, Shush did a good, great job there in the pit, just maintaining those crossfires, making things a little bit scarier for Big as they're approaching, but no true threat coming from him. Yet another round for Big. And Heroic already showing how they like to play with an advantage, though. The fact that they go for the gamble there in an early round like this, it's just... It makes you sweat when you're big. You, you think that this team is capable of anything at any given time. Sersen just wants the kill. He had, had a chance, and, okay. but he is not going to show any mercy. Yeah, I'm probably was trying to calculate if there was a way to stab him in the back. To, uh... Right. That's too risky, though. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> I love the jump scares. That yeah. angle captures them so well. Yep, getting uh, getting the adrenaline up and running for sure. Okay, still, it's way too early to talk about a comeback. So not not worth the conversation just yet. We need to see Heroic crumble in yes. a massive way, and we need to see Big continue what they're doing here. Let, let's throw the idea out there. How does Heroic lose this, Anders? How, how do you see that even happening? Um... I think they, I mean, some of the plays that we saw on the CT side of Ancient, where, where, they, where they were sort of throwing themselves into fights instead of slowing it down, I think if something like that's happening, then it could be a, a sign of worry. Yeah. Sometimes that, that was a little bit too crazy, but I, it's hard to even imagine, isn't it? Some good kills for the USPs, but they're still going to get overrun eventually. And I think that, I mean, I th on the other side of it, it probably has more than anything has to do also with Big's performance. And honestly, CSN's got 17 kills. Tabson's 13, Krimbo's 14, Farvin's 13. That is, that's probably where I'm looking at the moment. I need for that to keep going. And then, yeah, that's that's at least the first step. But it, it will have to be a whole, it can't just be one thing, right? They have a whole series of collapses that happen. A whole slew of errors need to start emerging through the cracks. Big, they know that this is a tall task that the odds are stacked against them. But they're gonna keep fighting. They're gonna keep going. And I, I wanna s just see if, if they can actually break Heroic because what you're talking about on Ancient, Big were out mid-rounding them at times. True. They were out clutching them. Sometimes we saw Heroic show these moments where they had these huge lapses in judgment, in discipline. The, the way the desk highlighted round number 15, how Kadian was just peaking Krimbo and yep. giving him a chance to clutch. Those kinds of mistakes can't happen. You got to close this game out sooner than later because Big, they're starting the comeback. A really interesting part of this game will happen when we get up to about the 12 rounds or something like that for Big. If they can get there, then suddenly that ticket to Washington is going to start to feel not quite as firm. It'll, it'll just feel like, wait a minute, maybe... Maybe we booked those plane tickets a bit too early. Maybe we have to cancel some of them right away. You don't want to be in that position. I think mentally now, I'm sure Heroic are thinking, it's all good. It's not a big issue right now. All we need is some more rifles, one good opening, and it's done. But get up to, I think, about the 12th round mark, 14-12. I think that's where you could start to see some real panic on the Heroic side. Yeah. This will be a heavy A play, though. Already grouping up. Krimbo in the apartments, handful of players yet to enter bracket, and so Shush will be under major pressure here. Now wants to see if he can maybe put that out. They'll be worried about the flashes that could be coming around the corner too. He's got two teammates inside of the bomb site, so this is a good defense right now, especially if no one's pushing Art from the Arch from the big side. Actually, yeah, they're getting even a fourth man in there. Yabby is kind of nearby now. They are starting to think about it. I was worried that there was going to be no Arch wrap. They're still not quite sure. It feels like pushing brackets all in here is just too risky. And Tabson is the guy 
to make the push through. We're down to 19 seconds, and they're starting to put some pressure on now. Rushing right in there, but the hold is good. It's Kadian and Yabby with the first couple of kills. Down to 10 seconds. The USP won't be enough, and they need the bomb plant. They need to go quick with it. Yabby's in with the spray, the bomb. Oh, he's just barely going to have it. And Searson, he's clutched it once before. He's already done it. He's outmaneuvered down earlier. Now he has to do it on the other side. He's got the Deagle, and he has no idea where Tessus is coming from. Once he knows, he could put that AWP to use. But he's just not sure at the moment. And Tessus, pressure on him, too. He wants this map to end right now. Searson, he's standing up. I don't think he's seen it yet. I don't think he realized. Almost shot through the box. He needs the one dig. It has to connect. It's right now. And never Searson. And he gets run down instead. Tessus able to do it. And he's there with the defuse and the kit. 15 on the side of Heroic. Searson unable to withstand the pressure. The ever encroaching Tessus is able to put himself and Heroic on 15. It was looking sharp for Big. They were bringing that one back. The exec was there, but just too many bodies. Just so many players for Heroic there. It was one less rotation over. If Yabby didn't show up from that library, you could imagine that Big would have been able to win that one. But Heroic, they knew what was coming. Unimaginably close, that one. But for Heroic, it's got to be very nice. And so is that. Sis running for the flames to pick up Yabby, but it's down to the middle. Do they know? I think Tabson might have heard some of the burn damage. It's possible, at least. Stown's going to be careful that his weapon doesn't obscure that. Yeah, but he won't. Sometimes the model will do that. Three on three. The bomb is in the middle. So kind of weird now. Big. No point in winning the B bomb side if you don't actually have the bomb. Crimbo has been set loose on the map, and he's found another kill. He should maybe be dead. Oh, he's got the right aim back. This is insane. Three kills for Crimbo. It's making it look easy. And Tessis is lost on the other side. This was a tough situation for Krimo to put together to expect where the next fights were coming from. But great crosshair placement, great understanding of the likely rotations from Heroic, and just making sure that he has his gun out. This is something that weirdly has been happening a lot after the player break. A lot of people have just been dying with, with their guns put away, with yep. knives out, and yet doesn't need that extra movement speed, just wants to make sure that he can take any fight if presented to him. Now, Tessis. Just going to try to keep himself alive on top of these first oranges. And Crimbo, Keto, they're coming. Yeah, Tess is difficult for Crimbo to see that fight. But the follow-up is there. Keto able to pick it up. Nine kills on him. So just a couple of rounds with some more output. They don't need that much more big. You can tell that the team is functioning way better. It's late to get a team started, obviously, but... Man, eight rounds now. They need another seven to get it into overtime. Wow. Grimbo, looking cool. Yeah. Simple high five after that one. Knows that there's still so much more work to be done. Oh. Heavy stack from Heroic towards middle. Yeah. They don't have that much to work with. Assume that eventually they're just gonna send it down the middle. Absent, it's a bit awkward. He gets overrun at the start of it. Still, they should be able to hold on. The bomb is on the other side, but I don't think it'll be a problem. This is continuing to be awkward. Farben and Kid have taken a bit more damage. Still feel like Big should be in control of the round. Now they realize what's coming. All right. Yeah, slow down. They've recovered the bomb. Shushto is kind of pushing forward. Good pick off. He's up at the top of Banana. If they don't check it, maybe. If they don't check it, they deserve to lose. That's true. I'm with you. I agree. And Keto, he's got the same opinion. Let's not lose yeah. in that fashion. Good job. There's no way that... I mean, you got to check everything against USPs. Yeah. Kadian, last man standing, but only for a second. Yeah, good good stuff. A little bit of a scare at the beginning of it. It was a little bit awkward. It was a little, little bit clumsy, but bigger able to hold on. Yeah, no real threat in that round from Heroic. You expect that they're going to get this one done with at least some up upgraded weaponry. Heroic always have a couple tricks, some plan, but they would like weapons to do it, to enact it. Certainly does make the job that much easier. But still, 15 to 9. It kind of is within the margin of error. Remember, it's not going to... Oh, okay. wow. They get a taste of their own medicine. 
Oroko were doing that a lot in the first half. They were finding so much utility damage. Almost would have said that they had more utility damage than big on the defense yeah. with the amount of nade kills. So this is an advantage that now Tapson has to piece together. He's able to find that nade kill early on, and it's up to him to choose the next option. Mid-round looks like it's dictating a B play. And this is just Tessis on this side of the map. Yeah, smoke timing is everything for him right now. If he fails it, they, they're just gonna come running through. Trimbo trying to sell, but there might be an attack towards the middle. And that's pretty decent, but they're still flashing their way through. Tessis, it's some good damage, but not enough stopping power. He probably needed that kill right there. Bomb. Not quite being planted yet, but it's only a matter of time. And Heroic, again, given the money, I'm not sure if it's worth it. I feel like the six-round gap right now, and the only thing Heroic have to think about, how many of those rounds can we have rifles? That's the really important thing. So don't throw away a round here if you don't think you can win it. Tr truly no reason to go for this. It's impossible to justify. Tess is trying to escape. It's a bit unfortunate. He was trying to get away, but Favin snipes him down right through the smoke. Kadian's gonna find some kills presented to him along with Stown, but truly it is just cosmetic. Yeah, they don't care. Maybe giving away the AKs eventually could be a problem if you start to give those over, but you know, you're right. They're not gonna lack the money on the big side. That's not the issue here. Even Keto happy to sit on the bomb. It's not an issue. No. 10 to 15. As long as you're winning, you're buying. That's, that's how big perceive this. Okay. Nice nade stack to kick it off. Yep. Good exec into the site. Didn't overthink it. Didn't have to put some crazy layered plan together. And you see that is forcing Exist to call another timeout. Just one more. Let's see if they have some crazy tricks up their sleeve. It's only going to take one. They had to the push down the middle in one of the previous rounds. And that, uh, that looked pretty impressive for the CTs. There are definitely other options as well. Big had a couple of rounds where they tried to take deep banana control with Keto running down there, and obviously it mostly failed, except for the one round where Keto got lost in the smoke and it kind of kind of worked out. But maybe maybe Heroic could try something similar. Try to get that deep banana control and take some of that tactical space away from Big. You see that a couple of the players from Heroic are forced down to these MP9s. Still, a lot of options as they have so much utility to work with. And what is this? Okay, Yabby, he wants to press on forward. Utility's there. A lot of damage inflicted onto Keto, but it, it's not a kill. And they have alerted Big to the, the knowledge that these are MP9s defending the site. Yeah, I think they were hoping that there was going to be more of a fight out there. Also looked awkward because I think the smoke went through the Molotov to begin with, so they didn't really extinguish it. There's a lot going on in that moment. Everything is on the line. Every single move around the corner could spell the end of the group stage here for B. They could be sent down in the showdown, and Heroic would be celebrating across the stage for a spot in Washington to play in the finals. You just know it. Every time you could peek into the AWP, and it could be all over. Oh, big nade. Yep. Tabson brought down low half health and looks like they want to go for it. No arch involvement. Preemptive. That's not going to stop the HEs though. They find the headshot. Kadian, he'll pick up one and shush it down in the pit, but he's on his own trying to defend this one. Tracking him through the smoke. What a great couple of kills to come out. He's very, very low, but they haven't found him yet. Finally, Searson is there and it's a 2 on 2, but that's so low. Big. This might just be the end of the road. Even the MP9s are going to be lethal right now. Tabson and Searson. You need true aim at the moment. And there's Searson with the one. Long range, Tess is crouching in. A bullet will do it, and he finds it on Tapson. It's heroic to make the finals in Washington, taking down Big. Well done from Heroic, a convincing victory over Big, 16 to 10, and they punch their ticket in. They're headed to America's capital to fight on foreign ground. What a struggle, in spite of such an insane first half for Heroic. Big, they must be thinking, if we just do anything else at all on that first half, if we can just find some more rounds, then this is a competitive game on a whole different level. 
They've shown a lot, I think. Again, the level of preparation and individually, there's some interesting stuff to be looked at for Big here, but today, Heroic just were the better team. There's a lot to be said about Big. I'm really curious about how the analysts are going to break this one down because to me, Big, they're still a team that I'm scratching my head over. It seems like the tactics are there. Sometimes the individuals fall off. Sometimes it is the individuals that are willing them through games. Yeah. So much to be said, I'm sure. We've got James Banks there on the floor with Kadian. Kadian, you managed to do it and you get to the spring finals and you win Inferno as well. So this must be all very positive signs. Yeah, I mean, Stown said it as well before we started Inferno. I mean, I know our stats are really bad on it, but if you look just like a few months back before that, it was actually our best map. Uh, he's nodding right now, so he, he, he agrees. I think it's it's still like a um, home turf for us in many ways. Um, I can't exactly describe why uh, we had some poor results, but also now we changed positions on the CT side, which maybe didn't show too much in this game, but the T side we've always been amazing on, and it's a map we're definitely going to continue playing. Um, so yeah, it's not as bad as it looks. And I was going to touch on that, right? When it comes to your map pool at the moment, it, it's not like you have any bad maps because you can win some of these maps and you dominate, but you're always dropping one map in a way we don't expect to do. And I'm, I'm just going to touch on, on the Ancient game because you don't have much information on Big, right? They only played it months ago when Tizium was in there, but they came out and they fought hard and you guys fell flat again. Yeah, I think our map pool, I mean, yeah, you say we can win every map, but it also sometimes feels like we can lose any, you know? So um, I think there's definitely plenty of things to work on. I think now looking back in like retro perspective on this tournament, we achieved exactly what we wanted uh, to qualify first and foremost, but also to, you know, we showed the inconsistencies, but we still showed the highs and the highs were super important for us. The lows, we, we kind of want to remove that and we've done that in the past, otherwise you don't win tournaments. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the first tournament of the year. Uh, and also I think like if you look at the best of threes, we have at least one or two maps on every best of three where we beat, beat them like 16-4, 16-5 that, that's also positive, yeah? It definitely is. You've had all three maps going there, but they're the ones you've won. A lot of them have been so dominant. I also want to just touch on the fact that, obviously, for you guys, getting this rust off, looking at these mistakes you talk about, how important is that ahead of Katowice? Uh, it's important, but I don't know. Like, uh, I think there's many things to improve on. And like you said, Katowice is around the corner. I think also some of the teams have said, like, yeah, this was a warm-up tournament for Katowice. I mean, I'll be very impressed if people manage to change a lot from this <laughs> tournament because, like, we're literally traveling in like some teams are traveling for the play in like tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we're traveling like three days. Uh, so you have to be really quick if you see this as a warm-up tourna tournament, you know. Um, but uh, it's important. But then again, I think that we've shown the highs of this team, and now it's just about like showing the consistency and making sure that we can do it at more events than we did last year. And I just got to ask one quick cheeky question: uh, Any worries of Stown taking the orb from you? <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, he, he's good. He's really good. He's good with any weapon. And uh, I mean, we're lucky to have him, you know, he's a super strong player. Uh, I think especially the last two maps, he, he played a lot of uh, very important rounds. Uh, I think a tendency, though, for the entire team right now is like some over peaking. And uh, that's some pretty big mistakes where we lose the calmness. And that's not just down. That's especially also me. I see the other guys in the last round as well. Uh, so. There's plenty of room for improvement, but there's also many things that I am, as a captain, very satisfied with. Do you feel like actually more teams overall can punish you for mistakes now? Do you feel like that level has got even higher? Mm, I'm not sure. I think right now our level is just like, you touched the punish yourself, like it's the instability, you know? Okay. Like um, our map pool, you know, it, 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 it has moments where it's amazing and it has moments where it's like super shaky. I think getting Inferno back on track, I mean, now we won two and lost one. Mm -hmm. It's a good start. Uh, Mirage has been consistent, Vertigo has been consistent. Uh, we're starting to like develop those four, five maps, that's really good. And obviously right now, we're playing all seven. We haven't played Anubis yet. Maybe it's gonna happen. Ooh, or, am I, okay. or is he just oh, waiting? Yeah. Is he just waiting? Who knows? But, um, you know, I think trying to play all seven maps is difficult, but it's something we're trying to do at the moment. You have to throw that in there, Kadian. Congratulations making it Washington. Thank you very much. Big out of runway as Heroic burn them out of this series. The Germans almost had us believing in the potential comeback in the second, but Jacob, a 12 to 3 scoreline in the first, that was just too telling for the day. Yeah, it was a cosmetic comeback. I felt big monster here at the very last uh, stages of the Inferno game. Felt like Heroic had the number of them. The T side, as Cadian said, very polished, very good. There was a good change of pace as well. We saw fast paced rounds, we saw some slower paced rounds, and I think we got exactly what we requested for Mr. Cadian and for Heroic as well. A very convincing win. 
win. That gives us hope that they're coming into Katowice in a good shape. Whereas for Big, again, they fall a little bit flat, unfortunately. As said, the second half, sure, you can argue that T-Side were looking somewhat decent. But to me, that was more of a cosmetic comeback than anything else. Yeah, the game felt decided after the first yeah. 15 rounds. I think it was the common sense around the green room. And we also got very lucky to witness finally Stone taking over a game. Yeah. It had been... He had been relatively silent, relatively measured in his performance here in Copenhagen. And this time around, he showcased how much he can take over. We had a bunch of crazy clutches, incredible openings. He was showcasing such confidence. The way he was taking fights, you could feel from round three or four, he understood that this is it. I'm in the zone. I'm going to take any fight, throw me the flashes, show me the money, and I'm about to get you the kills. Yeah, let's go down back, oh, back rather to one particular round uh, that's definitely going to go down in history here at the Spring Groups. Uh, round number seven, where Stan, uh, he gets some chi up action going here. Pure magic. Madness, round number seven, but you also have to talk about a 4v3 with 13 seconds left, Ria. That's what we are working with. And here, that very clever little post that little fake, just to grab the information. Stone saves through the smoke here. That's pretty much black magic if I've ever seen it. And then he is going to continue with the showcase. Sersen puts himself in a weird of a position on that box with the AWP, and this is just gross. By the way, there was a no-scope that we missed in that round. Stone did everything. I mean, I would also stand on my feet. That was crazy. The fact that he was able to save the bomb planner right here in that situation, like we were talking a split second, right? One more bullet going off that uh, M4 and, and it's round over. The bomb won't be planted. Stone can't do this, but it's just great to see, right? Because as you said, he's been a little bit slow in this tournament. We haven't really yep. seen the best of the best Stone, but he showed up when it mattered the most, and I am happy to see that. And, and beyond just, you know, applauding Stone for a crazy clutch, which this is, I think it also showcases how Heroic can play when they're on flow state. Like, they had, they had 12 seconds to work with when yeah. they arrive on the side. They were three versus four, and they did everything they could to convert a very unfortunate situation. They used the smoke in the side, they fake plant one time, then they plant in a different position, and the rest is history, of course, Stone, as the highlights roll, you can just see, I'm telling you about confidence, look at the way he's opening side, no doubt at all. Look how fast he's going into it, as well as the proactivity, it's the synergy with the rest of the team, that's why, you know, we were spelling this to be the Danes closing out after that first time. Yeah, Kedian hit it pretty spot on, right, the, the peaks for Heroic are still very, very high, the peaks of Heroic is still a team that potentially can go to Katowice and have ambitions of winning, it's still a team that can be the best in the world, but the lower level, so to speak, you know, we have seen the misses against EG. We have seen some very questionable maps. We saw Ancient as well in this series against Big. So there's still something to work on. But overall, I'm leaving this tournament, and I think Heroic is as well, with a positive outlook. Look, mission is accomplished. They're qualified for Washington. That's what they wanted. But mm. Kaden also said there aren't that many days between yeah. now and Katowice. Like, let's not pretend like yeah. all of the level we've seen here, ah, don't worry about it. It's like a few weeks. No, it's not. Some people will travel tomorrow. Some people will travel in three days. And if here, the, obviously, the mission was to qualify, Qualify. If you have your highs set on a long, long run in Katowice, I don't think Heroic is quite there yet. Yeah, the highs are highs, but some of the maps they played was very shaky. Yeah, true. Against better opposition, they're going to have to clean that up if they want to put their hands on a the trophy there. Maui Snake posed a question at the end of that game. Uh, he was curious to hear your guys' thoughts on Big's identity uh, at the moment, because I feel like it is still a little bit confusing. I don't know whether we got the answers necessarily we were looking for at this tournament, because they've been very high highs, but incredibly low lows too. The way I see it, uh, the most positive faces we've seen from Big were on the T side. This is yep. when I started thinking, oh, there is, oh, there's an interesting take to how they're approaching the situation. There's an interesting couple of smokes here and there being used. But the CT side of role, which I've always thought relies a bit more on individuals being stable all across the board, I feel like this is where they've showcased weaknesses and Inferno is a sad example. I don't know if I can handle having more enemies, but but I'm not going to lie in, in this situation. I'm getting kind of bored watching big play. So who doesn't bore you? Let's make that list. No, but, but to be honest, right, it's a team that's been stagnating for a very, very long time. I think if you're a big fan as well, you remember the good old days. You remember the days where they were able to be very competitive against the best teams in the world. Even at the major, we spoke about it, playing with Sin. They were able to deliver some high quality Counter-Strike. So it's not like they don't know how to. It's not like you don't have Tapson being a, a star player or a, a fantastic in-game leader. You have pieces within that project that is very interesting, but as a team, as a whole, I am just felt that, sure, Big can contest for being 11, 10, maybe 9 in the world, but that's it. They've stagnated in that progress, and I don't see the next big thing coming up in Germany either, so can they make a roster change that's going to make them any better? I, I'm finding it very hard to get hyped around this roster as it is right now, with all due respect. Unfortunately for Big, they will be heading towards the showdown, but let's get a few closing words. Tapson. Tapson, you guys will end your journey here and go down to the showdown. But there were some positives we certainly saw within this series. But I'm going to have to start with the negative side of things is Vertigo. You guys go into it over and what I would say is you're tried and tested in Mirage and you guys get absolutely destroyed on it. Was this more down to not being ready or more down to the individual level? Um, I believe we were not ready individually wise. Uh, the game felt very stiff. They forced us to do, to do us mistakes. 
And uh, I believe we had made a nice reset. Uh, Gob said it really well. He said, like, hey, the communication feels really stiff. It feels really frozen. We are shouting. We are playing hectic. It's not like we used to play. Um, therefore, I think they played very well. At, um, uh, for the veto, I believe uh, we will do the same next time as well. OK, OK, we can learn from these for sure. And Ancient, this was, we didn't expect at all that you guys to be ready for this, let alone come in and win it. So this was a hugely positive sign for sure. How much time have you been putting into this, Ancient? Because the last time we saw it was back when Tizium was there. Uh, we've been putting some time for all the seven maps. We are confident on our map. That's why we banned the best map of the opponent. Um, therefore, it was a good sign that our practice and our theory is working really well on Ancient. Um, yeah, so it's going good. And just over one thing of what you guys have been talking to me about is this getting started and warmed up as individuals and also some of the chaos and the communication. One thing I've always prided like Big Clan in of any iteration is you guys have had that good communication, that good synergy together. Is this just the start of a year thing or is it something else? Um, we just played against the best team in the world and they are punishing us for mistakes. They're playing very good with rotations. They know exactly what they need to do to punish a little bit um, weaker teams, I would say. Um, therefore, yeah, it's just, just just the beginning of the year. We will we will fix that. We will try to do our best and for the next event, and we will try to improve and improve. That's what it's all about, Tabson. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, unfortunately for Big, they are going to have to be bouncing back in the showdown if they have any hopes of making it forward to Washington for the spring finals. But speaking of which, one more place is ready to be awarded as we round out the action here in Copenhagen. It's either going to fall to Astralis or OG.
one final place in Washington and the duel to decide sees Astralis squaring off versus OG. The Danes survived their last test versus the Ninjas, absolutely kicking them to the curb. Thanks to some heroics on the man on your screen, Blame F and of course Device. Two stars looking to continue their form coming into this series, but for OG, looking to continue their streak of actually making it to Blast Finals. But uh, it's been a very bumpy road to say the least, Machu, obviously falling to phase, but actually managed to, to, uh, to put some work against Liquid. Yeah, it's been uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, yeah. if you will, when it comes to OG so far. The, the phase they've shown against Liquid was very impressive. In fact, they made it look like they were not playing in the same category. Beat mm -hmm. Liquid twice in two best of threes. We had players like Neofrag showcasing some great clutching abilities. They didn't even rely too heavily on Dexter, which I think sometimes can be an issue with OG. That wasn't the case, but this is the plus. The minus is that Lions turns into kitties when they faced FaZe Clan. Really much less aggressive, passive, waiting for rounds, doubting themselves. And I'm not exactly sure which one of these we're going to get today. No, I'll buy into that because I'm not exactly sure either. I think the fashion they were beating at Team Liquid in was very, very positive. And as you said, you know, who wouldn't turn into kittens when you're playing FaZe Clan? There's very yeah. few teams out there who wouldn't be scared going up against them. So I don't really hold that up against OG as of right now, but that will depend on how this game is going. I think this is the true test. This this is where we figure out whether or not Hoji is still a team that is trending upwards or whether yeah. or not it's a team that has stagnated just like big. And it's the perfect moment, the perfect moment to test OG. We started this event here by saying, hey, if you're OG, this is a key moment in your calendar. You've been historically able to qualify for spring finals, for fall finals. These were your moments where you stepped into the light and you played S tier tournaments. Well, now you have an actual very clear chance against a very newly formed Astralis with this roster. You can fight for Washington, but will you be able to do it? It feel like we are landing smack in the middle of the opponents they have played. It isn't phase, but also isn't sleepy liquid, it's Astralis. And for me, the biggest difference maker when we're looking at the results uh, in these series, it has to come down to Dexter because, man, he had one of his worst land performances ever versus FaZe in that first duel. Yeah, he's been been having a great bounce back. And I think in, in more terms, you know, it's been a, a clutch event for Dexter more mm. so than, than anything else. I still think he can play better than what we've seen at this tournament. I still think there's more in him. I think we discussed it many times on the desk saying that Dexter going to OG, there was more of a win for OG than it necessarily was a win for Dexter. He should do this as a springboard to perhaps get further in his career but again rating 1.06 it's not like it's not like he's been up 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 there but i think the clutches is putting in the effort and the impact he's finding outside of the games against face that's what's making us believe that he's actually having a good turn i don't know whether or not we are being biased here but it feels like outside of that very sad face series mm. every single game i've seen og dexter has helped put them right back on track either by coming mm. back attempting some crazy clutches or by straight up being a force to be reckoned with so i know the numbers don't pay exactly a great picture for him i still believe he's been delivering and I know for a fact he's going to be needed today. Well, let's check in with OG's assistance coach to see exactly what he's thinking of the young squad. Now, you guys have a very young team, right? And I wanted to see when it comes to having that young team, it's been important for you, for Rugger and the rest of the team, about how you can mold a player. Is this easier to work with them? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it is way easier. Um, they come from teams where, uh, for example, FICO, they already had a very good structure around it. Uh, they had like coaches and everything that they had to listen to. So it's easier to work with these kind of players because they're more open to new ideas and they also believe in the coaches itself. So with these type of players, it's like pretty easy, right? They make a mistake, they come in the end and say, what should I do better, right? And this also, this synergies already make it very easy for the coaches. I like it. Now, in terms of what we've seen from OG, we're talking about these roles and position changes. It's certainly an improvement from the OG we've seen when, say, Dexter first joined, right, when you were going through all of this. How have you guys come to these decisions? Who's been masterminding? Who's been looking at it all? Um, I mean, me and Casper are obviously constantly in the talks and what is good for the, for the team. And since we both have like a lot of experience, we can see what the quality of the player is, right? Because if you get to know a player uh, longer, you know, okay, how do they communicate? What is their decision making? And that's how we come to the conclusion that we want to use Neofrag in a little bit different um, position. And so right now it's looking pretty good. Very interesting because we've seen a lot of change-ups uh, in terms of the roles positioning as Kakafu was uh, alluding to in that interview. Interesting as well with the veto because uh, OG, they've had a tendency of picking into H and we do see that as a third. But this is the first time they've actually picked something different. Yeah, maybe they respect Astralis on, on Ancient. We've seen them play against NIP. Maybe they respect the fact that there's a lot of preparation that can be yes, done by absolutely. Astralis as mm. they've played it so, so much in this tournament. So I'm not necessarily sure, sorry, if I disagree with not picking Ancient, but they were allowed to play it as a potential third map as well 
So I think OG is more than happy and more than satisfied with this veto. Yeah, it's hard for me to, to land on a strategy right now on Vertigo because mm. on one hand we had that extremely competitive game against Vitality. Device, top of the scoreboard, kind of taking us back to his golden years immediately and we were completely mm. flabbergasted. And then they got schooled by Heroic. So that leaves me with a hot and cold feeling. I don't necessarily agree with that pick from OG. I don't think it's a weakness for Astralis. Yeah. But you're right. If you can have Ancient as a third map, you know, get funky with it. Yeah, definitely good to have in your wheelhouse. When we're talking about uh, unique aspects in this series, though, interestingly, Flamesy is actually somebody that we're putting under the microscope in that aspect. Yeah, I think there's one area where Astralis is missing out a little bit compared to OG. One area where OG have a player type and a player profile Astralis can't really live up to. And that is Flamesy, of course, being this aggressive element with the rifle. Constantly hyperactive, constantly being a guy that would like to make any openings. And the reason why I got this graph created was that who is supposed to match him on this side of I Astralis? Think that's Blame it could be Blame it could be someone from the Astralis game, right? But they don't have that player type right now. We're not fully seeing it in Bush yet. Perhaps he's being molded into it. Supnix is definitely not the counterpart to Flame C. Neither is Blame F. Glaive, he has a lot of, you know, struggles being the in-game leader, having to focus on that. So I feel like that's one area where OG actually have an attribute. They have a tool in the tool case that Astralis doesn't. Look at the numbers we hear right on your point, Jacob, we're talking about the T-side for Astralis, a very measly 27% opening kill maximum that was, and we know that Buzz is struggling. We've talked about it on different desks, different iterations. He is currently being sort of a cannon fodder, being just put forward. I don't necessarily think he knows how to handle that role so well, but I also have to say, I didn't see the finesse coming out of Astralis to help him succeed in that first step. Mm. It feels like whenever Config was here, some of the heavy lifting he was doing was basically based on how monstrous he can be on a map, but not that something is actually devised for him to find these kills, and that's not the case currently with us. Well, let's put a pin in that conversation just for a brief moment and check in with Flamesy ahead of this series. Now, when it comes to this veto, Ancient's going to be the decider, not one you pick this time. We see the Vertigo one coming. Did you guys pick the Vertigo because you thought you saw them play badly against it on Heroic, or is it more back to your own confidence? Because it's not a bad map for you guys. Uh, well, I don't know. I just trust the coaches and the, and the idea. Like, I have no idea why we pick Vertigo specifically. Um, but we feel like it's a good map for us, and uh, we can. And I, I believe the coaches have seen the, all their maps, and they were like, okay, we can find gaps in in, in this kind of map, and it, it goes to our strength, and we can play like that. And you know, I just give it to them. They just give me a paper. You can do this, 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 and I, I do this, 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 and I just need to shoot the head. So your preparation then is something that happened today rather than what had happened yesterday, like because of just not knowing Vertigo was going to be there for you. No, I think I think it's it's like a you know it's obviously like we we saw yesterday that they beat Nip and then we you kind of know what you're playing against and who you're playing against and like you know many things, but I think it's it's more like I, I it's not it's like in a sense it's not my job. I will be involved in the in the anti stat when it comes to it, but when when the coaches and the IGL and basically the management kind of they come in and they say. Look, this map we believe you can do good. Do you do you feel like that map is a good map for you? Like maybe some okay. players have discomfort, and as long as you give a yes to that to, to them in that question, then you know you, you go with it. And the only job you have it's, it's very easy because all you need to do, like all you need to do is just play good, right? You just need to shoot the head. They give you the direction. They give you the you have they they have the tactical pauses that you know they they give their inputs. But yeah, basically it's a, it's just a mix of. Coaches come and tell you, look, this map, uh, we might play this, we might pick it. Are you okay with it? Yeah, sure. Uh, like you tell him, yeah, boss man, and then you, you, play, the, you play the map. Good words from Flamesy, as always. But I do want to move the conversation back to Buzz. Obviously, uh, the new gun coming on the side of Astralis. So, so far, uh, how has he been working for you? Started off real poor, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Oh, actually, started off really, really good with a pistol ace. But apart from that, we didn't <laughs> see anything coming out of Buzz. Has had a very rough tournament. Haven't really found his role within Astralis. But yesterday, we saw glimpses of maybe what is to be for Buzz. In particular, on Mirage, I saw him play well. Assertive, not afraid of taking duels, finding impact on the server. So, hopefully, again, Buzz is a player right now that is being molded into uh, a player that maybe can be the replacement for Config, but that's the big issue, right? We'll talk about Flame C. Config is no longer here in Astralis, and they need someone on that T side to be the mm. can opener. And uh, even if I agree with you that Buzz has shown better promises very recently, I think it's mostly on the CT side. These were moments where he had me thinking, all right, I can see the job you're doing. It's okay. You can hold your own. Ancient was a good example. I thought he did good. But on the T side, it still seems like he struggles to find that distance and that pace for the team. You brought it up the other day, and, and I'm pretty sure he's 6 for 41 in opening duels Ooh. so far. 6 for 41. 
remove him from that aspect right now. Don't put him in those positions. Know your limitations as of right now. Otherwise, you're just going to be a sacrificial lamb running around. That's no bueno. When we're talking about actual impact that Astralis are able to bolster on the server, though, um, we do have to put Device's name under the spotlight once again because himself, Blame Effort, in that series yesterday versus NIP, huge uh, instrumental difference. Maybe. Yeah, I am under the impression that the Device Blame Effort on the CT side is one of the hardest to play, at least here in Copenhagen. We'll see uh, later down the road how it pans out. I also think that the Vertigo pick, in one sense, might just nullify blame F because I feel like Vertigo is one of the few maps where he doesn't have that incredible Terminator multi-kill factor <laughs> on the C on the CT side where you can absolutely do nothing. I've seen him look relatively human on the map. I don't know if that part partakes into the thought process for OG, but it is true. These two players, Device and Blame F on the CT side, impossible to negotiate with. That's what we've been seeing so far. The CT sides of Astralis have actually been good, I would argue. Yeah. They've been stellar uh, at certain points. They've been very demanding. Again, you run into Blame F and Device. It's a, a tough nut to crack open, to be completely honest. Whereas for the T sides, they've been very lackluster. So I'm looking for in this game for Astralis at least to show improvement, show us that maybe the first couple of T sides we've seen so far has been a smokescreen and that's not the reality. Otherwise, I'm already looking into an Astralis that have a major issue at hand where they need someone to be it be the open on the T side. It can't be all Glaive. It can't be all Device because they have so many other roles within this roster. Look, we're going to start on Inferno now. And the last time I've seen Astralis on that map, that's when they beat Heroic 16 to 10. And I almost felt like Glaive just picked up where we left off with Device. Like, oh, Device, you're back. Let me just jump into my time machine. This is 2018 again. And we're going to play 4 1 setup. Device, you're on top of the car. Let's have a good time. And it actually worked out. It feels like some of the meta, some of the conclusions they came to lately in the past few years still work on Inferno. And I think this team can make damage on that immediately. Well, we are ready to jump into our final series here in Copenhagen for the spring groups as one last spot in Washington is on the line. Let's see if we'll get that head start.
Now, OG, they haven't played Vertigo since the full finals, but they decided to pick it against you. How do you view this veto overall? Do you think they respected your Ancient enough to think that actually, maybe we don't pick this? Well, their Ancient results isn't that great. Uh, although that's the comfort map, mm -hmm. uh, but after the new update, it hasn't been that great. So, um, yeah, I think they're respected. Um, but yeah, let's see how it, what happens in a server, right? Where do you feel like you guys have the advantage when you've looked at this game? Um, I mean, they're still a strong team, right? Um, I think the biggest takeaway from us is that they are a very good city team, uh, especially like Playmef, like they know what they're doing, right? Yeah. So we need to come out swinging, but also for us, it's that we are a good city side team, meaning that uh, we see how good uh, Bus holds up, um, and then we see if our game plan is good. Good evening, everybody. They're ready. I'm ready, Launders is ready, and I hope you are ready. It's the final best of three of the spring groups, man. I feel like we've cast a lot of good Counter-Strike this yeah. week. So many big moments. Yeah, uh, a lot of aces. A lot of aces, a lot of big moments for individuals, a lot of cool stories here with the Vice coming back into land. I think there have been some very pleasant surprises and uh, some sort of disappointing stories as well that comes at the beginning of every season. Uh, but less so, I feel like, than other seasons, actually. More impressive stuff that's been happening. So let's see if we get top-tier Counter-Strike to end off this uh, past couple of weeks here in Copenhagen. Ooh, Zip. He heard him up there, but didn't expect to be peaked that deep by Flames. So surprise, surprise. Alt mid, opening kill OG. Neofrag. Having a great event, and... Offering up a 2K with those Berettas, Device and Blame F, the heavy hitters of Astralis, and one of them's dead already. So Device into the dual Berettas, four players to drop. Go ahead, pick up those two first, whip it back. Oh, but the guns go dry. Ooh. For the first time in history, the Berettas run out of bullets. <laughs> That's never happened before. God damn, that was a nice try. That was that would have been a hell of a clip. That would have been like the 2K up the clip on Red. You know, even if it wasn't hard, Device getting a 1v4 in his first couple weeks back. Oh my God. Could you imagine the presses? Imagine, imagine. Clean one. Uh, he used ammo well, for sure. Yeah, it was Neofrag who burned through the first 10 bullets. Hello, Playman! <laughs> That's it. Hello. Careful. Nice to meet you. Fiku, he will eat you alive. They're sitting on opposite sides, and they're at maximum distance right now. They, I think they have to go through like Dexter and mm. Nexa as well. Yeah, that's what to those, get to him. That's what people think before they fall into the uh, gorilla cages. <laughs> you think you're safe, right? Breath of peace for all day. Never forgotten. So Astralis with the bomb plant. It's a buy round. And as this series goes on. We're looking for somebody from the Astralis camp, other than Device and Blame F, to try and offer up a great performance. Somebody else to just be there with them so that there's a three-player core to this Astralis frag department. We know Blame F can go above and beyond. We know Device has had those maps as well. But it just feels like, without a third piece of the puzzle, it's not consistently good enough. And that might be enough in a match with OG and like versus some other top teams. That's definitely still not enough, but that is the, the realest, most unfiltered take that you could have. Unfortunately, device and blame F can be relied upon. Everybody else, it's sometimes. Zip finds a bit of an opening here. A crack in the A site defense forces the arch player to double back around. And anytime you've got Degster dead. Feels like the job's a little easier. Fiku, nice off angle. Zipix unsuspectingly walks in and will die, but at least uh, Blame F's gonna trade that one out, get into the AK-47 and look to split that B site where Neofrag has had to give up real estate towards Banana. Now you can still just cut off Blame F, but if you die to him, you're gonna have some problems. Four seconds to spare. Remember, four spy situations. Blame F trading out Zipix, moving this from Arch to CT and then all down to Banana. So he's keeping it mobile and he has now chopped off Flame Z. So Nexa, you've got better health than the other two players combined. You've got a smoke to block off Banana. You've got a frag if you want to go deep. But do you have the gall for this? No kit, 
No kit. He walks away, yeah. and Astralis will win this force buy. Man, he had the majority of the tools here. I mean, he had the resource. He had the HP. He had a gun. He knew they were low. He could have even tossed that HE to see if he got a kill. Probably could have moved in. If he had the kit, of course, uh, you know, he's definitely going to try this, but I think there's even a chance he still could have won. Flame F will be the last man alive on Astralis and also the heavy hitter of the round. Neofrag could have played that a little bit more carefully. And I don't mind the swing, actually. Like, for a moment there, Blame F is not looking in his direction, but the way that Blame F scales is so careful that he is not exposed to construction that entire time. But with the amount of time on the clock, if Neofrag focused on the site player who was coming in to plant that bomb, he could have easily been able to win the round. up around that one Galil and it's device at the forefront of it what have you made of OG's event so far the individuals that we've seen pretty good I think they think that's I have some personal problems with like the way they call where I'm like okay you know if you do I can't remember what match it was but they did it for the entire best of three and it was just a lot of walk up pop flash execs or walk out contact explodes and I just don't really see that winning tournaments, even though it could win them a, a match or here or there. And it feels like uh, Nexa calls that way, uh, at least he said so, because they've had communication problems. And even though they've got a really chatty team, they don't really have a ch team that communicates seriously all the time. Mm. They're having a little bit too much fun. Well, but they've got really good players, right? They've, that's no question. Especially when Neofrag has slotted in very nicely at the groups. You know, we talk about how Astralis could use a third player to pop off. Well, OG have had that same problem. And Dexter started this event much quieter than what we've seen at groups previously. We know that OG, obviously, in 2022, used groups to springboard themselves to the Abu Dhabi World Final. Neofrag not able to stop anything inside the B site. So Astralis get through. Again, it's down to the eight seconds, but again, it's nice and easy by the looks of things and they'll convert. So to take that back to OG's group's success, they kind of became the big of 2022. We used to say big are best at blast. And when they... OG were also. Yeah, especially, especially again this last year. Big kind of struggled. So I felt like OG took up that mantra, but then, well then big absolutely obliterated Liquid. Mm -hmm. So they got a little bit of that one back, but they are a showdown attendee. Yeah, it was nice to see big uh, exceed expectations with how they played recently. As disappointing as that was for Liquid and for North American fans out there. They just don't want to see Ryan win, man. <laughs> Who does? Oh, Astralis squeak by in these past couple of situations. We kind of glossed over it, but there are a few kills here that weren't actually that difficult to get. That could have totally changed uh, the course of these first three rounds. Yesterday we saw you know, a mixed bag of maps with Kek Complexity doing better than they should, and Navi not doing as well as they should, and then really just turning it up on map three. But it took some time before you know both teams were playing well at the same time. Numbers here from OG, but nothing too aggressive. Not even a peek down mid. Just really want these T's to walk into them. Looks like it's about to happen. Young Buzz. First round at the event. Gets an ace. Sets the bar very high. A little too high. Has been hard to keep up. We call that... The Honda. The Honda. Or the Zelsus. Scurrying away from the front side of the back brackets. Flames still hanging on to the Galil, but now we get this move from OG at the 45 second mark. They're going to put players inside sight. Neofrag presses out, dies. Obviously, Astralis on high alert, so everything's going to have to be cleared out. 
Dexter finds a nice bit of timing here to help Nexa finish this, and the Deagle's still kicking. Then the Moto push. That was being thrown forward as a way to help Dexter and maybe rob it back, but Astralis, thanks to Device, just going to keep things clean. Yeah, killing the Moto push as well after they got one of two side players down. We could have seen a out different outcome for sure. So, you know, I th I'd say like, I'm a little less hopeful that Glaive and Zipix suddenly become more consistent. That doesn't seem like that's going to happen at this point. Um, I don't even know if in the macro scale or just in this like these next few weeks or something like that. But in this last year, we're we're not seeing a trend upward in it for for either of these players. Buzz is kind of a bet on the future, and he could suddenly play well. I feel like at any time depends how well they've integrated him, how much potential he actually had. If they were right about it. So that's nice. And then you could talk about a core of this roster when it comes to who's just having output. But I fear that even three these days is just not enough to keep up. Oh. Neofrag peeks out. Luckily, Fico can bring it back some. Gets a trade, the nade. Little off. The device will still be living. Six and two at the time being. But Astralis can definitely follow through with this hit here. Zipix just floating out top middle. Flames could find timing and will. This works well for OG. I think that early damage as well versus device. So he's still leaning back on banana. Buzz clears sight. That means bombs coming through. And we're going to get a retake attempt out of OG by the looks of things. However, they're tagged up. They've got two smokes, they've got that Molotov. Utility is good enough to try and take this chance. Yeah, but no flashes? Yeah, makes things weird. At least they didn't lose any control inside construction. So, Fiku moves back. Smoke goes down. That's going to counter out Device. He can just keep eyes on Banana, make sure there's nobody back there coming in. It's all in, in fact, from OG. And on the CT cross, Blame F cuts down two. Turns it back around real quick. Device dies through smoke. Oh. And Degster finds the op shot. Ten seconds stick. That might be right on the second here. I don't know who's cheering, but it seems like OG. Yeah, they've got this. Wow. Okay. Well, they make it happen. They had their two, three smokes, I guess, in the Molotov, and then they just stayed close. They didn't have flashes to scale, so they had to trust in the refrags. And they did do that. I think they were going to be too slow with Nexa still back pit at that point of the retake. But this early find from Flamesy with the mid clear made that so much easier to get out of the site, at least for the majority of them. And they're having fun. Earned, I believe. Nice play by Fiku in order to survive that first coffin fight, stick inside construction. We didn't quite see how Device ended up dying, but Blame F's gonna waste no time. Double entry, double headshot. And there's a third player there if they wanna take this chance. Flames just tucks into the corner. Calls for Nexa to come join him. I said tucks in, but it really looks like he's gonna go fighting. Comes around that corner, gets a dink on Device, but it's Device and Blame F with all the kills that Astralis could possibly ask for. Nexa catches Device off guard. But there's no overcommitment here from Astralis. There's no need to follow through. They could double back, but if they're not cautious, Degster will rack up frags. He is the clutch factor when it comes to OG. And I love the timing here. Takes a second, scopes up onto Valk. Here they come, a second already, but a missed shot out of Degster gives them that little bit of space. And they'll strong arm their way through a fourth setup for Astralis. Yeah, it looks like it. Nexus still coming in, and I think that flamesy damage was probably corroborated. He's like, yo, you need to try this. They're low right now, I promise. And he's right, he did dink one person. I'm not sure if it was one of these two. And Nexa, open lines in, no moto smoke down. He could get peaked at any time. And when this crossfire activates, should be very difficult. We'll see if he can get this first kill. Oh, doesn't even come down, so... Flames kills are nice, and they dealt with Dexter really well. There was obviously a lot of respect for him and his position and his abilities with the op. Uh, but this setup from Blame to make it a 3v5 to kick things off, that's just too tall of an order to handle that early. You can see Astralis just trying not to step on the landmine. That is Dexter. It's just so explosive with the op. Every bullet could connect. 
And honestly, that third one seemed close. Yeah, he put it together in his head. Seemed close. His rotation out, how he's going to fight. Yep. Balcony, get the molly out. Undeniably set himself up to succeed. Zipix could either be gifting an AK over to this pack of OG players or shredding all four of them. Meanwhile, they'll lose Nexa. Zipix actually doesn't activate. OG will start to walk up. They're coming. And Zip. Well, there's two, three, and four. Nice and easy for the Clutch Minister. There it is. Believe in the spray. All right. Well, it's it's uh, they, they've got through to this point. I, I do fear, like, looking at some of these rounds, it looked like OG dropped the ball in a couple of situations, but a, a couple of situations. But I also would believe that Astralis could also get better off of these early opportunities. And that this only gets worse for OG. So, this is the last day. A big match to get qualification would mean a ton to both of these organizations at this point. We're used to seeing them perform an upset here or there, make a big roster move once in a while. But qualification to the spring final would be major representation. Neat for week you don't want to miss. Takes her tag by the nade damage. There's nothing too much behind that. Just gonna leave device posted on the angle. I'm liking the pacing out of Astralis so far. Nice. Buzz. Thwarted by that arch frag but not deterred. Still pressing up against that smoke and he's got a lot of teammates behind him. Of course, no pressure out of OG, just leaning back in sight, essentially. Flames just jiggling it. They've got that pit commitment out of Nexa. Now here come the T's, nice flash, but it's a one and done. So now we're gonna get a four versus two inside sight. B players already starting to kernel up for the save. So let's see what Neofrag and Nexa can offer us here on the hold. 25 seconds. Where's the attack? What are they doing? They just pause because Blame F seems to have found a route through Arch so that maybe he can come in with a library peek, thinking maybe he could catch a rotator's back exposed. Not the case. Nexa continuing to hold them off at this A site. I mean, they just can't unroot these two pit players and Astralis. No killer conviction at all i'm sorry fundamentally speaking that that was kind of nuts like they had an arch wrap they got the arch player they know where the flash com comes from that's very obvious when it comes from uh mini for the arch peak and they give up on the attack when Bla glaive comes around the corner nobody else is wrapping why does blame go ct spawn why does their halls player not start working on pit to help the arch players sorry the halls player help the arch players attack the site i mean that that was a weird breakdown. Like, there were no other threats there. The rotations were very slow. They won all the space up back yeah. on Banana. They had him the farthest away from the A site possible. That was weird to watch. Call it how it is, man. Outplayed themselves. A weird one. Of course, credit where it's due as well. Nice flash out of Nexa to help out Flames, but got to kill himself right after. Safe to say, uninspired round. Now we get a little bit more of a front-facing OG at this A site. Dexter's off. Ready to topple another attempt through brackets. Flash is coming out, and Buzz going down. No follow-up peak from Zipix. We're going to get three players from Astralis starting to lean towards B. And Neo just giving it the jiggle. He's been found out. Waiting for his chance to strike. Goes in. Nice trade from Blame F, but he gets flashed. Device takes the helm. And Fiku just going to be locked into Nubox for the moment. Device took a ton of damage through the spam. Flames hits him with some, but at least Blame and Device slowly work that bomb into the site. They grind out a plant. Now they're going to try to close 3v3. Solid post plant positions. Device sets himself up nicely. It feels like this one's going to walk into him. There it is. With banana control and the CTs now. 
Wonder if we'll even try this. Floating around, but maybe they're actually scared of leaving because device got that kill on banana. Could be poking into the CT, but they're gonna die in this spot, so they want these frags. Mm. And they're gonna get them. Clearing out the majority of Astralis, but device runs for the hills. Astralis takes six, and safe to say already, device performing very well. Yeah. Why doesn't Nexus save there? I don't know. I'm having some weird questions today. Like, yeah. These feel like very unforced mistakes right now, but uh, the the good parts of this round were definitely device. Definitely blame that uh, with the way they approached. And device's patience on the left side of quad, like that's so classically him, to just not even think about switching up, waiting for his opportunity to come, trusting his teammates to do the rest. Look like blame F is as confused as you are. Yeah, because it's like if next if there's someone top banana, they're gonna die to the bomb if you let it explode. But if you die that early, then both you can die and the bomb. All, all you stand to lose is three hundred dollars if you really want to take that fight early. Um, and he could have saved the gun, but well, MP9 for him now. Maybe they're just both feeling the pressure here, uh, considering this is what it comes down to does feel like one of the better chances for either team, one of the fairer final rounds of the gauntlet. You don't yeah. have to play Na'Vi, you don't have to play Heroic. Yeah, I think you should feel like if you don't, you know, do it in the groups, you're not making it through Showdown. I don't think anyone should come into Showdown with the expectation of getting through. Mm. Someone will. It's gonna feel maybe even better than qualifying through groups, but probably for a lot of teams right here, this feels like the chance. So maybe they are feeling the pressure. Last Astralis' strong start continues. And if there's anybody who's definitely found his groove so far, it's really been Device and his rifling counterpart in Blame F. Both players in the double digits. And Device posts up. They know the pistols are coming. Lesser kill reward, but it feels good. Fiku won't be chirping after this one. 7-3 for Astralis. T-side tearing him up. What's your, what are your thoughts on uh, OG, you asked me? As a team or yeah. in, the, in the perspective of individuals? So, I think Dexter is is phenomenal. Yeah. Like the explosiveness that he has, the clutch potential, it's it's just crazy. And I yeah. love the fact that I think he's he just kind of fires up Flames. Like, that side of the table, that end with Dexter and Flames is a really cool duo. Um, my assessment of Flames is that I think in big matches, he does get quiet happened at the spring finals mm -hmm. happened in abu dhabi happened at the major definitely um but in these kinds of environments if you look at the the you know group performances in 2022 yeah his high he's high right level up there stats are great mm -hmm. for the whole year but you're right the, so the big matches you know those are the two players who can take over games and it feels like they can do it in the studio environment more than anything and then if i'm going to shout out anybody else i think neofrag impresses me maybe more so than fiku and nexa mm -hmm. um i see neofrag's role and i see his potential and I just wish there'd be maybe a more consistency between him and Fiku. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like one of them is there, but very rarely are both. Yeah. And it can be map to map, day to day, series to series. So, you know, I root for OG. I put him in my major pickums. All the way to playoffs? Well, they... Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know. Mm -hmm. Zywoo, Vertigo, Clutch. <sighs> Freaking Zywoo, man. Freaking Zywoo, that guy. That guy. That number two. Yep, took a shit on him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I like the OG, you know, Blast Group story. I like that they went to World Final and kind of shut people up. It's young and a lot of potential. But in a round like this, they're kerneled up inside that A site already. They act, it's an active defense, though. They, they're spotting B. Dexter's very close on Arch. They've got everything covered. I think they might be wanting, they might be worried about some kind of false pop, but there is the play. And Dexter stays for more. Oh. Glaive traded out, bomb dropped. Flames right here, but Blame F a little quicker and a little more precise. Just Nexa now alone. 
horrible position, horrible feeling, knowing that you're being wrapped down. And then they've slowed it down just so they can come in at that perfect moment. And he's trying to keep his eyes on both ends of this site. Zipix gonna take a ton of damage, but stays up, stays fighting. And I feel like we've already just seen Astralis. Anytime they're getting in the site, I love that device kind of floats a little bit further behind them, right? Mm -hmm. He's sticking on Banana, catching that flank. In this case, same thing, but instead of Banana, it's just on lane, catches the mid flank. It's, yes. It's just, he is your anchor, and Blame F is your entry. Mm -hmm. And that is just, I mean, that is, that is two incredible players on each end of the spectrum. And so it's no shock to me that with both of them at 12 kills, Astralis, 8T rounds. Yeah, they, they are clearly a great combo right now. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a shame that uh, config didn't work out because you look at this roster right now and you think an aggressive rifler on this team between D device and blame F and someone who has more consistency. Wow. To the stars, as they say. Plus they're all jacked. Yeah. Yeah. Very Danish. And then there's Zip who like, it's probably really good at like the long ski jump. A genius, a genius, yeah. Clay will do like one, two days of cycling. <laughs> On Thursday, we play handball. OG talking things over. Curious that we end up seeing them go for the Vertigo pick, but I do like that, you know, Zipix kind of highlights the fact that uh, ever since the changes on Ancient, I haven't seen, I think, the best of OG's Ancient play. Yeah, they kind of, I think they criticized someone else right after they won a match about how, like, they aren't used to it yet. Mm -hmm. But they themselves, I think, they're coming off of two losses on the map. Yep. So, so it's clearly, it's, you know, there's a rumbling going on there because it did feel like OG had that locked up against everybody. Yeah. But we'll see if we get there. Yeah, maybe. Vertigo instead. Yeah, the Strahls don't have anything on Vertigo at the moment. They just have, like, a previous history of being able to play the map. You know, there's a chance that they could take it for that reason. No, you weren't there on the first day, but they played Vitality on it, I believe. Let me double check. No, no, I mean, they don't have any wins. Oh, wins, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. 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 Tonight, that changes. Maybe. Right now, on an individual level, Astralis looking like they could win on seven maps. Smoke's gonna fade, and we're gonna get a duel here. Glaive and Blame versus Neofrag and Fiku. And Neofrag, clean as ever. We were talking about him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's been a good event for him. You know, normally he slots in his third, but there was a point a couple days ago, he's the second highest rated player on OG. Now, they didn't see the bomb, I don't think. I don't think they have to worry about it too much anymore. Don't lean back. There's no smoke, of course, for Astralis. So you can just save that off if you wanted to. Walk away. Money's not amazing for the Danes. Cut your losses. No? <laughs> Maybe not? Yeah, it's definitely a thought. 15 <laughs> seconds mean, is 5v2. I think they, you know, well. We'll see what limitations are in the next one. Don't try. You never find out if you could, I guess. And oh, nearly an ace for Neofrag. Extra damage right there. Very close to it. Really recovering that score line. Beautiful hold at the top of Banana. That's where it truly ended, even if they didn't save. Neofrag. Nice and clean. Just feels like CT's a little more alert. Obviously, they're the ones taking the, the forward push. So. Get at it. Charles' first time out. Gonna have to crunch the numbers here see what kind of buy they can come through with yeah castle, does castle, have 7.2 castle a new coach of astralis is a it was a teacher at an esports uh, high school mm. at in um i think the west part of denmark jutland something like that sure that other place where all the yenses are and uh and then got the call up which is a pretty sweet opportunity I hadn't heard of him until, basically until he got signed. Now here he is. He 
Said he was willing to, well, he came in, wanted to change a bunch of things, particularly with Blame Meth, just to get him to be a bit more aggressive, basically. Okay. He said he's this good, why isn't he doing more? And uh, he said Blame Meth was very receptive to the idea. Thanks, sir. Just got smoked by the pistol jumping into underground. Again, weird round, just because they don't buy out. Those two rifles could have net them something. Instead, Flames just makes mincemeat of that burst through smoke. And Fiku's going to be the closer. Easy double kill. It's queued up. His eight and ninth. These rounds have been very quiet. And then, okay, lots of action. Look at this haircut from Flames. Beautiful. Third frag from him. Two rounds to round out the half. Buy comes in. No off here, of course, with the T side. We did kind of preface this map by saying, you know, there needs to be an Astralis third. Who's it going to be? It's Zipix and Glaive trying to keep up. Zip not too far back. Just nice to see. He is, you know, we talk about like not seeing the trend moving upwards. Yeah. Did have a good land. And it's not a tier one land, really, but the Elisa Espo Masters. Zip finally getting something going there and then going on record as well at the event is saying like, yeah, I'm getting some of my old rolls back. It paid off for that moment. You know, it gives you a, a reason, a bit of hope that uh, the Zipix return could still be the possibility. But alas, Buzz is dead in this one. Missed shot as Dexter's blinded and forced back. And now it's going to be Arch under question, but we do get that CT moving back through CT spawn. Glaive piecing this together, but now Dexter's slipped forward, and if you walk into that op, you tend to die. Thirty-five seconds. We've got the Coffins player. And Dexter slipping into the corner, catches Glaive off. Fiku, again, finds the nice timing off the top of Coffin. Neofrag just behind Slim Pillar, and it's perfect. Allows for Blame to cross over, then he picks up his kill. Excellent engagements from OG. Feels like they caught three, four players off guard this round. Yeah, they're ready for the walkups, and uh, they put themselves in great crossfires to deal with them, so... Well, that's uh, 14th wrapped up. No deaths here for OG. They only have five rounds so far in this half. Some of them have been solid. I think they have a good reel in the situation. They gave up a couple of those early rounds, and I actually think that uh, OG may have been ahead in this half, if not for that. Um, and maybe by a significant margin if there were ecos to follow. So, well, I think they should feel okay. And again, best of three here. There might be nerves. There might be pressure for both these teams to set some nice up for the organization. So if it takes them some time to get into the match, I'm not surprised. But you'd rather be the first team to wake up than the second. Feels like we haven't had any overemphasized aggression out of OG's banana setups. I feel like the riskiest business they got into was that Neofrag triple kill. And even then, it's at the top of Banana. Remember, Dykes are playing short. In the pocket, in the Stralis, in the apartments. They could just walk that through apps, get ready to pop out with pistols, right? Remember the limitations that Astralis are working with. I feel like the longer this round goes on, the more control OG is taking, and the less util that Astralis have to stop it. Glaive. I was going to say that looks bad, but not as bad as Zipix's death. Just kind of gets caught in the doorway, and OG able to lay down the defense pretty easily so far. Arch wraps a possibility, but nobody actually going for it. So Astralis, final attempt, and it just feels like this one's missing a little gusto. They had that problem in a previous A hit when Arch was a part of the equation. Blame F, dead, buzz, pop, OG. They bring this back four straight to get that seven round CT side. Boost and kicker up. Oh, there's that the scout. scout. Oh!
<laughs> See, with the no. free aim to the top of the half ball. No. Ball. Open B site. He just sight. wins the round. He just wins the round like that. He won the whole round. That is unreal. How does he do things like that? That's crazy. The boy is special. Outsiders did nothing wrong. They had two good spots and good guns. Oh, that is disgusting. And Hooksy's losing his mind. Yeah. Hands off the keyboard. You're so sick, Monty. You're, so, you're so sick. <laughs> That's what he always says. Ilya. Ilya, you're nuts. You're so good, bro. <laughs> and honestly... Yeah, really. He just <laughs> won... That's the cool part about Counter-Strike. I mean, he just won the round by himself. He did. Watch this. Oh, man. Now, James kind of posted and then... Wow. Oh! It's insane. <laughs> I can't get over it. Show me how. <laughs> Liquid had teed up nicely. The flames and Dexter. And this bomb down is scary. Flames is taking real estate, but ends up getting punished. Liquid hold. And they win these fights. Just Dexter left to get past, but he's an iron wall at the back of the site. Moving around. Kill number three. Oh! some noise for him that is incredible look how hyped up he is i don't even think he believes it look at the way he isolates these fights oh liquid that one hurts and that's all your money as well unreal dexter just lets loose he wants an angle and a timing and has at least gotten the first. Molly ahead of him, sees the gun, executes twist first and foremost, tries to wrap it back around the hut, but the heaven support, that could be the bigger difference maker. Rock's no dead. Hunter continues to thrive until Brokey puts him down. And it's time for the ice cold JKS to try and come through. This isn't ramp, this isn't his wheelhouse, but it's still a chance to shine. And Brokey doesn't know where he's at. A peek out with the A4, sees him up in heaven, no and he way. nails no it! Way. He nails it! So that half ends split down the middle. Felt like Astralis were coming out swinging, or rather, maybe OG didn't have arms. By the time we got to the end of it, they yeah. string four together. So if this is the resurgence of OG right before a T side, and they're going to be a little more invigorated, maybe have a bit more pep in their step than the likes of Astralis, then I think we'd all welcome it. Dexter, double off the Glock. CT's just going to get complete. Completely smashed. Ooh. Going for that mid play, the alt mid players come in and it just kind of cuts them straight down the middle. Yeah, they get mauled. They get into, it's all of the Astralis players getting into a really good spot, but Dexter grabbing two, of course. Probably oh, their worst point. nightmare in that position. The one guy you don't want being first contact and the vice is already shoved out of the round. So, oh gee, this will be five rounds in a row into tying up the game. And that first half, I gotta be frank, I wanna forget about it. I think it was a really bad showing from Astralis now that we're past it. And I think OG, oh, the fact that they were still losing throughout that half, only spoke to how off game, off their game they are right now. And again, more maps left in the series. So hoping that both of these teams, I think, raise the level at this right. point. And uh, I think you just mentioned, like, feels like OG would be the first to do it. I yep. mean, you expect much higher consistency in, on every front from them. I just expect them to kind of play it like a pack here from on this T side. You know? Keep close, trade frag, hit the, the if there's gonna be if there's gonna be life injected into this game, I think it's coming from OG. Yeah, that makes sense. And you're already talking about the fact the style of play when it comes to the, their calling. We're seeing these Mac tens, they will group a lot. There's a lot of four ones with OG right now. There's a lot of walk-up explodes. And Nexus that when he tries to call a very complex default with this roster right now, they're not mature enough to organize and do things slowly. And they can lose rounds they would have won if they kept it simple. So he said his style until the communication starts to improve is to keep things as simple as possible. And they can really highlight their individual. So he might be doing the best thing to, you know, make do with what he has at the moment. And they have looked good and he have sometimes. 
doing just that. Numbers are here. Ready to go, but being muzzled for the moment. Feels like Nexa's not letting them off the leash just yet. All you gotta do is get through these pistols. Device tuck back sight, one in each side of pit, little moto lean. Now there's potential with the deagles, but here comes the hit, and Flames clears it out. Bomb does go down. Device still yet to reveal himself. This could end up catching one, maybe two players off guard. But they're very cautious with the approach, and Flames is just racking up the money now. Mm -hmm. Every single player so far on this site dead to his MAC-10, and Astralis, they offer nothing in terms of the hold. Yeah, he's done well. And so the thing is with OG, you might know coming into a match, they're going to bring this style of play on T-side at this point. If you don't know that, you don't watch any games. Um, so, But the thing is, preparing for it, it's still kind of tricky because, like, if you're not really active on your map control, they might be able to get to the choke point they want and quickly move into a full play. If you're clearing out the other side of the map, it might be too late sometimes. So it's it's like a really, it's a good style. It's a kind of, kind of Counter-Strike I actually really enjoy is the contact explodes and the single flash execs. Because you throw too much utility, you get telegraphed. Sometimes, again, you're just making it more difficult for yourself. They're throwing mollies in response. They're overstacking based on information. You run into smokes maybe a little bit more often. So keeping it simple is not necessarily bad by any means. And we'll see if that can continue to kind of reap rewards here for OG, showing us already that this is what they want to do. Oof. That was nice. Clean. Always on point. Flames, good movement. What's great the movement. assessment? Yeah, that's great movement. Oh, my God. That high five almost turned into a closed fist. Notice how Casper's always there to oof, break the first punch. Dexter, gonna keep swinging. Both arms. Down go the pistols. And this one's gonna be nice and easy from OG. A site already crumbling. I'm telling you folks, this one could get away from them. They used to have those, what are they called? It's like the punching bag, but it's on a thing. It's like an arcade machine. The punching bag arcade machine. Yes. We'll call it. Got, yep. But, you mean like uh, the strength tester? Yeah, the strength tester. Yeah, okay. Exactly. But the yeah. last time we had that at a CS event, someone broke, dislocated their shoulder. Yeah, and I remember. Because you were kind of drunk too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Dream hack, the, when the dream hack happened in Yongspeng. Yeah. After party, you used to always have those. Okay. Last thing you need is gamers being given something to hit hard. Yes. Yeah. One time I saw Paula, Paula do a backwards roundhouse kick. Oh. And that was impressive. That was pretty cool, right? I also made that up, but... Oh, okay. You know, for a second, y'all thought about it. I did. I could see it. He does MMA. I bet he could if he wanted to. Yeah. Pistols peeking down mid. What you gonna do? Nothing in the face of Dexter. Guns in from Astralis. Listen, we had off impact out of device at the start of this first half. We had Blame F with his rifle and multiple kills as well. I feel like our eyes always fall on one of those two players. Right now it's Buzz who is the forward facing member of Astralis and also the one at the bottom of the board. Four kills only and almost dead already. Tries to pre-fire what he anticipated to be that wraparound. Nexa gets the better of him but at least Device can respond. So now they know where this op is at, but they've got it down to half health. They've got two players already in through Arch, and Zip turned away. Oh, Jesus. He... Oh, no. But the push that's going on on short... Oh, and Device uh, dies. Yeah, I thought maybe he could bring it back. If there was going to be any savior in this moment, it could have been Device pressing out onto short side, but now Flames is just hitting headshots, and OG have unraveled this perfectly okay here's the other benefit to OG's game is if they do something simple for some kind of walk-up explode when it, it turns into a situation like this where they all have to be kind of five heads thinking individually they have individual decision, decision making to get them out of good spots but it seems like when they're in the, the defensive part of the round that's when they're the least confident when they get into these post plant situations they can highlight the individual level that's when next I feel like can trust everybody the most and uh, there's a spot where they just handle every little bit of counter aggression from the CTs beautifully so wow things got awkward there on the site but well, it's got pretty outplayed on that fallback 
and I think the vice's move seemed like a good one. But it looked like I don't know what Flamesy shot looked like, but it's on the money today. Oof, oof. Okay. Save allowed. It's a nice streak here for OG. Well, Flames just picks a really great angle. Solid awareness in that position. And yeah, Buzz not having a great game. Not having a great groups overall. Of course, not the first guy we want to look at, but... But again, if, if you're... They want to win, it's going to be important, yeah. If everyone's... your seasoned veterans aren't bringing in any kind of impact all too often, then... Yeah, you're going to get scapegoated. <laughs> you're supposed to bank on the next gen. Yeah. Turns out if you get an ace on your first land round... It's a curse. You're doomed. You're doomed. Counter-Strike voodoo going on. Blame F, of course, positioned inside of the pit, so everything saved in that last round on the line towards A. Device has to lean away from this. When the smoke fades, arch control very easily going to be taken by OG. Straw's kind of playing this one like a default, but they don't have guns, so... And I expect some kind of push to come out here. Sending Buzz in. Putting a lot of pressure on the kid. Had to play inside a boiler room last round. Flames said, go check that out for me. Yeah. I need info as well. well. They're getting closer, but time is also running down. Device can come through with the library kill. That could have helped out Flame F. Who will get one. Still alive and kicking, but from above, Fiku strikes Two down. Mm. Glaive trying to rush in, trying to cause that carnage, chaos, some kind of chance to claw things back. Zipix extends his arms, grabs that AK, just wants to leave here. It's Astralis letting another round slip from the four at the end of the first half to now five at the start of this one. We're talking nine rounds straight out of OG. Yeah, the spots on the map look fine, but for the guns, they really didn't have anything that could kind of change the tides of the situation before a full exec came in. They're just relying on OG to make a real mistake there. So, you know, that's where you'd like to see forward aggressive mid setups or holes plays without that late re-aggression where Buzz just kind of walks in. Yeah. You know, maybe with a flash in that position, they have I'd, something going for them. I mean, Blame F had util. He saved utility from the last round, and I'm pretty sure it included a flash. Yeah, and so it comes down to did Buzz just walk in or did Blame say go check it out or did he not just... Just didn't want to flash. We could... You know how much this thing costs, man? I can't just be throwing money away. I might need this. <laughs> I might need this, yeah. It's hard to say because we don't have the comms. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's a mistake. Oh. One person or another. My flinch. Yeah, normally you aren't throwing that flash for the halls from pit. You're playing it on the side of graveyard that makes more sense we also don't know if it was even asked for not gonna happen for blame f this time that initial 3b setup tons of utility burning popping exploding over towards this banana side and unconvinced our og they're gonna come sniff things out he could be walking into device. Op has looked solid when given a chance to shine. But what we've seen so far from this T side is really just buzz tested on A first and foremost. So device, let's see if he's got it in him. High trade potential with all of OG right on this corner. High trade potential to Astralis as well because Blame F is up on those orange boxes. So device, let's see how big it gets. First one's clean. Neofrag, quick trade, Blame falls off oranges, CT player goes for the spam, and Neofrag will get caught out by Blame F, but it's one from Device, it's one from Blame, and it's nothing yet from Zipix. A bomb plant looking safe. Flames gets off of that, and now you've got Dexter locked into Nubox, and when Dexter can lock in to the back of a bomb site with his trusty op, his opponents have problems. 
So much of a problem, in fact, that I think you contemplate this save. Or, or. Buzz <laughs> offers up that. Somehow, they catch that headshot. That could be all they need. But we've also got this double up from OG on Coffins. Buzz sliding out. Not a lot of kills, but these ones could be impactful. He still has the time, but Flames bests him, and OG, no sign of stopping. Pico is one bullet away from death right there, so that could have actually been a 1v2. Possibly one from Buzz to stop the streak from OG. But instead, it's just OG with another round. So in that setup, we had 3B and the Vice. I think he waited past the point where he felt comfortable, but maybe... It, you know, it seems like a heat map moment or a demo moment where he knows they aren't flashing close or in the default, whatever. And what it, what, were, what was I talking about earlier with OG? They're walking up, they're not giving you any tells, and then they're exploding. So it looked like he was trying to punish that play. If there was a rifle behind him in CT holding that cross to kill the second guy, there actually is a chance he gets a kill, they get a kill, and they both stay alive. But in the spot, is the second player had a full chance to swing, take him down, and then Sipix was disconnected from the fight, and then they just went on to 1v1v1. So, OG did everything right. Astralis had a read, but they didn't have a de they didn't have a decent enough setup. Wax on, wax off. A round that could come back to haunt Astralis. Nice! Again. Nice! <laughs> that was pit modulated, right? Or Ooh, is blame? No. Here, here we go. Something action-packed, down mid. Cleared out by Flames. 18th kill. Neofrag holding his own towards Banana. And now that they've lost that M4 on Blame F, you've got an auto shoddy and a scout. A couple Desert Eagles. For the bottom fraggers of Astralis. But the noob tube has been put in a position to thrive. Oh, it's a decent risk here from Astralis and a nice lock off on the round 4v4 and time goes too far again. I think that uh, the thing about OG that's hard to read is just like sometimes it'll explode before taking two parts of map control. But at the same time, if you gamble correctly, well, they're not going to test your site before they hit it. They're going to full commit. And right now that means I could potentially run into three. Making the most of the time they still have to spare. They get out middle, and while Arch is still smoked off, looking to round short. Glaive's gotta deliver, or maybe it's gonna fall onto Buzz. Nice first dig from the young gun. Still has a bit of a gap over that smoke. Buzz gets himself a second and a third, and his pistols have prowess. But we've got Nexa in a clutch. 58 health, scout, and an XM 1014. Library player taking damage. This is a great distraction as the shotgun slides up, and that's all they need to do. They find a round, finally putting an end. 10 straight out of OG, and Astralis, it's Blame F to get aggressive, and Buzz to get multiple kills. Yeah, late into the game, but he gets the 2K that wins the round, basically, so that's nice. They extinguish the flame, and we'll relive those shots right here. First one's real tough. This one's nice. Actually, the three kills in total. Can't dislodge him from the pit. OG came on too slow. And you can see by their trepidation that they thought maybe we're going to the wrong site here. But they didn't get Zipex off top banana. Didn't alarm the rotations at all. Again, gift and a curse with the way they play. Oh, nice nade. Puts it down the middle. Catches Nexa and Neofrag. There we go. Something a little rowdy out of Astralis. Nade, spam, smokes deep. Not just taking this beating lying down. Of course, they're not out of the depth just yet. This beating could resume on a moment's notice, and it's with only a moment that all of a sudden, oh gee, they're trying to scale this one right into this A site. Little Pit player still hangs on. Okay. Glaive's chance to shine, and then Buzz comes up with a kill as well. So we've got problems for OG. This A site survives the test twice. Hey, well done from Glaive right there. Mechanically speaking, that was beautiful. The way that he sectioned off that first fight, committed to the second one, 
And third, the spray was great. Lots of teammates there to help him out. Money at a maximum now for Astralis. They have everything they need. Go. We're also in a dignified territory here at 10 rounds. Yep. Again, because of that 8 3 start, I'm not going to forget about what OG just did for them or to them for themselves. And again, you know, there's a little more life on this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, more activity. That's insane. Is that another way to spam the second balcony? I felt so bad for Shush earlier today. The lineup. Crimbo. That's supposed to be the sweatiest spot on the map. You can't even play there now safely. The bar is just getting too high. It is. And clearly it's raising here for both Astralis and, and OG, which is nice. Uh, at the moment, OG burning a lot of time on the clock with take, taking nothing right now. They don't have brackets, they, they lost banana, and the late smoke comes down because they weren't making any noise, so they might actually have to commit to A. Ooh, device missed shot because of the flash. Whoa, Flamesy is actually... Oh my god, they have a chance to win this now because Flamesy is going towards the B site, but oh. they can't trade Zamp. Nice second headshot. Transition straight to Fiku. Flames still coming in. Blames trying to hold him back. Glade comes down middle with some impact. And Blame F catches that flank. Astralis pushed into a corner was Zipix. Yes. But he delivered. Shout out to him. I mean, even if Flames dies because he's running all the way through CT spawn and they can call that timing. If Zipix dies as well, Blame has to solve that site by himself. So this is so well done just from the perspective of him playing this corner by himself. And that late smoke made him come through it. So just that, it's that lull of silence that OG, they're trying to prey on that, right? They're trying to make that their advantage. But if you do that and you get called out by one piece of utility, even though you did nothing to elicit it in terms of audibles or spams, then you could just lose because of that. So Astralis kind of smartly worked on Banana, fought down from the top of half wall for that whole time, kept the smoke on the belt. And then as soon as that timer hit, no noise on bracket. They shoved them out. I also like that little added bonus of Glaive going down middle. You know, yeah, the moment Zipix kind of stuffs them, you know the trade's going to be concentrated in that direction. So hit them while they're not looking. Keep the pressure up. Excellent crunch from Astralis. Just when we thought this game was slipping away from them, and it has in terms of the lead. Feels like they're reinvigorating themselves and getting back to it. Five versus four yet again for them. The device is low. It's a party in the underpass. <laughs> the pants party and OG are invited. Cave dwellers. I haven't seen that lineup before. <laughs> yeah, it's a Nate alt. <laughs> There's a CT there would have literally died, so. Deep control again. Don't let that distract you, though. Flames is making some great moves this game. Again, dead silent, but look, I mean, Astralis, they know what's going on, Banana. So, they, they think that OG might try something tricky, and now they're actually playing back in the site. Op still here on the A site. Three up. Ooh, great pick off. Tries to test the waters, drowns in them. Device, not gonna miss these shots. This A site's been closed ever since Buzz put up that Deagle triple. Yeah, it has. That's true. They, it's, they, they use that as leverage. Glaive had a multi-kill right after. Now this time it's device inside of pit. Literally the calling started getting better as well. I mean, they just, again, activity over towards B. And uh, OG suddenly looked like a team that are just foggy as hell. They're like, they're not dealing with this banana problem. I mean, it can be as simple as just a, a good flash early. 
you know, trying to fight early as well. They send someone up banana to take out blame into a three player setup. And that was it. Okay. We do have to watch it again. The verticality of Inferno, that's something we don't talk about enough. <laughs> what you looking at? Single AK Dexter. It's a weird game to get a read for. Streak of round wins just shifting back and forth. Ooh. That nade actually just catches the step. Ends up doing more damage because of it, I think. Gaben's on OG side. At least here in round 26. Expected from a Dota fan. <laughs> Device. Ready, but smoked off. No overcommitment. They just get Dexter out from Boiler. Remember, single AK here, so let him cook. If he cooks, the rest of OG doing the dishes. Dexter, it's one. Flames gonna use that moment to try and pounce out from Balk. Device blind. That opens up Flames to get an additional kill. They have a moto smoke too. And they've grabbed a second rifle. So now Flames and Neofrag. That's all Dexter had to do. Cause enough of a ruckus for everybody else to just follow through. Pack play out of OG. Transitions into the post plant. Neofrag leans back with that M4 Flames just stuck in the back of this bomb site. All he's going to try to do is keep them off that defuse. And Zipix flashes and hauls. He's ready to creep out from balcony. Fumbling nades here. Neofrag knows he's coming now. Second CT in from short. Where is it? Taking a bit too much time. When is it, if even? Oh, okay. They're just not even going to try it. Wow, this is a 2v2 and. This is versus Tech Nines to start things out. They got players low, but they don't feel comfortable going for this at all. Really took their time. I mean, at least for them, the OG players are the ones who die, but this is for 14. Some of the decisions this game have been very strange, but... Well, um, you know, they did win this site off this great flash and took out the vice, and that was the guy who was maybe going to save the round. He got the first kill and still had a chance to reposition for a second opportunity with the op. But again, that bounce was perfect. Did feel like OG were gonna win this map for the majority of it. But blame F, this is what has worked. Early fights from Astralis down through middle. He can just leave B. Exiting B, don't shoot. They're clearing him from alt, and Blame just sticks around. Saw the shadow, but isn't able to get another, and decided not to go up Banana when he had the chance to evacuate. Hell, he could have even been tucked in by logs. Uh -oh. He could be leaning on this fight from Glaive, but instead, it's now two kills to OG, and Zipix, only one. Stopping Flames is a big deal, but they're not going to be able to prevent this bomb from going down. So this is critical territory. Round 26 and 27, 2v2 post plants. And OG will get 15 if they can just lock it in. Degster on new box and Nexa on coffins. Banana Peak already out from device, trying to join alongside Buzz, who's already at the brink of that CT cross. They've got a kit on device, but they just lost Buzz. Welcome back, King. Can you clutch? Smoke still on the play, doesn't know about Nexa, but he can definitely cause confusion. And Nexa sliding out a second and a half, and he's just too exposed. Oh, the smoke goes too far. If Nexa thought that farther smoke implied the bomb was a little deeper and doesn't go all the way around the coffins, then maybe there's a chance. But here's the moment. Blame F sticking out after he got the kill, but what is this re-aggression? Blade running out to Banana with no utility and a player behind him, and then he tries to do the exact same thing. It's like they, they really believed there was no chance that we're going to be on Banana, but I'm not sure they had they really had the information to make that call as, as confidently as they did. Sometimes you got to trust yourself, but, you know, here's a situation where it fails, and now OG have 15, and also at least, okay, at least Astralis have lots of money, so they can buy an op again, full nades. We even see an AUG here and play from Blame F.
three lines of resistance on banana but all of them individual plays not a single piece of utility in each of those fights and each of the times they were wrong about how many people were coming you know not learning from the last person hardest to blame <laughs> blame zipix in that situation since you know now it's suddenly they don't even have a material advantage he has to try to get something he has to take some some kind of risk but before that I, i'm not sure Blame. Blame trying to go for more than just that first one. Had shadow advantage on Fiku, and Fiku still picks up the kill. And this is Fiku now 18 kills up. Trying to be right there alongside Dexter and Flames. Critical frag to get back. Feels like that's exactly what drew Zipix, or Glaive rather, into that top peak. So, three attempts to close out on Inferno. That recovery at the end of the CT side, worth its weight in gold to the OG camp. Device posted on short. He's been good for these, but Flames has also entried off Balk on his own. And this time, he's got support behind Ooh. him, but a pistol? Device, the P250 finds Neofrag. And if Nexa thinks he's able to just press alongside this, predicted, but still pop double out of Nexa. Glaive. Caught on the side of it, and then oh. they see more skin. They see him run too. But Mo, they don't have bomb. Yeah, but they have 40 seconds, and they're the CTs are going to play on the bomb. Dexter's gonna use this information. He's not worried about someone running into CT spawn or a rotator in this spot. So we'll see. Bombs good on the position hay bales. for Zipix. Oh, can't finish the kill! Three frags out of Nexa. That's his 20th on the map at this distance. Blame F has to come in big. As he tends to. But now, all of a sudden, Utility relegates him to the corner. They don't have time to leave. He has to fight to the very end, and they want a double peek. Blame nails the first one and the headshot. Oh. When you need him, he's here. Damn, okay. And Astralis, keep it going. Okay, you can trust him in the clutch, and he does that on the last bullet on the approach. Dexter definitely made that as scary as possible, but they just threw a lot of Utility. They didn't know where it was going to land. It didn't move Blame F in that position. It got real hairy here. And somehow Nexa got through this smoke and got two frags and made the situation winnable. It shouldn't have been. Man, when after the hold from device on lane, the one kill, the P250 versus Halt, and then Glaive coming in after that, it was... Should have been written in stone. When that Molotov's right in front of him and he just feels so small in that moment, so stuck in the corner. Tooth and nail. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> Holy hell. Of course, no Kevlar behind this, except for Degster. Damn, this is Straw spent every dollar they have, and they have three MP9s, but, you know, these will be better even versus the buy on the other side. That may be rifles. Already had a highlight moment from Zipix in this corner. Straw is seemingly content to lean into the bottom of Banana. He's back up. Should be easy pickings. Sure enough, Zipix also here. And it is a flurry of frags out of Astralis to make this a 30-round game. Yes, we'll see what happens up round 30. Things have gotten very interesting at this point. Anybody can win at any given moment. Player advantages doesn't seem to matter. The pressure is mounting. But how is the money here for OG? It's decent. Dagster won't have the ability to get an op. They might not need that. Actually, Astralis don't have one either. Flame top on the board. Device right behind him. They have a couple of good rounds so far in this half. Well, definitely errors as well, though, from him. What's the call next, huh? Who's going to pop off? The only thing we don't want to see is banana control taken. 40 second mark. No pressure there. OG have one site to take, and it's obvious. Two or three of those rounds so far this half. But outside of that, some good calls. Oh, not now. Not like this. And watch OG pounce on top of it. The banana pressure, it's There's not no fast enough. Here. There's no one on Arch. It's just Buzz. 
He's gonna try to lean forward onto short, but there's a gap, and Dexter with that's gonna punish. And then the arch player also cut off. It's a kill through smoke. Dexter into device. One of the two successful pieces for Astralis. It finally feels like they're gonna fight to OT, and this is how it crumbles. This is how OG are going to take away map one, seemingly. Blame F. Saved them from inside that little pit just a couple of rounds ago. And now it's him and Zipix to try and fight this one in from Moto. A 2v5 almost evened out. But now Zipix's health is lower than anybody else on OG. He still gets another kill. It's Nexa in the back sight. Just again, as close as can be. Round 30, 2v5 turn 2v1. And OG hit them in the gut. It's not their map pick, so they they won it. No matter how it ended in that position, they're happy to get through it. They've got Vertigo up next and a win over Astralis to kick off the end of the day. Oh, the Danes seemingly in it. Ready to take this, ready to extend this series, ready to avoid that showdown, but now Vertigo stands in their way. Take it away, James. Well, Astralis certainly got off to a great start, but we come into that second half. You guys are flying, but it's still right down to the wire, right to the distance of it all. Felt comfortable with that in the end, though? You, you happy enough considering it's their pick? I think they're good on the map. Like, obviously, Astralis' city sites are not to be, be joked around by. They're very good, and we kind of got into a deadlock. Tried to play a little bit fast, and it backfired. And then, fortunately, we had a couple of individual rounds that flipped it for us. Definitely so. Now we're going into Vertigo, though. And the last time you guys played it was back at the full finals. They've had a, a couple of reps on it here. How are you feeling over your Vertigo, and especially because we haven't seen what changes you might have made on it with the roll swaps? Uh, Vertigo has also always been like in the top of our map pool. <laughs> a lot of times, the only times we've got to play it has been against the best teams in the world on it. So this time, I think it's, it's going to be a good test for us. Astralis have been looking, I would say, decent. Sharp on some halves, others not so good. So it's a good test for us also to go and widen our map pool a little bit. And either way, right, you win or lose this one, you've still got Angel coming in. So no concerns at all. This should be the OG all the way to Spring Finals? <laughs> I hope so. But knowing these guys, if they leave Ancient in for the third one, it's going to be full anti sweat. But, uh, we're ready for that, so let's see. Hopefully we close it on Vertigo. If not, we are going to have some tricks up our sleeve. I like it, Rucker. Thank you very much, man. Good luck. When you guys were starting out as an Warper, was there certain players you looked up to? Was there a player you thought, ah, oh, I like how he plays it? I watched a lot of demos of Kenyas and Device. Oh. And man, Oscar as well, back in the days, he was yeah. unstoppable. I watched um, like some fallen POVs. Full uh, yes. device, yeah, like those hoppers. I mean, even called Zero sometimes. <laughs> he's second yeah. opera, but he's, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's true. I was watching Cold Zero uh, mm -hmm. days before. It was uh, one of the best examples for me was on Cash. Okay. Um, if you're going to talk about like main opers, it was a device most of the times and uh, Sasha and uh, Fallen uh, back in the days. Uh, because he even gives some guides for Brazilian fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had some people uh, in my friend list that was um, good at, uh, at translating. Ah, so nice. they was giving me these videos and I was watching uh, Mirage tips from Fallen. I even uh, told it to him when we meet first time in real life. Like, like Kozira, he made this highlight right on Karl Mirage. Yeah. Like, people in the future, like, he's not main op, right? He's rifle. He's anchor, maybe. Even. Mm -hmm. no, I don't remember. But people will think he's an op, right? Because of this highlight. It's crazy. <laughs> Ones that stay in your mind for sure. And when you're you're doing that, right, you're looking at these, how do you translate what they do and, and something you can put into your game? Do you, does it need to be a player that plays same position or is it just the fact they use the orb? Like for example, like if I play against a team, I try to watch like like before the game starts, try to watch like some POV uh, of Oper who I guess who I'm playing, right? But for example, like on Mirage. Like when I, when we played against Navi, I remember, like I tried to watch like simple POV, but it's hard to prepare for him because it's like, like, you know, like it's an opera who's always moving and you cannot like predict where he will stay. You know? And you know, sometimes uh, like Monazi can watch my demo and I understand that he saw my, <laughs> he saw my last mirages. So I need to change something. Yeah. Oh, so your mind gave it each other. No, of course. Yeah. It's, it's like this uh, be between teams as well.
Oh. I'm like I'm watching the Paul Dimas as well, but I'm I like to see more like small details when he's trying to pick somehow or he has some. Finally, a good start for Australis, but OG rebound to steal this one away. 16 to 14 is the final finishing score. It could not have been any closer than that. And Maniac, it sounds cliche, but it all comes down to round number 30. It's like a mix of emotion. You're looking at Nexus' face towards the very end. We're gonna go through the madness one more time for, uh, with everybody at home. Starts with this entry kill, a little bit unfortunate onto the vice burst, makes a big mistake with the smoke. And this should be the end of any hope. 5v2, Blaber, as disciplined as always, finds Fiki on the line, but it should still be pretty much under control. And here, this is where we see how OG has a tendency to crumble under pressure because suddenly throughout this clutch, you start to feel like they have more nerves, they have more pressure than Astralis. Finally, Nexa delivers them, but honestly, this should not have been that complicated. They shouldn't have been that stressful. That should have been a straight up round. Over, Came done and over. Tantalizing close too, to Damn. that 2v5 actually being pulled off. Thank God for Nexa sitting backside and getting the double kill. Overall though, OG coming back into the game after a very rough start. Beautiful display by them. Astralis, I mean, again, they're finally <laughs> showing us on the T side that they can play Counter-Strike. Happy to see it. We, we get to see a team finally actually having a, a good outlook on the T side. There was a good pacing, a good spacing. Device was being put in all sorts of position where you just kill left, right and center. And then it's the CT side failing for them. It feels like this last round we've just seen from OG, it encompasses this whole game for them. Yeah. It feels like this whole game was a 5v2 that struggled to be closed. It was a 13 to 8 lead, thought they had everything they needed. And then suddenly Astralis started creeping in again. Yeah, certainly an emotional roller coaster that for all them rather from beginning to end. But we spoke about the good T side look finally from Astralis. So let's break down one of the moments from the Danes with Danny. Yeah, it's round 11 that I want to talk about. And Astralis has been taking a slow, measured approach that we've been seeing all tournament. It's another example I have right here. So what we're going to see initially, 4v5 situation, Glaive, he's going to find one kill. He gets traded by Flames and Blame F, he's going to get that kill. It's going to make it a three on three situation. Now in this three on three situation, notice here that Astralis, they're not really that together. They're all quite far apart from each other, which means they can't exactly just push into the side and try to overwhelm it. So what they do instead is they actually slow it down. What you'll see here is that when they slow it down, we see that Zipnix, all he does here is he simply just throws a flash and he doesn't really commit off it. Instead, he just kind of slowly creeps up and walks up. You see that Blame F, he does the exact same thing. He makes noise here, makes footsteps, but he starts slowing down as well. And what this really does for Nexa, who's in the site, he's in a spot now where he's getting crunched from both sides and he can feel the pressure, but he doesn't actually feel it. What you see here is that what it does for the rotators here, you see that Fiku and Neofrag, who are further back, they're not really sure whether this is actually a real commit. You'll see that with the rotations here, it's a little bit slow. Fiku, he starts walking here towards the CG spawn area, and Neofrag, he stops here to go into the tunnel. So they're not really sure whether or not it's an A hit. And because of that, this slow creep from Astralis just continues to work against them, continues to kind of where they're able to kind of stretch into the site here. Nexa, he doesn't know which side to really look at, and the result, they're able to kind of crunch in. You see a Nexa, not really sure which side to look at, and then Blame F, he slowly creeps into the site, and then as up next, he finally finds his kill onto Nexa. And by the time the rotators are able to get through, they're way too late because you can see a device, he's already posted up on the angle, he gets that kill, and that, sol that solidifies the round for Astralis. So really slow, measured approach from Astralis is, is what got them these eight rounds. Yeah, and it was a good look from Astralis, but I'm going to be brutally honest, uh, that was the last T round that Astralis won. That was the last round before OG went on a 10 round win streak to be pulling that one back in their favor. You look at the score right here. It's 8 to 3 for Astralis, T side Inferno. We know they've been super, super strong on pretty much all CT side. They played all game long, and that's when they mess it up. They lose the following four rounds after this one. Not so good. And 8 7 T side on Inferno is still okay, and then they just couldn't get started on that CT side. It took so long before they got up and running. We didn't see Device get more than one 
one kill in the first seven rounds in that mm. CT side. And to me, that was the biggest difference for Australia, winning and losing. You're right. They took a very long time to work on the CT side. There's another little detail, little nugget in that clip that Daddy brought up, is that even though the scoreline is going to be eight to three, Buzz is at two to nine oh. scoreline on that T side. Ouch. And I don't mean to just harp on the guy. I don't want to be mean in any possible way. But Australis need to address that situation ASAP. AP, 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 AP. Like you cannot just throw Buzz into the mixer every single round the way it happens on the T side. He's, I mean, obviously he has a whole lot of, of improvement and a margin of development for him, and I'm sure yeah. he's gonna progress and improve. Okay, that I accept, I acknowledge that fact. But the amount of time I see him run out without any utility, just basically, yeah, good luck, Buckle, have a good time. And then once you move on to the city side, of course he's got no confidence. He's got no serenity, no peace in how he's supposed to handle the situation. Took him about five or six rounds to have an impact on the CT side, because how are you supposed to be confident? You've been just smacked in the face for like 15 times in a row. They have to handle this situation. It has to be addressed. Two for 10 in, in opening duels, that makes him eight for 51. Oh, oh God, don't keep, doing the, don't eight, keep doing the eight, bounce, eight man. Don't 51, keep doing but it. But that's, that's not even a, you say AP, AP, AP. That's something you need to stop right here, right now. Emergency call for it. hit that button. Exactly, I even called for it before coming it's into this game. You gotta put him away from these situations. You gotta play him a little bit more defensively. You gotta nurture him. You're putting in this guy who's relatively new to Karnas, right? sitting on this stage for one of the first times ever, and you're giving him a nightmare. I think it's a responsibility for the coaching staff. I think it's Glaze's responsibility right now to remove him from that position. You gotta change that. You cannot have a player going eight for 51 in opening duels unless you wanna play 4v5 at all times. Let's go from lows to highs, because uh, Dexter, he was showing up, particularly coming into that second half, instrumental for OG to close that one. Yeah, sure. Great to see Dexter once again having a good game of Counter-Strike. We see it with Rifle, we see it with the AWP, we see it in beginning of rounds, we see it in clutch scenarios, we see it in high pressure situations. Dexter is the mm. whole package as of right now. I think he's a very sublime Counter-Strike player and he came to life in this round as well, even in the pistol rounds. Dexter right now is the talisman for OG. When Dexter's playing well, I believe OG is a team that definitely can't beat a team like Astralis without having to break too much of a sweat, which honestly, they probably should have done. In yeah, he keeps on delivering. He keeps on delivering and because he's so solid individually, he offers up a whole lot of solutions to next side, tactically speaking. You know, you can afford to leave him maybe the A side with two players instead of three for 10 seconds instead of five because if he is the one being caught off guard, he's going to be able to find that one kill, rotate back, get another one, eventually be traded. Um, that was a great, great show, great stint from Dexter. I'll be allow myself to nitpick just a little bit. Okay. When it comes to the crunch time in that comeback from Astralis, I would have maybe liked to see Dexter just take a step, like yeah. make a difference. That's because fine. OG entered that very dark zone where Astralis was mounting and comeback and their level just dropped significantly, 10, 20%. Everybody was a little bit more scared in the, in the duels. You could see the 5v2, we showed that to the people as well, looked very clumsy. So in that moment, I wish Dexter could just be, listen guys, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna handle this. We're gonna put that to bed. Very quickly, gentlemen, where are we standing coming into Vertigo then? Considering this is OG's pick, maybe a slight bit of topsy-turvy, we might have expected them to go with Ancient in this one. I think Rock has said it pretty well that most of the times OG have played Vertigo, it's been against the top, top, top teams of the world. So we haven't really seen the real strength of their Vertigo so far. It's a good test against a team like Astralis, who's shown us two very different faces so far. A great game against Vitality. They probably should have won. They ended in double overtime, couldn't quite close it. and then getting absolutely blown out of the water by Heroic. So right now, let's be honest, we don't really know where Astralis is. All I know is that Bus is an issue right now, and if OG is gonna target him, that could be an issue for Astralis. Thank God OG didn't let that comeback happen. That would have broken them, but they made it. They passed through the finish line, and I think they're set. Well, before we do dive into that second map, we do have to check in with James Banks to see how you guys can get involved with our Merc MVP vote. Yes, it's time to get involved with our Mask MVP vote. You guys at home can have a choice on who is going to take this beautiful trophy home with them. There's three players that are up for it right now, and all of them have had fantastic tournaments in their own way. And you guys at home can go on to the Blast Premier Twitter and have your vote. You can choose between Nico, Zaiwu, or Brokey. That'll be your Mask MVP winner. Which one you choose is up to you. I think I know who I would pick, though. Yeah, make sure you guys are using this time as we're going to be heading to a short break. Make sure you're heading on over to Twitter to get your votes in for the potential MVP Merce candidate. But that does queue up our second map coming into things, and it is OG's pick looking hot to trot coming onto Vertigo. We're going to see if they're going to be heading to the Spring Finals.
And so, folks, we very well could be one singular map away from crowning our last winner here at the Spring Groups for locking in OG in the Washington Finals mm -hmm. and obviously, unfortunately, sending Astralis down to the showdown. But that's no guarantee, not yet, because next map's Vertigo. And I think that's really weird. This feels like it could have and should have always been the ancient pick. Yeah. That's been the trend out of OG. But we're going to Vertigo, Mo. Yes. And, it, you know, like Device and, and Blame. I mean, actually, one of the demos I watched a lot of his basic games is playing Ancient. He was really loving the map. Maybe they're just expecting they wanted to take it to Vertigo because they put some practice into it. And then they're not sure if Astral's going to pop off on Ancient. Just totally subverts the practice they may have put in to this veto. But it's just crazy because, you know, this is a, a veto where they both have two losses on Vertigo. Um, Inferno looked weak between the both of them, but OG, it wasn't their map pick. So the fact that they won it, that means the world. We're looking for some energy coming into the second map from uh, OG to really just show us why they picked this map, to show us confidence. And I think they just want to bring it to Astralis as hard as possible in the really early rounds. Um, because again, I mean, if, if they don't have a good map, it's like, well, how do they justify this pick? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That's a team building exercise. You were sort of doing that during the break. A little bit. Yeah, I was working, on my, like more I was working on my pig squeal. Oh, pig squeal. Okay. Yeah, my pig squeals. I'll try it again. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Yeah, quite metal. Put me on the big stage. You could be on Astralis Talent with that one. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's good to know we're not the only ones losing our minds. Yes. We are just all kids playing video games at the end of the day. We are 12 days deep here at Groups Counter-Strike every day. And it could be coming to an end. Maybe. We don't know. Vertigo's a weird one. So without further ado, let's get weird. Let's get freaky. Like the Dutch. Neofrag. In the pack. Dual Berettas here on the front side of the site. Buzz blinded, rounds this corner, and he's picking up at least two headshots. Stops them in their tracks. OG, it's an attempt to burst into the bomb site. Device cuts off the other end, and Fiku's gonna die empty handed. Was that Castle? Oh, no, it was Device. <laughs> it was Jesus. Never. It during the entire Astralis era, I don't think we saw him yellow like that. War cries. I'm a little intimidated. Buzz on the pistols, baby. Ah! Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Mm. What happened during that break? Uh. I don't know. I don't know. In a good mood, at least. Yep. yep. Feeling alert. Zipix, ready and waiting. I like the antics that Zipix sometimes gets up to down here on the bottom of the B stairs. He likes to play behind the stairs sometimes. He's a crazy man. Yeah. And I feel like it's one of those, it's one of those spots where somebody who doesn't panic can pick up a lot of impact. So we'll see as the game goes on what does end up going his way, but for the start of round two, it's OG facing with pistols into mid and picking up a glaive kill. 4v4. Flame F though, wasting no time. Oh, well, I see it's not B. It's good. Ah, wait a second, they're coming back. But oh it is. God, back. You thought it wasn't. Did they actually give him time to clear this just to come back? Okay, Blame doesn't see anything, so here he is. All right, all good. The fact that he then goes back. Ooh, uh -oh. Dexter can't make the most of that P250. Blame F slides into Z back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth. Press Z and follow me. And all is good. They get that pinch going. If OG were able to pounce on Zipix, fly up that B site. Oh, Lord. Things could have gotten problematic, but again, they had so little. They saved it for this one. We got armored AKs coming in early. Round three locked and loaded. Yeah, and we saw Astralis try this map and get close versus... They played it twice so far in the spring groups. As first Heroic, just nothing because it's a strong map for Heroic. They just weren't ready for that 16-4. Vitality was an overtime game. 
at least got 15 rounds out of it. Or CT side, there were some struggles, a little bit of awkwardness. Oh, device, he was dying on sandbags a couple of times. Goodbye. Yeah, and that'll be it for him. Oh, Dexter takes one back, though. Yeah, some good counter utility. Nexus hurt, too. Mm -hmm. Excellent grenades coming out of Astralis, you know? Sure, you lose oh. device, but it looked like they were recovering until Neofrag gets the better of Glaive. Blame just gave up that angle, but still able to catch Dexter. The half health that was left. OG, sit on ramp. Take your sweet time. There's no rush here, as seen by Bomb. Still sitting back in the depths. So they will walk away. The question is, do Astralis get active here? Now, Buzz, I feel like this kid was just fed to the lions multiple times on Inferno. Hey, buddy, go push Boiler. Hey, buddy, go push Balk. <laughs> yeah. It did feel like that. And it, in a dysfunctional situation where things are going wrong, I feel like Buzz is, you know, he's going to be the last person they think about. So the guy who needs the most experience, that's kind of tough. But here he is on sandbags in an interesting spot. But oh, he gets spotted. Oy, oy, oy. No. Not exactly aware. Now he can actually die to a nade or something. So I. Wait, okay. They're worried about the flank. They have no HEs, no mollies. Oh, and Fiku's in this spot. All right. This could be big. Zipix gets caught as well. And oh. now they can run into the B site. Yeah, it's a sprint, that's for sure. But they've got this locked in unless Fiku somehow would have died. Blame F, however. Mm -hmm. We'll get axed out of this one. The bomb? Oh, no. No way. Oh, oh my god. The, and the... Yeah. But... It's, because they're... I mean... If, hmm. they're like, they, almost lost, they almost lost a 2v5 on Inferno the last round. It came down to 1v2 for Nexa. Things aren't perfect right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not what you want to give away early. Mm. Not when you're on the brink of locking in spring finals. Not when you just got by with that 16-14 on your opponent's map pick. Ouch. Yeah, losing to the clock is the least dignified way to go. Okay. Of course, bring it back. Ooh. All good, but device... Not going to go down for free. Drops Nexa. They're going to try to retreat here. Bomb will get away. That landed for 20 damage. Wow. Iku, a very lucky man. Yeah. Neofrag creeping up that A ramp on his own. Bested by Blame. We've got Buzz down beneath Zipix. A very comfortable round coming out of Astralis, especially in contrast to what we got in the round fire. Oh, that was nice. Oh my oh. god, that was beautiful. The run boost. It's supposed to go down smooth. I hear one heaven now. They've got time to hang out. I don't know if they can activate this Midler because all the rotators are going to come over, so Dexter can't really help out that much until later on in the round. Green smoke in position. Two CTs behind it. Off included with Device. Glaive's going to get one. And Device still waiting. Dexter coming over top connector. Device just blindsided by it. And we are looking at a 3v5 unless Blame F stops it in their tracks. They've got five seconds. Five seconds to spare. They pick up that bomb just in time. Fire off the mark. And it is, in fact, the 3v5 out of OG. Nice run boost bottom B to yeah. best buzz. That was absolutely the perfect play for that situation with the two players here on B with no smoke at the 50 second mark. That's what they needed to get out in that situation. They forced him to fight, took two, op two opposing angles on a choke point that normally you can only approach from one. And, uh, and then Dexter activates his lurk just in time as they're taking the site. Very nice 3v5, honestly. Normally, it's just some kind of really bad failure from the team who has five in this spot. Mm -hmm. They could have reasonably expected to win most situations where the approach comes towards the B site, but in this spot again, OG did well. I feel like suddenly that one, that it's, one, that it, one makes the miss rotation go down a little bit. It helps easier. a lot, probably. I mean, for the morale, especially you know, Astralis broke in this next one, by the way. Right. So nobody with more than two thousand dollars, and that does come back to the Fiku kills and the Flamesy flank kill and. They did get a lot of frags, even though they didn't get that plant, so... 
very expensive. You know, they can forget about that mistake for now. The internet won't let them make, you know, forget about no, it. No, the internet's job is to make them remember forever. But in this moment, while inside the server, forget about it. Forget about it. Walk it off. But if they do it again... Well, if they do it again... I say we beat them. Oh, wow. In a video game. It's both sides of box. Flames looking for the entry. We got five Desert Eagles here for Astralis. Place your bets, everybody. Who's picking up that headshot? Buzz. It, yeah. The best pistol player on Astralis. Seemingly at times. But this is a beautifully timed wrap into the B-bomb site using CT spawn. They're trying to keep eyes on connector, but Nexa slices through the B defense with ease. And the last man cleaned up. So OG reaping the rewards versus just eagles. Super solid. And one thing that makes sense with the way that they play, if they want to play lurky defaults, that again, highlight individual skill, even if you're lurking on multiple choke points, as opposed to the contact explodes they normally do on some other maps that require a little bit more utility, Vertigo rewards you for lurking both B and A simultaneously, lurking out mid all the time. So it really puts pressure on the CTs to watch everything at every moment and uh, basically not blink. You know, I think OG's strongest skill is making you regret using utility. Flames ready for the push. Lots of players coming. Jump's not gonna be a problem. They tried to offset that crosshair, <laughs> but he deletes them. <laughs> that was funny. Great spray. That was a great map from uh, Flamesy from the perspective of decision making, overall frags, and Inferno. He definitely did some good stuff. <laughs> Just overheated there. Pretty excited. It's a goofy game between these two teams. I was going to say, in comparison to Device's Battle Cry. <laughs> yeah. Buzz posted up on top of the wooden wall. The plywood. Oh, yeah, man. Flames is not missing. Oh, that was a good punish. Very clean headshot to kick this off. And there's so many players right behind him that they're just going to keep this one going. Flames all the way around green. May have lost a teammate. But Dexter can just pick up that bomb. And that means Flames, he doesn't even have to back up. Blink and you shall miss it. OG, 4-3. Yeah, they made Buzz regret the reposition, right? He's in a spot where we saw, like, we see Dupree play that all the time up there. But he gives it up, falls off, and then comes back to the same fight from a different spot. And it's an easier fight for OG. It's at least one that they're ready watching with two pairs of eyes as they're coming in. Top of the wood wall, if it gets hard cleared, of course, it doesn't amount to anything. But that gap and that, that little bit of timing and the sort of arbitrary decision to move. You know, I think that's the thing that makes him loose in that spot. Because either spot could get cleared or could work. But because he gave him a timing to get out, that's the only reason he really had an unfair fight. Not something like a 50-50. Nice to survive in that spot. Very important. Watch that. Oh, first bullet. Buzz gets bopped. Flames racking up kills right now. 10 and 2. Damn, they can trust him. 10 and 2. Of course, four of those. Stopping that pistol push through the bottom B. But that was still a nice, you know... One magazine 4K. Lesser players would have only gotten two. It's me. Neofrag's been given a bit of responsibility, I feel like, throughout this T side sometimes. He's very much over here alone at times. Right now, he's got support behind him. A couple of weird grenades out of flames this game, but he's a genius, so yeah. we have to kind of... No, no, no. We, we have to rationalize it. We can't criticize it. Maui calls those off-meta. Ah, uh, smart. Flame F. I don't know what the hell that was. Desert Eagle headshot. Wall bang. Bomb gets thrown down. Pistols prevailing out of the gate. But the recovery already underway. 
Interesting round if Blame gets that frag. M4 down means these two pistols. It's gonna be a little bit harder for them. Zip tries to jump up. That one gets punished. And now Glaive's gonna have to go massive. One set of hands busy with the plant. Tries to come around the corner, but it's great coverage out of Neo Frag. And it's a great little streak from OG, officially on fire. Yeah, again, interesting to have the map pick be this map just because they're both on O2, but someone has to win this and uh, kind of prove that they're the ones who have proved the most on Inferno. Wow, or on Vertigo. Wow, that was a good shot. But Neo Frag quietly, even though it's seven kills, I feel like each one of them have moved the rounds along mm -hmm. drastically. Yeah. Not wrong. Flames taking the high road. Device catching Dexter. Oh, and Buzz. Mm. He will find impact bottom B. 5v3 here for Astralis. Is that quicken things up? Seemingly towards middle. Fiku down by half. But already on the recovery. Uh-oh. Oh, he crossed. Yeah, Device... I Sounds like he heard that. It looks like he heard that. Again, Neofrag's kills have been really great, but nice and patient from Device. It's not a headshot out of Neofrag. He hits him. It doesn't topple him. It's it picks. Okay, that one's his. So a couple of players here for Astralis that are going to walk away with half health. It's the openings that could have been. But I think it's going to be important to start shutting down Flames at the base of b site. He's been doing that all on his own, multiple times, catching Buzz at the top of it, pushing in, mm -hmm. causing that rotate. Bomb comes over. It's, it's you know, he is winning rounds from the get-go, just but, playing solo B. And for memory, when Astralis played last time on CD side versus Heroic, they were, they were having trouble getting aggressive on B. They were playing a lot of retake spots. I remember that was actually Vitality. I remember Dupree falling mm. back a lot. And then only later into the half, um, pushing down, I think the idea is definitely good. It certainly feels like the aggro CT setups are working for a lot of the top teams at the moment. And this is a big save from Fiku. This op can have massive impact. CTs are purveying the map, but very carefully, and they won't approach him. So the streak has ended for Moji, but it was an impressive one. Two kills like that that round. Device over the smoke here on ramp, and then Buzz obviously shutting down flames on the other end of the map. So Astralis making the most of the utility and making sure OG don't get too far ahead. They should put a gap in between Degster and Flames' table so that he doesn't get beat up on it. Flames lives longer. Instead, Neofrag sectioned off. All started back in Lisbon. It's because Flames has unlimited energy and Dexter needs to steal yours. So it's the perfect symbiotic relationship here. Vampiricism. Yep, where Flames can support Dexter's energy levels. Just simply doesn't run out. If you see Flames in a building, he is... Stop, drop, and roll. No, okay, so if you see... <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you see Flames anywhere at a land, he's going to come up with some new way to prank you on the spot. Okay. Yeah, he's a bit of a trickster. Yeah. Bit of a trickster. Man, there's a lot of nades here. My God. It felt like the entire building was on fire. Luckily, it's made of steel beams. Nexa? Just the one. Get that flash around the side. Blame. How far back do you go? Let it slide. Let him have it. Can't afford to get reset here. Can't afford to just have that one and done. Zipix is going to run a bit of a risk. He's not alone, at least. But Dexter further back, even though he only has 10 health because of all that utility damage out of the gate, he lands the shot. It's like man walk, advantage. Yeah, it feels like they walked that clear just a touch early. Of course, it, it benefits them greatly if there's no one there. But in this spot, 4v4, you know, they still could win in a more regular round. Buzz. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's shoved out. 
That's the site lost. I don't even know if you get back into this. No, no Molly's the key. Molly's and nades both are so, so powerful for retaking on B. Default is so easily hit, but... Yeah, they move out of the spot. So again, the the, the, the mid-round re-aggression is not even late-round re-aggression. If you're around the, like, 40-second mark, there's no time to be on the A ramp if you're going to be hitting B. So if it is going to be A, you find out if your Zipix in that spot. But it was so early with no noise, no pressure over on B, no pressure on mid at all. You know, there's obviously a likelihood that Dexter can hold that angle. I'm not going to say that he'd be there in every every single round that's like that, but this one felt like they're just... They tried to go for the very concealed tactic, and I think... Yeah. A little pressure would have would have benefited them a lot. Also, it feels like maybe that utility damage, not Astralis's fault, but comes back to haunt them. Why is Degster so passive, sitting back and just holding something like that? Why oh, isn't yeah. he at the front on an entry? Because the guy's got 10 HP. That's true. Yeah, that can influence your decisions. Yeah. Absolutely. Good point. So, ends up being a key reason that OG get right back to winning ways. But again, majority saved here for Astralis. Double check. Yes, sir. Three up. So rebuy made easy. I think it'll be critical in shutting down that bottom B control. I think that's that's really opened the door for OG, whether that's you know the late call that we just saw, but a flubbed run boost. They're gonna they try go? it again. No. Look like it. But no. Digs are making a lot of sound here. And device, we've seen him get this opening pick before. But this is what I want. I want to see a fight at the bottom of B. Buzz dies, just like Zipix. Sometimes Flames is on his own. This time, it's a pack of three players out of OG. Glaive wastes no time slipping in behind oranges. And then as those nades come over top, he starts to throw out his belt. Bad incendiary. Flames gets another kill off this contact. And at the minute mark, it's a kind of comfortable four versus two. Low health on half of OG still. But this is where Blame shines. He's moving up. I doesn't know about this player who's launched in behind this first pillar. Justifi justifiably worried about mid, but he heard that fall. He heard that footstep. Device so far away. Blame's going to have to go above and beyond here. And he can hear them piecing it together. He's in a great position right now, looking for multiple kills, but Flames has already climbed over top of the wall. And so it's another one in this B site. This spells disaster for Astralis. Device, I hope you can hold on to your op because there needs to be a silver lining in round 12 for the Danes. Solid protocols. They have the numbers advantage, but health is low. They come in quietly as they normally do, but this time they get the silent boost off from Flamesy, so it's a perfect ability to trade anybody playing on the left side of the site here. And weaponizing him has been key to the gameplay here of OG, 13 and 3. Another 3k round. And Glaive, uh, you know, I like that he played in the site actually, instead of retake spots, because there were low HP players on the other side, but he obviously flubbed his incendiary, and he also fought kind of like... He just fought for so long into their headshot angle on the stairs. Multiple players that all have an advantage versus him. Just wanted to get his one. Nice. Not able to hang on to that, so... It's actually still a lot of money, excuse me. Charles stacking it. So nice, another nice clear from Flames. He's actually the first guy to swing out, and he's just holding top sight. I mean, OG look good here. Mm -hmm. Flames isn't slowing down. 14 and 3. 11 rounds into the game. And this is, you know, earlier this series, I, I want to call it, I did say that Flames in big games kind of falls off. But what I want to reiterate is that it's not this is a big game to get to spring finals. It's not actually the the matches and the and the pressure on it. I think it's literally the stages, right? It's in Rio at the Challenger stage that finally had a crowd for once. It's in Lisbon. It's at World Finals. That's where we see his individual level drop off. Groups? Studios? Flames is a force to be reckoned with. And not just at blast. Go back to the European RMR to just qualify for Rio. Flames is again... Topping scoreboards. 
Still young. Ton of potential. And this round has some for Astralis. 5v4 off that. Device gets active in middle. He's going to get chased. He had support. But Zipix, head pop, flash through the window. Device comes back. Love it. Hmm. Fiku playing around with the utility, thinking maybe Device got away. He's going to re-engage on that one. And even thought about going again. Four versus two here for Astralis. It's a good look for the Danes. But wow. Flames, 22 health as he comes off of that fight with Glaive's head in his hands. And Neofrag has an opening. Damn. More importantly, Neofrag also has the bomb with this. There's so much pressure on Buzz, you know. He has sometimes been caught off guard by moves like this. And Neofrag has so much space. Oh, there's a chance. Flushed him out. Oh, oh but Buzz. But he grabs it. Well done. Feels like that one's super important to pick up. If he ends up dying to that walkout, Bomb can just find its way into the site. But Flames, nothing else. We've got a moment that Buzz can be proud of. Two kills, shuts down B, gives Astralis their fifth. And Neofrag didn't want to shoot too quickly because he thought, all right, like, I have a chance for him to come back. He's not going to be aware of this, but laser sharp precision from Buzz. And uh, Device, I think the coolest thing about watching him on the comeback, he's still very positionally confident about when he doesn't need to fall back from something. He's been oftentimes getting so much value out of eating a flash and waiting, or even Molotovs, just not being scared in all the right moments. Here we go. Oi! They get around. Oh, man. And the really tempo. Yeah. Huge tempo here from Flames. Looks for that follow-up. Zipix's grenade should find Nexa. It's 19 damage. And Zip's gonna just slide into the wooden wall. Nice run boost play. We saw them screw it up last time. But in round 13, it works. Device got the better of Degster on ramp in the previous round. He hunts that same kill again. Yeah, real good kills versus Degster on that ramp in some of these opening starts. I believe you're just trying to draw attention for Zipix. See if they forget about him. See if they forget about this site. Piku trying to make this still feel like it's also a split in from mid. But he just drops straight into the barrel of blame. F Neofrag next. Ooh, you can't escape the blame. <laughs> Zipix all this time just tucked into the wood wall, waiting for a chance to strike him down, and he does. Two kills to him, and Astralis closed that gap. Dude, his blame is so reliable when it comes to fights like that. Excellently well handled, and... Uh... Made the difference. Absolutely. I'm su surprised that I guess they were trying to draw everyone from mid to B side so they could come through with this whole full flank. They really were asking for a lot of players to be there, and they did get that, but Blame's half committed rotation as the surplus player here, playing back in CT, was exactly where he needed to be. Device. Ooh. Missed chance, but we've got an M4 in the perfect position to stop them on the side of that smoke. Neofrag into the fire. <laughs> we'll die to the nade of blame from beyond the grave. Fiku in flames. And Zip at the bottom of B. Nice aggression out of him. Definitely catches Fiku off guard that he is that deep. But now flames can play unchained. Doesn't have bomb. But has the first kill in this 1v4 and a whole lot of time. Knows he has to make progress pretty quickly. And because it's Flames having this map right now, 17 and 8, you wonder how many kills he can get. No, can't take down Device. Another solid round from Blame F with a 2k spray down on the ramp. Probably been a hero of these last couple. And over on A, for the most part, it feels like all the action has happened on the B site when it comes to OG success. But Astralis and some of their better rounds have gotten the quiet, like, easy first kill, untraded. Wow, 134 ADR with that. That's wild. Yeah. See where he ends the half. Last one. And finally, after all this, we get OG with a messed up buy. Buzz takes a quick glance down. Dexter dares him to do it again. Zipix sliding out and Buzz. It's a one and done. 
from both of the original B defenders. There is a third in position yet again, Glaive. You know those weapons could be tantalizing for Nexa. The complexion of this round looks like so many others with the late mid lurk in this position for Nexa. He'll have to draw out this time because I don't know why Astralis would forget about it in this spot. We have seen the B attackers do well enough by themselves to win the round now. Glaive, he's had some trouble here. Just kill Glaive and this should go down easy. Slides up on Tetris. Right now, two backs turned, but he doesn't go around the side. Fiku looking up, shut down. Dexter, good trade. That should activate Nexa. And oh. it does. Instantaneous death to blame F. Device with a chance to shine. Now that's at least knowledge that Nexa has dropped down into the site. Bomb plant confirms both are here, but where? And Device, how can he catch them off guard? Five sevens out, jumps in. Ambitious, and unfortunately for him, not enough. OG will sprinkle that eighth at the end of the half. It's a good position for it, but oh, that's the M4 removed. Shush, oh. a Nova and a Dream! <laughs> Three kills from it! I did not expect that to be the hero of this round, but somehow it's kept heroic in this. I've never seen the Nova get away with something like this. Oh, and yeah, I'll be running away, but that Nova, that big green gun, not the one we often talk about, sat up on top of the hut and thirsting for blood. Some die young might give it to him. He's oh. hunting. Oh my lord. He's okay. dropped into the lobby. He wants more. Nova <laughs> is his friend. He's on for the ace. Four kills on the back of the shotgun. That's unreal from Shush. Up on top. Everyone is looking elsewhere. Look yeah. at it go. This earned the hero music. I yeah. mean, man. Look at it. It's like the perfect habitat for it. In all its glory, the Nova. Four in the round. And Heroic keep themselves in this series. And a smoke goes into the window. They do not want to make this mistake. They do not want to give those guns back to Liquid. No more chances, because there will be no more attempts this year. Final chance to write the final chapter. Hunter, of course, turns it right into a leash, sent to the sidelines, and still, OC is nowhere to be found. Hooksy plants that bomb with the hopes of a trophy lift at the end of this year. It's little from OC, and it's far too late. A retake necessary with the talent stacked against him. A phenomenal event from JKS. And while the Kovaches watches on, guess what? Two brothers from Bosnia with a childhood dream to win events since this all started. And ladies and gentlemen, believe your eyes. Abu Dhabi with the newest champions. G2 do the unthinkable. They win a LAN. A first tier one victory for Hunter. A trophy in the cabinet. I'm gonna try my best at analysis. Are you ready? Ooh, yes. <clears throat> Flames is nuts. Facts. 17 kills, bro. 17 kills like it's nothing. And I mean, instrumental, just round winning impact. You know, I could say I've seen Blame F with 17 kill halves and I've seen his teams win less rounds. Mm -hmm. But OG and Flames is 17 kills. He's a mover, that's for sure. My man meant business and so did Neo Fry, but Buzz is in a pistol. And when Buzz is in a pistol, you better believe the hype. Yeah, I mean, being good on pistols kind of shows your prowess when there's not much utility in play, but it does show that he has the aim. Three players up short side. 
putting pressure here on Flames, who gets a very critical kill, because now he can just run rampant. And Flames chasing another kill here. Buzz comes around the side of that crane. Fiku's flank's been spotted. Dexter sits on 7 HP. Not ideal. They're going to go running down. And Device finishes Fiku. Thankfully, for his sake, for his legendary namesake, he'll finish that kill. But can Dexter slip into this site and just ice him? Oh, Jesus, okay. First one's clean, and luckily for Device, that kill better than the one versus Fiku. It is Astralis to tie this game. Okay, so they're uh, Astralis, they have struggles in the two maps. Very limited amount of data here, but versus Heroic and Vitality, it was a T-Sides that really failed them. 26%, but the man on your screen is actually going to be joining us for an interview. 20 minutes with Device wow. on Glass TV on overtime for the last time here at groups it's been wonderful to bring the show back and what a guest to end it on so make sure to tune in exclusively exclusively on blast tv tv exclusively on blast dot tv, TV. Ooh, flames see ya at least he was blind if you're gonna get shot in the head it's better to be blind. That's my two cents. Keep that bar low, yeah. yeah. Now Astralis is going to lean into this here A site. No problem. Or is there? We've got a scout back on CT shelf. Zipix shreds Degster. And at least OG can stack appropriately, but. They're also not over committing here. They're just going to send Zip in on the MAC-10. Device finds that walk back because OG know what's going on. Astralis are playing the whole entire map because they're a bunch of nerds who really want to win. <laughs> yeah. You can only imagine. They're working as hard as they did in 2018. No surprise. They did so much. Okay. And Zip from above. <laughs> Poor guy. That was exciting. Tries to send the Hail Mary. Blame F will make the money instead. We've got the Danes back in the lead. For what it's worth. Now, again, we're looking for these meaty T rifle rounds to prove that they've got something to show. Vice um, looking solid so far, but talking about just pistol, anti egos. Even gets one step more serious. We get back onto that full buy next round. Ouch. Shredded like cheddar. I've already over provolone. Mm. I'm sorry, I had to say it. Hey, man. Get it off your chest. Okay. Not a big cheese guy, anyway. You like cheese? Sure do. Yeah. Sure do, Mohan. Oh, I sure do Top like cheese. cheese. Curd cheese. Cheese curds. So there's got to be like 4,000 types of cheese. Yep. And you went for one that you could make out of any type. That was a great answer. Can I say? I'm Quebecois. <laughs> a si And that is the only one answer. You said top two, but I'm only giving you one. Oh, okay. Because there's serious business to get back to, so if, sure. if, you could, if you could focus. It's about to start now. Okay, thank you. I would say. No op on Degster. Will that be problematic? I don't I don't think so. I think it's a boon to have it. It's not a necessity. So we saw on T side. Didn't look too comfortable. I mean, really just kind of did okay next set. Crouching, crouching right under that crosshair and neofrag finds his on device and oh good start here and yeah. listen you don't have to buy your own op you can just pick it up off your opponents can't you felt like og were just waiting to get guns so that they could go swinging baseball bat and a golf club upside device and zipix's heads
There is a little pocket of control to be taken here in middle. It's just unfortunate for Glaive that he loses Buzz in the meanwhile. He's going to get that cross on mid, but should have been heard. Flames, yeah. He heard that damage Ooh. happen. So, Glaive, I'm sorry, but you're not getting away from this kid. Not right now. The geometry expert lined that up perfectly. Now, Blame F with everything to do and no teammates to do it. Mm. So, Rifle's making a hell of a difference here for OG. That's one situation where everything goes right. And right away as right well. Right away. You know, OG just flying out of spawn. Zipix, that trying to entry out mid running past the Molly. What got into him? I wonder where the call was behind it. Maybe would have just, with that spawn, got out by the Molly and just waited. See if the CTs try to retake mid control. I'd, I'd assume that seems like a more on brand play. Mm. Well, I'm going to let this one slip. Let's lead for Astralis again, but struggles on T side have stopped them from winning so far on Vertigo, even if they've only really had two tries. Counter Don't about. Next up. I mean, nice and easy. Yeah, he had time. This one as well. Just times it, keeps it clean. And honestly, nice to see Nexa offer that. Only had seven kills going into that round. Mm. And so first gun round out of OG. Man picks up a 2K. Could be a sign of good things to come here for OG's defense. Lawless. This time it's device in middle. And they don't go get the op. Where was it actually? Back on a ramp. I guess they didn't go far enough down. But maybe they don't want it. That's something I'm not sure about. We'll find out as time goes on as the money builds for OG. Right now, they're really emphasizing that Device creeps around these angles and plucks somebody off mid. Could have been this guy right here. But Nexa drops back there. off construction and sends a flash in. Oh! Fantastic flashbang for Flames to come in big with. Oh, and he doesn't overcommit. Now they can follow up behind him. Biku versus Buzz. Two TTs die in this spot. It gets ugly, but oh, Buzz, he's just a sitting duck. Burned into the crosshair of Fiku. Zipix wasn't able to capitalize on Flames, who didn't get overly aggressive. Yeah. Just a fantastic flash. I thought it was a nade going for the boost, and I'm right. like, oh, that's, you know, yeah, go, go get some damage. But even better, they send Flames in for the 2K. Uh-oh. Chance to rebuttal, but taken back. Taken back in its entirety. All five kills the way of OG, not a single death, and we're tied 10 apiece. They got to feel good now. I mean, uh, in 30 rounds on Inferno, it got stringy. Now on Vertigo, on their CT side, on their map pick. They won Astralis' map pick. These two rounds, no deaths. Super confidence building. They just wanted to find out if Astralis were any more ready than their last tries here at the spring groups on this map. It doesn't feel like that just yet. Astralis will be thanking themselves for winning that pistol, but outside of that one clutch, it feels like OG are ahead in this half. Back to a couple of deagles for Astralis. It's to the save. Yeah. Is that their new motto? Not as cool as the stars, yeah. Hashtag to the showdown. AKA to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A grueling, grueling showdown awaits as well. We need to find out what it's like to be Zagreus. Dexter. Like, why do I know that name? I've got a flash, Mo. They can put all their stock in Glaive's Flash. And Love if he's that. Really a great IGL. It'll be a banging flashbang. It's going to land in the perfect spot. If it doesn't work, it's because his team couldn't frag. Got the deep angle out of Fiku, so I like, you know, keep these players at arms. Here it comes. Just blinds his teammates. <laughs> oh, but oh. remember, Buzz Look has at that a flash, pistol. Baby. Just the problem here for Astralis that, of course, the site gets set ablaze. 
Frag goes forward as well. It's not a comfortable cross for that bomb plant, but it's still coming through. Now the kill means no gun, right? Added bonus of being that far back. And then everybody starts rotating inwards with more utility, but more impact out of Buzz. To rob this round away would be huge. And he still has a chance as he sticks behind Tetris. We've got two smokes on the play right now. CT's trying to make this one move forward. Lots of audio being given to Buzz. And Zipix comes in with impact. Neofrag, half health, Get can just smoke. cover this off. Just cover it off. Go for the defuse. It's as simple as that. But he comes off once. And now time really becomes a problem. Jumps back on top of it. Oh, Zipix reload. on the reload. Can he get lucky? Oh, it's so no close. <laughs> but no cigar OG by the skin of their teeth. The, the, the smoke obfuscates his vision, but where do the bullets go? It looks like it's right on him, honestly. Oh my god. They actually approached that so well up until the moment that Flames went on the inside all of a sudden. If he just continued on the outside, they had him crushed. They gave those pistols a chance, and they both had a smoke in that position as well. So they could have tapped to draw them out with the early smoke and had lots of time. Not exactly, exactly optimal. It all started with the splash, okay? And then the deagle kill into the site. And Astralis nearly pulled it out. Ouch, Viku. He's got to give up the position. And Buzz left to play solo bottom B. Contrast that to what OG would do. If there was only one player here, Flames. Two young guns. It's a tall ask of Buzz. Defaulting B is easy. Watch. Here's the fallback, so cleared it all out. Relay that info, see if the mid split can come in. Oh, got eyes in the right spot. Smoked, but not gonna be a problem. We get two, three, oh. four individual kills. Flames just disrespects the smoke. Your util doesn't mean jack. Dude, they read that so well. They had the third player in CT ready to crunch the site and Neofrag readied for a spot where Astralis go around, right? Not through heaven. And he didn't have to worry about because he had two teammates over there ready to hold it. Buzz in the clutch, can't do anything. Flames another 3k, 26 kills Monstrous. for Young Flamesy. Unstoppable at the moment. And I think just the confidence boiling over. Making every single play he chooses to. There's no timidness seemingly from him. Feels like it's made even easier by Nexa and Neofrag picking up kills first. So it's not like he's the first point of contact. He's just there to clean up and does. Third time out here for the Danes. Starting to look a little bit grim now. Had a lead for a second. But we're long past that. Too many majority of live rifle rounds run one here on CT side by OG. Trying to show us, prove they've been practicing. They're talking, hand warmers are out, extra slaps, dabs coming in. Flames doesn't even have to work, look in that direction. He knows where they're coming from. Desperate, man. It is. Device on a scout. Glaive's AK. OG on the brink of 13. And a 2-0 tonight. Device. Ah, oh, poor guy, right? Your AK dies instantly. Yeah, it gets picked up by Blame F, but Neofrag's not going to give him a chance to catch his breath. And that frag grenade has already softened up the only <laughs> other player who's <laughs> supposed to do anything, which he does. Nice okay. scout shot. Yeah. But another nade with his name on it. That was a cool pivot right there. And another nade with Buzz's name on it. He's getting bodied back here. 16 health. Oh, and he goes down. OG on fire. 13 to 10. Their protocols look sharp. They're ready to play down the ramp. This looks like a more classically sound CT side. Yes. I mean, it just seems like a very sound map for OG in general. Yes, you've got flames going super hard carry, but 
at the same time, Astralis picked up both pistols, converted each time for three rounds. Yeah. That's six of their ten right there. Yeah. And the moment they get three rounds at the start of each half, we get OG on fire in an instant. So it's like the moment they True. get guns, their original game plan is just working. Yeah, back and forth towards the end, so adaptation both sides. But, I mean, what more can you ask of OG? up to Astralis at this point to give us a reason to believe and device may just be that reason he was winning a lot of the duels when it was him on CT down into ramp and here in the 24th he's got Dexter dead to rights absolutely Dexter has had limited impact because of him Neo frag though chance to shine turns away oh god blame F shoots doesn't come around the corner though yeah, doesn't trade lost his chance and now Neo frag gets back into position device gonna go up in front of this and he hits the shot that's a huge bait. Neofrag bites. Does what Blame F didn't. Reclaims at least the kill. Nexa, good a challenge. Oh, he's still going. That off is tearing them up one after another. Fourth kill right there for the taking. There's the possibility of the short wrap. They do watch it as they come around that corner, but Flames gets the best of Buzz. Blame F to the top of the boxes, and Fiku on the reload means everybody else behind him can comfortably close that gap, start to work in. Little does the last CT realize, they're all on site already. Dude, this is just about this machine that was device moving slowly up the ramp, positionally improving without risking his life and hitting every single shot along the way. A couple of teammates die, and Fiku can't get one of the three frags. Blame F closed it out, but honestly, that was all about device. Started this round by saying you need a reason to believe. Oh, it's a great shot to take out the first op or two. Device gives you a reason. Yeah, and again, his utility is what brought Neofrag forward into that fight. A huge bait. Neofrag instantly regretted that decision, but didn't want to give up that much map control. Played it to his hands. Blame 2 is left alive again, looking at the score. Incredible. All that matters to him, however, is the map result. Still shaping up pretty well here for OG. For sure. Oh, ready. Oh, man. Didn't see it? I don't know. The smoke maybe obfuscated his vision just a bit too much particles but no, he's around here now careful neofrag you back that up you're dead and we've already seen dexter with an affinity for just playing m4s went into the op last round can't afford it or could have afforded it but chose chose not to so he lets that slide maybe accepting devices getting the better of him right now Just prevail with the rifle pack. Buzz. Again, right? A lot of responsibility as that solo B player, but Nexa <laughs> just barrel stuffs him. Yeah, and they wise. They win B. It's a kind of a scary spot because where he dies means that Nexa could have freely pushed or expected someone to trade, which puts some pressure on them to make a decision quickly. Now mid is an interesting option. The CTs might not be able to read this as quickly. Wow, Flames is ready for the walk up. They even pull back out of B main. Nasty off angle. Nexa challenges. Oh, that had to have been a clean shot. Devices in the back of that pack. Flames almost falls off the building. T's looking to get past him. Oh no! CT Molotov lands right in front of him, forces him away. Looked like he wanted to try and challenge around it, but now they're just going to retreat by the looks of things. Yeah, they lost it, and they, they don't want to lose two in a row with ma majority death, so OG will walk back. And Astralis scored this round, even though OG set up in a really smart way to deal with the pressure that was coming on. I mean, I, I don't even know how they read it was going to be a late mid play from Astralis. Maybe they checked on A ramp, and again, Nexa getting his kill over at B was the clue. That sort of broke the seal, but okay. Now some kills here as they hunt down the CTs trying to save. It's going to be the odds for OG in the next round as well. Limited amounts of money left over. Uh huh. Astralis has to be cautious of that as well. Yeah. All good, all good. So, but the setup is good for OG, so it's not like, again, you think overthink that. I think that would be the worst thing you could do in this situation. And Flames almost found a creative way to cheat a timing with that jumping HE into trying to boost up. But Astralis were just fast enough. Watch this shot. Wow. Oof. Okay. Damn. Yeah, that looked like a solid timing from Nexa, too. Looks like he jumped over the wire so on the tightrope. Almost went for a little skydive. 
Only two timeouts deep. Ruga hardly working here. Ready to jump in. One round game. Can't emphasize enough just how close Inferno ended up being. Nearly a two versus five out of Astralis to push it into overtime. Nexa with the clutch to shut him out. Shut him down and a 2-0 to shut him up. Again, Device is hunting. He's got the right idea. Neofrag yep. has been here patrolling time and time again, but can't see him. And when he falls back, we know they've also got the right utility to pressure him back into a peak. Oh. Or even just get the damage in. I feel like Dexter's got to be a little scared of Device. You know, he's been ready for, for these sure. pushes. No doubt. You know, Dexter's not had a bad map, but I'd say limited impact compared to what we're used to. Buzz has again been given the responsibility of the solo B play. They're looking to come back to him. So it looks like Buzz is going to be entry. Right now it's just Fiku. Closest rotate in the form of Nexa. That three player stack still committed to the A site. Fiku lays down the smoke. It's going to pop right at the perfect time. They that could have been worse. Yeah, they would have loved to kill him in that spot. He had to expose himself to throw that smoke down the stairs. Now they know where he is, and Device isn't going to let that go. It looks like they're just going to go for the V-pop again, but the late smoke at 30 seconds, man. Astralis, they don't want to have to go up against this late utility. Flames just hiding. And they don't have a molly for nope. this ball. They've got to hard clear it. This could be Flames' moment. Flash sight twice. Flame F, exposed, nobody watching. Shots confirm, Flame goes out. And Fiku, leaning back, sees a sliver and can't capitalize. It's Buzz with the kill instead. Nexa, a double from construction. Two seconds to spare. Device hands busy. Glaive has to help, has to line them up and does. Ton of damage. Flames, minimal health. Dropped by the Oppa Device. His counterpart in Dexter. And this kill matrix has come up Danish every single time. Dexter comes around the corner. Device hasn't seen oh, it. No. He slips through with OG's 14. Oh my God, he made the move. And that was Dexter's kryptonite up until this moment. But he hits the no scope, finds the timing, wraps around the generator. And that could be the match winning moment. What a round to do it. Glaive had six kills before this came in and he set up almost enough of a defense to help out Device, who has done the most in the second half. And Dexter found this perfect timing. And had the presence of mind to clear this spot after not seeing Device. That's one thing. Was that a no-scope as yeah, well? Yeah, it was. Wow. So, maybe it was limited impact throughout that first half or in this map for Dexter compared to what we're used to, but that makes up for it and then some. The morale completely in favor of OG now on 14, the brink of winning. And Device really couldn't have played that 1v1 better. He just missed the small timing. That's Counter-Strike. Clearly Dexter wasn't ready for it when he should have been. It's Flamesy on 31. Insane. Oh! but give him the chance to shoot. And Device has found his targets. And think about how we were saying how Neofrag's, you know, been kind of floating out there on a platter for Device to gobble up, but usually just doesn't find the timing through the tarp or a smoke will block it. Device goes through the smoke. I mean, that's a challenge to pull off with an off, and it does. <laughs> he was tired of waiting. He just runs at him. He knows he's been there. Just hasn't run that much of a risk until now. And that B site is evacuated. Excellent call coming out of Astralis. Yeah, they're slow to get back here. They're gonna run over now. Flash comes through as they walk up. No one right side playing rotate. Fiku, it's a Fomus. They don't and kill him. Now he's on six HP. Blame F. Gonna push him down. The little that remained of him. Bad smoke. Gaps on either side. Ooh. Nexa kills Device. Do they run this gamble? I mean, it's a 3v3. They have some utility. The smoke is what's key. No money, though. Yeah, that's true. It's a risk. It's incentive to just let them have this one. Did they, they roll the dice? I know. They're pretty close. Looking for a mistake. Oh, oh they find it. 
That's all they need! A stroke of luck! And then Glaive takes it back, but the counter-terrorists know what they want. They've got that taste of blood. And we brought up the lack of frags from Glaive. Well, now he needs a double. And they're already on top of that bomb. He gets the first headshot onto Nexa. Flames denied! And Astralis keep on fighting. Oh, the calmness right there from Glaive. And again, not the best map from him, but when they need it. When the Vice can't do it. Here's his old best friend. But this is a jolt of energy. Man. Both, both ways, man. That was Both teams. Yeah. Both teams playing CS. Device taking that challenge up short through a smoke. Dexter shot into the green. Glaive with the taps to deny that. Defuse. And it is a penniless OG. No investment coming in. We're almost certainly getting 30 rounds in this match. Ooh, they disassemble a boost that would have actually looked like it netted a kill. Lots of info for blame. And buzz. Ooh, just a quick disengage. Once they get some info. Yeah. You don't want to be the guy that throws this away. But unlosable round at this point. We're playing CS. 30 round game. Catholic Dexter hit that. Yeah, I can't even really characterize it as, as a mistake. It's such a crazy shot to hit. But it was right on the tracers. And they didn't use their smoke properly, did they? No. It could have been for the entrance if mm -hmm. they're playing from the stairs. Not all the time, but he's that far back. It would make sense. Buzz, go for it, man. Come on, eat up Mikos. Yeah. Had those stats. Zipix over the shoulder. It's all going to get swept away. 14 all, folks. 30 round game. Back to back maps. Yes. Huge clutches. Huge op frags. Swings of momentum within rounds. A flamesy that seems to have just this insatiable hunger at the moment. It's not quieting down. Astralis. If they were feeling defeated for a second, they've won four of the last five. They know they can do this from this point. And it's by making moves. They got 15 burst vitality, lost in overtime. Missed chance. Oh, oh flashes. flashes are insane, but, but Blame shuts them down. From the corner, double headshot. Could he see at all? I don't know. I, I mean, unless, I mean, I mean, device, no way. But if Blame F dodged those flashes because he's in the corner. This is one back. No trade. Is one enough? Well. 3v4 versus 3v5, you know, whole different story. Dexter has to go big. They're approaching from above, maybe. Oh, he saw, oh. He saw him? Sure. He saw him. Spray's not too far off. That's going to keep Glaive on his toes. That clipping. And OG going to play this active again. And re-aggression. You're not winning rounds by playing scared. Active Counter-Strike rewarded in these last few rounds. Gamble is somewhat correct here towards A. Now it's going to be Boost. clear the two smokes come down. Good amount of util behind this. They're trying to keep it simple. <gasps> Saw the op. But still, pressure inwards. Bomb plant not far off. Zipix going to commit to this. CT's just got hit by a nade. That one hurts. Fiku to the half health. Still in with a kill. And Glaive along that close wall. They're going to try to retake again. And it's damage coming through. It's Fiku in a clutch. But remember, he's tied down to 44. Tough stuff. And desperation doesn't look good on them. Astralis with 15. They organize and look composed and slowly come up that ramp and take all the space. And we've actually finally seen... Just a solid standard exact towards A, which is something that was missing this round from Blame. I mean, that, that spray is everything. Teammate behind, beside him completely blind. They trusted that flash 100%. They saw device coming through the smoke that Neofrag threw every single round and decided they wanted to do a little bit of the same. This time, Astralis kind of abusing this left corner on the ramp has netted them so much, whether it's punishing Dexter, getting info on Neofrag,
money is in shambles right now for OG. After all the work they've done this half. What's the call, man? Came into this game. We said we don't really know what goes on with Vertigo. We said we were going to get weird. Go nuts, OG. Get wild. Jumping down, trying to fight Buzz. He's not alone. Zipix also not far off. Still in the rafters Run. of T-Spawn Glaive. It's one kill already. Thomas, however, bests Buzz. And Fiku, does he want more? He tries to keep going deeper. Deagle's up next. Finds Glaive with hands busy. But the numbers, it pays off until Degster with an individual kill towards Blame. Device and Zipix, shoulder to shoulder. And we've got CT split. Yeah, playing 1-1 one, one to sites, trusting each other. It's time for rifles here. Full kits of utility. Man, a sea of grenades. Between these two longtime brothers. Coming up the B steps. Neofrag, only the Deagle on this side of the map. Further back, though. And he's splitting the difference. Dexter, oh my god. He's coming. This is the right move. 2v2 inside B. Now Neofrag feels bolstered. He can play close wall. Dead. Oh! oh! Both dead to the rifle of device. Justified chucking that off away. 16-14 again. A series that decides a spring finals attendee again. Map three needed again. And we go to Ancient. Meant to be the map pick of the likes of OG. We'll see if they can pull it off. I remember when I was uh, playing in um, Espada back in the mm -hmm. days, uh, I we was fighting with Gambit youngsters a lot, and um, we was losing to them, and people was coming to me and asking, how do you play against uh, Shira? What do you feel? <laughs> and uh, I told them, guys, I'm not playing against Shira. I'm playing against uh, Nafani, Axai, yeah, Hobbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they don't understand that we don't have a lot of duels against each other. Yes, we just yes. more <laughs> killing uh, riflers. And only after, maybe, you will fight with Oprah. So you, you got knocked down too fast, and then yeah. wait for him to appear. <laughs> OK. How do you compare you, and how do you guys think of Sasha versus Zaiwu in the AWP battle, in the head-to-head -head like that, because we as talent, we discussed that Simple does things that we would not recommend other players try because you don't hit it. But then Zaiwu is a lot more like, plays it through and maybe less off instinct in how we view it. Mm -hmm. What do you guys see it as? I mean, it's tough to say. Uh, like a lot of the games when I watch like Zaiwu and Sasha playing against each other, like, I think for Zyvo, it's not comfortable to play against Ivy. Mm. Um, like, Kryptonite, yeah? Yeah, Kryptonite, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kryptonite, I think it's like this. But, I don't know. Like, two different kind of styles of hoppers. When I teach my teammates so many times how to not pick Zyvo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I show them, like, how I play, and he yeah. do the same, you know? Like, yeah. uh, positioning. Mm -hmm. Everyone does a good positioning. But accuracy, I think, I feel his accuracy is good. Yeah, yeah. his uh, decision making very fast mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, what I feel from my perspective, I was looking on both of you in a uh, two years period when mm -hmm. you was fighting for the fun. <laughs> and um, yeah, they have different style, uh, style of uh, opening a bit like both of them can do aggressive moves and also both of, both of them can support their teammates and control sometimes. That's what I think it's smart opera need to do always. Mm -hmm. You have both ways and you are good with both of them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the beautiful thing uh, that I can um, like look on both of them, it's um, something that I, I remember, I, I heard it in football. Um, when I look on Zaivu, I feel like it's great guy and good player, very good player, insane. And I look on Sasha. We thought this ground was in the palm of OG's hands to be taking away, but somehow, some way, the Danes come back to steal this one 
and push us to a third and final decider. And Jacob, it comes off the back of the side that we've been criticizing them on, the side where we've seen some holes. Six out of the last 70 rounds, Astralis net in their favor. That was a massive comeback coming in for Astralis. I thought it was done. I thought it was dusted. I thought OG were looking better than Astralis. I thought there was too many missing pieces within the Astralis camp as well. You said they had a good T side. I would agree with you, especially later stages of the game. Glaive was nowhere to be found in the first 20 rounds. Six and 20 on the scoreboard at some point. Then he comes in with this magical clutch with the AK-47 where he's winning a 1v2. And from that point and onwards, it was like the rest of the team believed in the victory. Look at the round history we have here. Prior to these six rounds you were talking about, the only rounds Astralis had actually won were gun rounds and conversion. They had 3-0 mm. in the first half, 3-0 in the second half. And then just at the very end, they turned things around. And I don't like to pinpoint just one player, but I think we have to give the device the incredible impact yeah. he's had in this sixth round. It's like he activated a different mode where he was just not missing any mistakes, any misstep from OG. There was an immediate frag. He clutched it with the AK, he did it with the AWP. To our dismay, he really pulled it back for Astralis. That's great to see. Great That's to incredible. see the once again. Yeah, and, and this time, you know, it wasn't only the CT side. Most of the highlights you're going to see is from the T side. We've been very much praising device for his stellar CT side play. We know he's a known quantity. We know he's a very cerebral AWP player, a guy that never puts a foot wrong, a guy that takes the easy shot and usually hits them. But on the T side, he was forced into a position where he has to hit flicks, Again. where he has to hit nice shots, where he has to actually oh. showcase us that he is maybe in the best individual shape that he's been in a very long time. It was good to see Device take over the server and be the driving force behind this company. I am not messing with you guys. I'm just, I've been keeping up with the scoreline of all these highlights. Currently, the score was 10 to 13, 11 to 13, 12 to 13. It's 14 insane. to 15. We're not making this up. This was pure impact in the finish line for Device. Pure impact. Yeah, he pulled the fuel on the fire exactly when Astralis needed him to. Was there anything else that kind of stood out to you from this T side of Astralis? Considering we have been quite critical, I think fair in our criticism, because it's been uh, looking a little bit rough on those T sides for Astralis. Uh, just to get slightly technical, I guess, uh, I think they realized that Fiku was not having the best of game uh, yeah. on the B sure. side. It felt like whenever OG tried to be aggressive, try to be proactive on B, they were more often than not losing that trade. And then Glade was being given a little bit of map control, a bit of a power play advantage to play with. So I think that was an issue strategically for OG. And again, I, I keep mentioning it. I think the nerves just settled in a little bit. I think whenever OG is cruising with a vast uh, round advantage, everything is good. And Flames is freaking swinging out of smokes and multi-kill people. But when the scoreline gets tighter and tighter and tighter, then these moves kind of disappear and people start to second guess. And I think that's what happened here as well. I do want to give credit to Astralis for the utility usage on a map like Vertigo. Yeah. I feel like that's highly, highly important. And it's sort of like when you clap at the pilot for landing the plane in a way, because you're supposed to do it, right? You're supposed to know your utility. But there's so many teams out there who doesn't. There's so many teams who fails their Molotovs, fails their smoke. But it did feel like Astralis were on top of that. Whenever they got into a bomb site, always have the right smokes down, always were flashing for each other, always made it comfortable, or sorry, uncomfortable for the OG players to get into a retake. You saw Dexter as well. A couple of times he hit some magical shots through smokes, shots that he was not supposed to hit. But that was based on the fact that he was hiding behind a smoke because Astralis actually played well with utility. So it was not only about the individuals, but also as a team, as a cohesion, they came in and they were well prepared. Yeah, you touched upon one of those individuals on the OG side. Flamesy, we have to get some credit to him because, man, he was having one of the gains of his life. But then it gets to those later stages and exactly what you're talking about, the emotional crumble coming out of OG. Um, and as you said, seen it time and time again. And look, it's completely unfair for me to stand here and say, you should have done it in the later stages. You should have done it on the last round. I mean, Flames did everything he could yeah. in this series. Look at how he put OG on track. The amount of time he was the tip of the spare when he was opening situations, finding multi-kills here. He's even pushing the envelope, going into CT spawn to finish rounds. Flames it tried his absolute best. Even on the CT side, he's had great cohesion with Nexa as well. A couple of flashes coming from behind, clearing out middles. He's did it a couple of times here. That's the swing that I was talking about mm. towards middle. And that's when everything was looking great for OG. He calmed down just a little in the last four to five rounds, but still 33 kills. Like, can we really ask for more? No, we can't. We no. can't. It was a fantastic showing from Flamesy, but it also does highlight a problem within the G2 camp. I think a problem we have touched upon before. The fact that all these rifle star players they have within the roster, they can never seem to function at the same time. Flamesy is gonna have a good game. Then Niku, oh, sorry, Neofrag and Fiku is not gonna show up. Then Neofrag will have a great game of Counter Strike, and then Fiku all of a sudden won't be there. It seems like they can never all perform at the same time, and that's a bit of an issue, because when Flamesy is having a game like this, of course you're supposed to win. You're talking about your entry fragger. You're talking about the guy who's in first. You're talking about the guy who creates all the space for the rest of the guys. They got to utilize that. If I'm Flamesy right now, I'm super, super not happy about how that turned out, because you did everything in your power, and the guys around you didn't follow up.
Let's zoom out a little bit and just talk about the wider context for both of these teams. Of course, now we're at one map apiece. We are one map separating one of these teams from heading to the spring finals. And we had this discussion, Jacob, uh, in the Astralis versus NIP game, and you were saying heavily the pressure weighs on Astralis' uh, shoulders, rather. I would say that is still the exact same case coming into this series. Sort of, yeah. Uh, you have to think about the fact that Astralis won't be in Katowice. Yes. So there's going to be a long True. break for them. Sure, they can play some Pro League, but they're in desperate need of success and then desperate need of wins against teams like OG because they need them points in order to claim the rankings so they can get invites for some of the bigger tournaments. Right now, Astralis are in a situation where they've done so poorly for such a long time that they couldn't fucking get an invite to IEM Katowice. So we all erupt from seeing Astralis at that tournament. Let's just hope that's not going to be the case in the future. That's why the pressure is on Astralis right now. Yeah, a little counterpoint. I think this might be more important for Astralis' calendar, but I think the pressure is on OG. I think OG is supposed okay. to win this game. Astralis is rolling sure. up here. Device is barely back in Counter-Strike. Buzz is obviously a, a human decoy in most situations. Obviously, I'm exaggerating here. But this is the situation OG is actually in. When Astralis face NIP and they have Maxer in, this is a completely different situation. OG set. OG have their lineup. This is the moment where they prove to us they can do better than just show up a blast and sort of kind of qualify to spring finals. It's now that you do it. You can't lose to Astralis in the best of three. They also have their map. They have Ancient coming up as a third yes. deciding map. That is OG's map. I think Maui has said it a couple of times. He believes that Nexa is one of the best fracking in-game leaders us on the map of Ancient as well, has a good feeling for it. I think OG themselves, Rocker has said in a couple of interviews that he believes they are one of the best teams in the world on the map. Sure, the win record right here may be a bit deceiving because they've lost a couple of games to Face Clan, who arguably is the one team that you would argue is consistently better than OG on the yes. map. But overall, you walk into a third deciding map, you're up against Astralis mm. with a human decoy and device being integrated into the lineup. Of course you're supposed to win if you're OG. They have to have initiative. I think that's what OG needs to. Mm. Somehow they have to find a way to make this map not be the designing map, whether or not they go to Washington. Just play, play a, a map as you would, as you usually would, as yeah. you have done here mm. plenty of times, with the initiative, with the assertiveness, with Fiku picking down the B lane, trying to fight, getting kills, getting information. If they allow Astralis to roam around the map freely on the T side, Glaive has already shown us against NIP that they know how to utilize the space. They know how to make a defense go crazy. So I think for OG, you have to have the same bravery and courage as you would in any situation. I hope Bus is able to contribute just as much as he was on Vertigo. He was better on Vertigo. That's true. It was terrible on the first map. It's been a terrible tournament overall for him, but he found some uh, contribution sort of on Vertigo. He found a little bit of impact, and if he can take that positive experience, bring it into Ancient, I think there's enough firepower within Astralis. There's enough know-how that it should be a close game. Gentlemen, we haven't done predictions all tournament long, and because this is the final segment we will be doing, I'm going to ask you, who is going to be winning this one, Matthew? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. All right, listen, this is the moment... <laughs> I was Did OG say, just answer your question then? No, they uh, actually, I'm going to go with Australia. Oh, you're going with the Danes. Psych. Jacob, countrymen as well? Yeah, I think, I think they'll win. I think they'll win. Okay, well, uh, two votes for the Danes what here on the desk. But uh, you know what? Just to spit things, I'll go with OG because I there like when we have a lot on the line. And it certainly is so much for both of the squads coming into things. It does go the full nine yards here, and it's coming down on Ancient.
All right, folks, here we are. It's the final map, the final map of the Blast Spring groups. We've had a lot of Counter-Strike this weekend. It's been incredibly good. We've had a lot of individual plays. We've had surprises. We've had letdowns. We've just had it all. But now we get one last cherry on top, one last dish to send us off. Astralis or OG? Spring Finals, Spring Showdown. It's crunch time and it feels like either of these teams got lucky with this opponent. Astralis win the knife round and pick T-Side. Let's go, they start out T-Side Ancient and yeah, there'll be massive regrets for the team who lost this based on the, the maps that we've just saw. I mean, 30 rounds each way, okay. He's moving out quickly, but quietly at the same time out towards the A site. Split coming in, mid's open at the moment. So not the most impressive positions to hold this for OG. But if they stop mid, then it might get interesting. They've got their backs turned to it. At that point, it's worst case, A site retake. Flames, nice trade. You know, big question on the desk. Was it a waste of Flames' performance on Vertigo? Can he manage to keep up that consistency? Device, Ooh, empty handed inside of red. Buzz up next to try and control Donut. Zipix is playing inside the site, so you know that he should get run through and gunned down. Buzz with impact at a distance. Blame F back on main. 2v2, Buzz dives around Donut, just trying to buy time. Dexter connects with the Berettas, and we've got Flame sticking that defuse. 10 second stick is needed, no time. Ooh, that kill locks it up. He could barely see anything. Just enough, though, to lock that headshot in late. Dexter's trade comes in too slow. Buzz delaying inside a donut, holding his attention for that long. Definitely won the round right there. And Astralis start off with a T round. So in their last games, you know, they're 4-1 and one right now, recent maps on Ancients. They've had very strong games versus much weaker competition than uh, OG have played. So even though we know OG on Ancient right now are like taking it to a lot of top teams, they are coming off of two losses. And as was brought up in the interview, uh, in their, since the changes coming in, it doesn't feel like OG have adapted that well. Again, specifically on these last two maps. But Blame F for Astralis, and actually Zipix for Astralis, are the two best performers in their most recent games. Okay. Something to keep our eyes on then when the challenge is meant to begin. Good amount of damage here. Nice effort out of OG's three dead players. But Astralis, he'll just pull the... Hey, do you see those candles? You see that? What happened? The candles popped up in the middle of the smoke. Oh, no, I didn't see it. What the hell's going on in here? Voodoo magic. Dexter will find Glaive, so it's one. That was him walking out a main. But then, of course, confirmed that B is completely clear, so get going. All yours for the taking. Bomb has been planted. Dexter, of course, out opt on Vertigo. He was. He was clearly respecting Device in a big way, and Device was killing him more times. And you know what Device's playstyle, it just never gets more explosive. That one try against Neofrag where he ran through, that was the one time I think that it boiled over and he felt like he had to take control of things. And actually from there, continue to frag, and then they win 16-14 off of a comeback. So, yeah, I mean, Device was very much back in that game. Like, he looked good throughout every kill, moved the round forward. He lost that one clutch to Dexter. I think that was the thing that Dexter can look back on and think, thank God that happened at least. Mm. So it doesn't look like I got completely dominated, but honestly, in terms of impact, it was really more about device, and it's very hard for offers these days to have a more impactful map than Dexter with his consistency. Yeah. One of the offers, obviously, that device would be returning to with no previous experience playing against. Dexter making a name for himself in device's absence. Time to take back that top spot. Device's Galil, gonna get a couple kills here, so listen, Pistol's getting more than they ever should. But the bomb will go down at the B site. Blame F. Gonna come wide here and finish off Dexter. Fiku could catch Zipix, but won't. It's a nice clean kill from Zip. Trying to outperform everybody else. Trying to 
prove that the experience is worth. Yeah, and so Zipix is sort of an unlikely, unlikely star as well because most of his stats are, aren't really trending in the right direction, but specifically with Ancient and a couple of their games, it was the Blame F top frag and then Zipix top fragging on two maps, which is cool to watch, especially since this is uh, the second newest map to the pool. It's been some time since, of course, the Straws were in their peak form. Blame has really loved this map, even before he was on Astralis. Kind of thrown into it on complexity. Yeah, he's made, got a gap. Yeah, made a name for himself with the... Especially the seats he plays between him and Config. Uh, just dominating mid-control. Here's a nice find from Flame Thief. Makes the most of that one. Drops Blame in the first buy-up from OG. Dexter. No need to panic. Playing that close angle. Again, one of his, you know, areas of expertise. These distanced fights. Combat opping, they call it. Digster, the king of it. Now, the bomb is still tucked inside a main on its own. Astralis are trying to size up this B site to just cause some kind of a rotation. It is working. Neofrag starts to peel away. Dexter's going to take Donut instead. Maybe they're not leaving, though. They could just reposition. Yeah, still hanging around to the 35-second mark. This is going to be Device's chance to activate. Yeah, if they work hard enough, Neofrag could leave. They still have Donut control, but he has... He feels the need to protect Dexter. And, of course, with these smokes coming out, I mean, this is a last chance to try to pull that rotation. Neofrag does move. It's working. Glaive dies, but they know there's still one inside of Donut. And Dexter... Starts to split his oh. aim. Wow, so much damage here. That's great. I mean, but look, there's no way that smoke it device can plant safely. Oh, he does have full. You just smoke it. Simple as that. Instead, he goes for the duel, and he's gonna die for it. So he wanted the kill, and then maybe then the smoke is worth even more. I don't know. But uh, OG, guns up, and a round win with it. Yeah, it wasn't safe because he didn't know if anybody was temple. He didn't know if anyone was CT. Just walked onto the site. Nearly read the setup. But this angle is great because it covers the close and far position. But and it also can dodge flashes. Another value of it. OG very comfortable on this map. And uh Vertigo 0 2 again for both Astralis and OG. And now it's OG who are actually 0 3 on Vertigo. Even if it was close, it wasn't a win. And a versa team that has probably had a throw together practice recently mm -hmm. and hasn't seen success. So there's still some work to do for them. And when it comes to Dexter feeling uncomfortable on the map, that's one thing. He's not uncomfortable on Ancient. This is definitely one of his best maps. And early on with the op, we're not going to see him sitting on long every single round. He's going to be very active. Already off to a flying start as well. Seven and two. AK Mac 10 pistols. A little bit jumbled inside of spawn. But Zipix still able to find some cave presence. Go ahead, tuck in. You can see they have Dexter in the same spot. They're spotting Donut from this position to see the mid cross, but they're really hoping it's the three active riflers in the site. This early warning system setup. Neofrag takes some damage. Yeah, I don't know. Wait, what? From mid to donut? Did he peek out that far? I didn't see wow. it. Wow, I don't know. I didn't see it. But I did notice that Buzz switched his Glock to burst and back within earshot of Nexa. And then OG go and peek down there just a couple seconds after having Astralis push through red. They're gonna hear this stampede of players and flames can't cheat around the side of that smoke like he did towards mid. Zipix just gonna barrel down Dexter and flames. It's a one and done. That deep A main control gets taken Ooh. back because we've got Buzz on off. Zip is planting bomb and Fiku falters. Astralis slicing through the CT spawn and just storming that bomb site so quickly that Dexter gets nothing. 
Nexa gonna return this kill at least. He has no smoke for the bomb, but at least the flash to try and blind Buzz deep main. And it's a weird angle. Oh, but Buzz comes back. You never see him off. But looks like we're glad when he does. That was a great first shot versus Long into closing the round as well. So a, a good call. I mean, they managed to wait long enough to get some rotations back. They got Neofrag off his position, and it was a very flimsy defense from the donut spot and Dexter over towards A. Again, you could tell OG just really wanted to focus on B and get some ability to know when they should rotate early, but they didn't even get in time, right? They got flame smoked out inside a middle as Astralis got Neofrag back and made them regret not moving faster. They do that with a mixed buy too. Vice has really launched himself into the ramp right now. GT's playing back. Flames tucked MP9. Flames not looking. Flames barely survives it, but at least he can grab the upgrade. It's just that they've lost this other bomb site. Now they know no one's here, and Zipix, he could be the key piece of the puzzle. Fiku burned back. Zip's got to clear every corner. Ooh, MP9 besting two separate AKs and Fiku being forward in that next room. That's going to be Glaive's death. Buzz again trying to claw this back. We saw that off impact in the round prior. This would be a 2v5 post plant and Device is going to draw them away from Buzz. He gets his eyes back on short. Buzz is holding his own. He's locked off this site and then Nexa gets the better of the Opper, but Buzz is coming in big with impact. Oh. Buzz cuts them down. Yeah, he shaves them off one at a time. Beautifully done between him and his teammate on the ramp. It's been some time, I feel like, since we've seen a round like that from Buzz and that is... What, a 2v5? Straight up? 2v5. Wow. I mean, the shots were great. This one saves the day. Everybody dies up until this point. And he doesn't overextend from this position. And the confidence in this last duel as well. He could have tried to go into the smoke and done the weird thing where you delay for time and risk getting spammed down. Instead, he held it with confidence and took a confident player down. Already six rounds deep. OG calling a tack, and there would be some egg on their face to drop the series at this point. The fact that they won Inferno, the fact that they took the risk of picking mm -hmm. Vertigo and then came so close. Poor Flamesy did everything that he possibly could last map. Now in hindsight, man, it felt like we did get a little foreshadowing pregame interview with Zipix and Banks. And Zip said, listen, their ancient's not that great. Identified since the changes, it hasn't been the best. They win knife round. Astralis want to play their T side. Prep's coming in big. We got that really cool CT hit. A nice individual level of comfort inside that B site for a 2v5. I mean, if you just watch Inferno, you would think Astralis are a bad team. And right now, already in some of these T rounds, there's so much more cohesion. There's a great tempo. There's clearly an agreement about when they need to hit something together. They're trusting each other. We just saw them win a 2v5 in the B site. Even Buzz is already better. Wow. He's starting to turn up, man. 10 and 3. Better late than never. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ambitious from Device. And you got to be careful when it comes to Dexter. Yes. You give him a little don't too much. Him. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't taunt him. He's polite, but don't taunt him. A lying start here for Astralis. On a map, we could have very easily seen the second in this series. And they already managed to get Vertigo out of the way. This is no longer OG story to tell. The power has changed hands. Another full buy. And I, I like the atypical attacks. I mean, not running out a main we're definitely going to see og with a lighter play style in the sense of moving very quickly here the de defaults are pretty comprehensive for astralis but even doing things like splitting through mid towards the a site it's one thing to try it but to make it look as good as they did in that last round that says a lot oh, awareness oh. on the angles we'll see oh my god damn man that timing could have welcomed something Oh, Device gets the better of Flames. And he gets out. And they don't run through this. 
Blame wins space here inside a red. And they're just going to leave Buzz inside main. Yeah. It's like a fly in the room, and Dexter, he knows. He can hear the buzzing. He wants to try to deal with this right now. He's going to clear this angle off. Oh, my God. Surely. Yeah, nice clear. And Astralis, they had hooks in multiple sides of this map. They lose their footing in mid. Neofrag still going to be pinned on top of platform. We do get the three CT stack inside B site, but that's not where Bomb's going. Zipix makes a bit of sound. Not at all. And they aren't peeking down the ramp. Buzz, does he clear it? Looking he likely. Is. Oh, oh, no. He doesn't. Doesn't clear close. Luckily, we get this smoke. Oh, they get the deep. op. And Neofrag, well, now he can just push into A main. But, I mean, there's going to be three sets of eyes. All they have to do is make sure Bomb goes down. And then maybe they can come and run at him. The other counter-terrorist still hesitant because they're smoked off from spawn. So Glaive, going to keep them sectioned out of it. Fiku in the open, trying to clear so many corners. It's such a cautious approach, but it has to be when it comes to Ancient and when it comes to taking back your own spawn. Oh, they get caught jiggling. Neofrag does what he can. I mean, They're he out. gets his kill, he gets to safety, and he holds on to a very important post my position for Astralis, but he needs his teammates to do the rest. And when Glaive kills the opera inside a middle and smokes out the rotations, it's just Groundhog Day. The exact same situation takes place as we saw earlier on. Seven to one. Ooh. Kills now on the exits. Glaive started slow on Vertigo. Ended strong. Starting strong here on Ancient. Things are changing. There's an electricity in the air right now. There is. And much like Flames, even though Device didn't get as many kills as him, it was more of a hard carry from Flames. Device was the reason if there was one player in that second half that Astralis were able to make that happen. You know, right from that round where he jumped up and turned that op into a shotgun, took out Neofrag, and was sick of losing that opportunity over and over again, losing rounds in the same way, he broke the pattern. He got the 2k to close the game. He dropped the one clutch, but outside of that, he had great rounds over and over again. And now he's got some help. Now, even though these changes have helped out the T side, the map has still been by the numbers CT sided. You gotta think the quota has been met already from Astralis. In what feels like 10 minutes. We get multiple bodies outside Donut. OG gonna be trying something with a bit more oomph in their step. Cave is looking clear. I mean, you could transition into the B hit right here, right now. It's just that smoke down on ramp keeps them away. Of course, an extra gun picked up for OG. They'll nice. reap the rewards of getting aggressive in middle, and they have all the information in the world. Now, the one evacuation plan here that could actually work is you go to mid if you're Astralis. There is a clear path, but instead they're going to try to take it into the bomb site. Now, there's nobody occupying site. <gasps> what? He said you wanted to go for the totem. <laughs> They try to put up a boost and they just get railed. Device gonna land a very clean shot, but the Nexa takes the place of Flames. And of course, there's that other player here already trying to walk up on Longside. Glaive, oh, he guns down Dexter with the headshot. And Nexa's only working with 12 HP. OG took the fight to them, had them boxed in, but who else than Glaive, than Glaive yeah. to find that smoke spam and an extra. Yeah, the extra ended it. Nexa will take this. It's his big reward of the round to be able to save with the op. They could try to chase him. He's too far away. Glaive's Bond. Glaive and Buzz are top frag. Yeah, it's just like, based on this series, these are the two least likely suspects from the last two maps that you would think will be starting to take over. But here's a key move. He's, he's definitely looking for it. Pretty fortunate, but... That is the risk of boosting behind that smoke. It's not the first time someone's tried that. Sure. Take your shot. In this case, two bullets. First one's between the eyes. All right, OG. Listen, there was life on a round that only had a couple guns at the start of it. Yeah, they won this mid attack last time. They had less to, less to lose last time, however. You, you normally see that energy with pistols and a mixed buy. 
do something quick, but we haven't exactly seen OG comfortable trying that. We have full purchases. Takes her nice and deep still in middle, but also floating between mid and B. We watched OG pick up the mid fight when they got aggressive, when they pressed down, and when there weren't three players here. Blade makes contact, smoke in front of them, and that's going to stall out Astralis for now. Astralis looking locked in. Get Blade in the, in the exact same position. Ooh. Huge flash. Out there. But Degster, this is still a line that you can hold. The Blame's going to smoke them off. Now they're going to transition into what looks like a B split. Are they trying to trick them into turning away? I'm not even sure exactly. Or yeah, they are starting to make the okay. A player go all the way around. So yeah, they are looking for the B split. Wow. And they've got three towards the A site. And they've oh! got the kills. Blade gills both at the same time. And then Blame F just doubles back. He'll get stopped by Dexter, but Astralis. One knife picked T side. They've got tricks up their sleeve. They created a hinge out of mid and allowed them to close one door and open another on a dime. That was really well orchestrated, and there was full trust in that because it was a reaction. It was a change of plans once they had information. They were ready to split A, and they turned it over towards the B site and looked like they were ready with the same strength to do both. And that is much harder than it looks. And then Bla Blave's individual skill right now. I mean, what? Strat's in his back pocket. And his hands on the lever of the guillotine. Double headshot into that B site. And I was sat there thinking like, oh, cool play. But Nexa sat on the boxes, red, you know, crosshairs in the right place. Glaive comes around that corner, kills the guy in the back first, I believe. Well, to be honest, I think the best part about this. this was even if Glaive, oh. let's say Glaive dies, right? Both are spotted. Both are here. And this full B split is not just the players coming out of CT spawn, right? There's a full B split with K potentially coming in, mm -hmm. B main, and they they split this site because they knew there was only two here. Otherwise, it would have just been A again, like we saw previously. They've got OG holding their pockets right now. I'm shocked. And OG stunned. Excellent nade damage into device. That'll deter the op play from middle. Good. Again, OG. We've seen them successful in these mid presences. Oh, the amount of time that they've gotten window control. They just keep going, though. Yeah, they let him get lodged in. And they're coming in for the reclear. Flames, he's going to do this properly. Oh, no. He skips a step. He goes a little high. Oh, Fiku. It looked like he was looking at radar or something. Yeah, yeah. At least react. Oh, oh but Blame's oh. nade. And Blame goes oh. deep. They're done. They're dead. Over top the Flames. They are getting roasted. Whoa. Got Ruga's head and hands right now. In shambles. They are getting absolutely decimated. Same play into mid. Same setup lodging someone into the window. Same clear coming out of OG. This time a punish. Even when they haven't been able to punish, they've still been able to win from this spot. Taking over mid late. They've watched the demo or two. They see the holes and gaps from OG. They're not shooting blindly right now. Zip called this in the pregame interview. We're not afraid of Ancient. They're not even that good. Well, I thought maybe he'd eat those words, but right now, Astralis proving their worth. Neofrag gonna try his absolute damnedest. Teammate coming over to help. Nice push out from Nexa, but he exposes himself to Zipix and Dexter. Gonna draw the line in the sand. Here comes big bad Blame F. Flames tucked back in Donut. Blame resides in smoke. And as that fades, his hopes at an all-time high has to clear right. Does so. Oh, gets the headshot. 
and he can just go for this. He can sprint, okay. leave, and hope to pull off the clutch. Oh, they're not moving at all. They just want to be careful to make sure that they're not going to look like fools. Flame, he's going to take a risk here. He runs almost all the way in. Maybe going to jiggle for the op. If there is going to be one, they're trying to play this together. Respecting Blame. He doesn't have much health. But he's such a strong competitor in these moments. Somehow gets the magical second frag. Mm -hmm. And they know it. And with things going south right now for OG, they've got to catch some wind. They've got a molly, they got a smoke, and they're getting closer. They're doubled up, but they're making a lot of sound. They're sectioned off. They're looking at Cave. He pulls the trigger. Oh my god. If he had just a bit it's more health, thin. then maybe he gets back. Blame F. You can't ask for much more than that. Two kills and almost a chance to get away. Yeah. And what does he lose? What does he give away? OG's second in 12. In 12. And uh, they come out of this round with one player alive. So even though they've got max loss onto the win, they're... Playing to zero every round. And it's Dexter's spin around. I mean, he can't even see at that point. That's completely off screen. He just reacts. Blame almost gets away with it. This is a straw that's working at full strength, right? Every single piece of the puzzle is coming together in the way that they imagined it when they put these five together. Oh, geez. Like, why did it have to happen today, though? No, you know what's crazier about that? It, it, when you imagine this all coming together, you don't imagine Glaive and Buzz at the top. Glaive does. Incredible. 12 and 6, 11 and 5 is Buzz. Yeah. And Degster, you know, you alluded to the fact that this is a great map for him, and yes. he's finding his impact. He's 13 and 8. He just got that 1v1, the little that was left of blame. He has been problematic for them, whether he's up in top middle, whether he's fighting towards Donut. It's just the rest of OG are in free fall. And Astralis are playing a world-class ancient. Device opens up. Fiku's dead already. Uh -oh. The op pressuring into the ramp. A lot of info with that push, too. Two coming down. Flame? Not again. Okay, Flames will deal with him. This time waiting for that push to come in. Dexter? Clean. Down goes Zipix. We got a man advantage, OG. We've also got a commitment here from Astralis by the looks of it, but the smoke grenades, that's going to stop them. Yeah, it's nice and early. Too plump to come through. If they were halfway through it, it looks like they were going to set this up. No one likes defaulting again, especially when you're down numbers, but they'll have to respect it. Still over a minute. OG's full attention, thinking the re-aggression might come. They've spread the map, but really important piece of disrespect here from OG. Call them out. Get moving. Buzz, bomb on his back. For the moment, way far ahead of his teammates. Oh, Next, someone's uh, watching. Oh, he could get caught off by this. Oh my yep. god. Clean. That's 3v3. They just did not expect that timing. Nexa, that's a big mistake. Creates some uncertainty here for OG to try and deal with. Dexter's going to play ramp. Opens up the possibility of the cave play. And if Buzz can stay deep in red room, then that'll cut off rotate. So we'll see if Dexter's play here pans out. Yes, it Woo. does. He just sat back, waited to hear that utility. Buzz can throw the Hail Mary, but there's not even time to grab Bomb and Plant. So unfortunately for him, this one fizzles out. All the makings were there. If Degster is playing inside of caves, if Degster is here on long, if he's in the bomb site, he's not going to stop Astralis and, in and, that moment. And that's why Degster does have impact, because mm -hmm. he hates standing behind smokes. And that's not to say he waits in them and does weird things like that. No, he plays in front of them. He tries to play for information whenever he can. And in this spot, they come through the double push, but he's, he lingers, and he's ready to fight them. And he knows he can swing that because it's so unlikely in a low number spot that he would be there ready to make this play. But he saves the day completely. OG looking for, like, a respectable half. If they can get five, it's not great, but... But it's something. It's something, yeah. It's something to try and fight with. And I feel like this is a little bit reminiscent to the likes of Inferno, where OG were able to just rack up a few oh rounds at god. the end of the half. If they're not careful, Glaive could literally kill them both. Oh, oh my god, okay, Fiku comes underneath. And Neofrag with another. Cautious of the donut push. Long distance fight here for Blame. 
and the Fomus is going to come out on top. Device, Tunnel Vision towards the top of middle. OG are not going to let Astralis get away with everything. Yes. Four on the board, and not the best money for Astralis. Five looking likely. Okay. Well, again, that's something. It'll have to be a comeback. Astralis have fared very well in the pistols, actually. Mm-hmm. Another scary thing to think about. Thanks for reminding them one round at a time. Keep it happy, keep it light. Zip plays P90. Meant to be at the front of this push, but easy pickup from Fiku. Sit down. P90. You get what you deserve. <laughs> Listen, Astralis came out swinging. Pistol round win, just like on Vertigo. Won both pistols, converted for a full six rounds. There were some great calls in there. Really nice. And not only great calls from this T side of Astralis, but a great step up in individual levels from the likes of Glaive and Buzz. And now Device is getting up there, 10 kills. Blame F's playing a bit of catch up. And they have the CT side of Ancient on the other side of that halftime break. One final attempt with those flashes, but this 15th round looking to fall flat. Tech nine, not enough. It's double digits Astralis on the T side and it's spring finals locked in at the end of the next half. It has been an absolutely incredible year of Counter-Strike. So now we need to take a moment to reflect in our world's team of the year. Joining me up here on the desk, we've got Machu and Pimp as always. But Launders joining us up here. Great to have I'm you. I'm back, baby. Launders. Got I'm the one that's not dressed correctly, I think, for this desk. I rate the shirt, though. Did you get that? Was that in London? Or... Yes, I got yeah. it in your hometown. Yeah. Nice. London represents. <laughs> London, London is our city. got a lot to offer. Yeah, London is, is incredible. But also, we've had a lot of incredible Counter-Strike throughout 2022. Of course, our World Team of the Year. We've got six categories, five nominations in each. Uh, and this time, instead of Pimp letting you decide who's going to be winning, we've actually got some proper experts uh, from some journalistic resources as well. We've got HLTV, Dust2, uh, we've got Dot Esports as well. They've all decided who should be taking home the crown in each of our given categories. Uh, Matthew, I like that we've got these different categories to kind of decipher. I feel like, though, they're not necessarily limited, maybe as they were when Counter-Strike was first released. Obviously, Orpip's very self-explanatory. Mm. You have to be playing with the AWP. But things like support, Lurker, it's, you know, kind of up to interpretation how we're going to be viewing those. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. I think there are some categories that are set in stone. We all know what an Orpip is. We all know what an IGL is. And there are some that are a little bit more fluid, right? And I also don't think that any team now has a special role for a player and that is it. I mean, usually you can kind of see the pattern and the structure, but players have to be able to do multiple things to be the only. And also what I like about what's coming in is that if the journalists have decided, we could just shit talk the, the decisions. <laughs> we could disagree live yeah. on air. That's going to be great. Yeah, they're real, already said he's the real experts. Yeah. Yeah. Real yeah. Experts. yeah, they're the ones that get the heavy stats, you know, get yeah. those articles yeah. out there. Yeah. Absolutely love that. Um, let's go into our first category. That is uh, quite a strong one because it is going to be coach coming into things. Uh, we've got obviously five nominations. So that one is going to be played. So Cyclone Groove and Robban. Launders, I want to get your thoughts, first of all. Any if it's not Blade, I'm going to throw something. <laughs> You're gonna throw Jacob's pop. Why is that already reveal? Like I'm going so fast. <laughs> Just reveal after eight uh, seconds. Okay, to high overview for for coaches of the year. Results are the things that matter most most for coaches. Um, so, so it is Robin, in fact. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> do you think do you think that's how it's gonna go, Jacob? Uh, no, I, I don't think I don't think we we truly know how much Robin actually has an say in in face claim. Double digits Astralis, and it wasn't the CT side that they kicked this off with. A knife round win meant they wanted to kick it off with the offense, and boy, did they ever kick it in, that is. OG's head rattled after the first 15, but this is a map that they have grown accustomed to, that they lean on Degster for, 
And he did perform 16 and 8, despite only winning five rounds in that half. And so don't expect him to fall off. But can we say the same about Glaive, about Buzz? Will Device and Blame F manage to pick it up? And will this A site crumble in the pistol? It's Beretta's up close, and they get away from Blame. Buzz, minimal cover here on the box. Neofrag a second already. Zipix can't hang on. No kills, and his donut support smoked off. Nothing. More Berettas, and Glaive doubles back through that smoke. There's a ton of damage here. But it's a bomb plant, and Glaive, who's already impressed us. Oh, oh my god! Collaterals 2! Turns it on to Fiku! And 69 health! Down to just 8! Glaive! So close, but so far away! Nobody could keep up with that moment. Which one's Tom Cruise again? <sighs> They're all looking like action stars. <laughs> Wow. Well, this is the hard part. But Fiku's known to put together a good pistol or two. And he locks up a key one. And now I did say Astralis have fared well in pistols in the series, but here on Ancients, they're actually they've only won three out of the ten that they played, even though they won the last four maps that they played. Struggling there. However, their CT side is also by far their stronger side. Still, tons of pressure on OG. All this does is make it interesting. Now, I could tell you what OG are going to try to do on this map, and it's a lot of what we're seeing right here and now. The A side hits with five, maybe late lurks. Again, this is where the contact explode came in more than any time else. And we'll see if Astralis, if Zipix goes in an interview and says they're not as good as they think. Or they're not actually that good on Ancients? Well, I think exposing this game plan, I think, is where that will prove it. And again, coming in confident. A couple of these wins, single digit. Versus their opponents. They took down Ents. But it's been a while back, and this is the second they'll play it on land. Last team that they beat was Ninjas here at the Spring Groups. That was 16-10. Curious to see if Device can get back to that op dominance we saw on Vertigo. Yeah. And meanwhile, OG are trying to recover their reputation as a very strong ancient team after these last two losses. Dexter refers to the notes ahead of this first gun round. See what we're what I just mentioned. A lot of this can come down if they read it, but. This is what they always do. Same angle as Dexter for this position. Oh, it's pressure. It's a missed second shot, but a flash meant to save him. And then the spam out of Buzz. That's the X factor. That's that little bit that could convince Astralis to still come through. Fiku barely alive. Flash finds the eyes, but Nexa, a double. And Glaive, again, a chance to shine, but now at half health, Neofrag point blank dead. And Fiku makes the difference. Ooh, he goes for the fast cross. Fiku serving up the 2K. And it's actually his teammate's flash he's turned from, I think. Nexus, that comes in. It looked like Astralis threw a scaling flash. It actually almost messed them up. And Fiku would have died. And Buzz's kill right here allows the retake to be possible. No! Sorry, Fiku's flash. Nexa taking those two down. Great start. Good position for a device to be ready for it with a teammate behind him, but the guy behind him gets nothing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't allow him to get back on cycle duo for a second shot. He shoots the first one a little too early as well. Ooh, Glaive shut out. Oh, gee, you're going to make Astralis work for this. The same way Astralis did to them. Flame soon to be in a bit of a pinch. OG just group up. Vice Deagle at the top of the ramp. Missed headshots. So 
They're just gonna push inwards. Smoke grenade means Astralis cannot stop this bomb from going down without Lady Luck. And it's safely tucked in behind the pillar. Flames, Neofrag, finding these kills off the AKs. We're talking five up for OG. Yep. Getting through pistols, making sure that there's conviction and a killer pace to some of these rounds. Hell yeah. This will be an explosive close to the match. Now OG stacking the money high. Again, throw it back to Inferno. Started off, kind of felt uninspired from OG. You let him back in at the end of the second half. The first half. You can just tap the bomb to try to bring him back to it. I don't know. They just played so much more aggressive once they got to that T side. Again, four player packs. Rugga had his head in his hands in the middle of that first half. Yep. It was getting bad. Deflated. Because of that lead, there still is one, despite OG winning the second pistol, recovering near the end. But it feels like that self-belief is at least existent. Yes. In the first 15, their pulse nearly flat. We get a good mid-push coming out of Astralis. Box control, device, he'll find Dexter. Zipix pulls the trigger on the spam. Flames pinned against the wall. Easy pickup for Zipix. He already did so much damage. And so he's out, not only with the ramp kill, but then the ramp aggression. And they're not watching, but they do get away. Or so it seemed. Nexa locked into the caves, but he loses his teammates just five feet behind him because Zipix gets that better of flames. We see OG stop watching ramp and open the door to aggression. Yeah, it's so early into the round. They're down to two people, which both means that's a depressing situation for the T's, but also there's a chance that they can find a way back into this. They might give it a shot. Again, they've made some money off of these anti-ecos. Really good start to this half. Meanwhile, Astralis spent every single dollar. Twice got that opening kill on the ramp, falls back to this passive angle to sit and wait. We'll shake hands on mid. Forget it that, that ever happened. Exactly where Dexter went down. Trying to push past this line from Device. Now it's smoke. Now they're in, or so they seem to be. Glaive, not going to give them that respect. Not going to give them the real estate. And not going to let them tie this game. Yeah. Astralis, maintain lead. Whoa. Like whack-a-mole. Wait, did Dexter have an off? I believe so. Damn. That's a pretty insane shot, actually. Just clipped the top of his head. Yeah. And Zipix, it looked like he was going to go down on dignified fashion with a flash coming in after he gets all that spam damage. And then he comes to just in time. Flash isn't quite good enough. Yet flames he had to dodge. Deeper angle. Yes. But you don't have teammate any vision. Up. Once that Molly burns, yeah, he's got to give it up. No teammates. Yeah, no teammates. So he can't play it exactly the same. At least has to allow for the fallback position. Flash is going to go over now. You got to expect this. Oh, nice bait. Smokes come over. CTs lose control of that bomb site in an instant. It costs OG nothing more than the smokes to block off Donut. Safe plant out of flames. Device can do nothing about it. 5v5 in the post, but the back line's now compromised. Yeah, and if door. you've got Buzz and Blame F on the flank, what? Flames not ready for that fight. Now all of a sudden, OG may have pushed into the bomb site. They may have taken over Temple, but they're compromised. They're outnumbered. They're surrounded. And Fiku up top just wants them to walk out. Shuts Fuck down gets first. Another. Zipix out with the trade. Nexus chance to shine, but no health. So low and so out of bullets. Device on top of the bomb, but it's all about the time. Does he have it? Oh, it's close, but no. OG take 10. Oh, they delayed long enough. No kits because Astral, did they not have enough money? They have some saved. Oh my God. Is that a buying mistake of the two of them? There are three kids on the floor, certainly. Buzz! He just runs through them. The full flank opened up on top of two key kills in this position and even gets a third in the site before Fiku can take him down, knowing where he was. I don't 
don't see kits on any of those players. Well, I mean, yeah. Now, I mean, they, they have money to buy again. That is, uh... Would be a pretty crazy reason to lose a round. Because they're coming off a one-round win, right? Where they had five alive. Yeah, they won the last four. Game. But valid point. Yeah. Okay. Don't be a tit by a kit. I asked production if we can have someone in replay get down to the bottom of it. We gotta know. We know, we know. They had four alive. They had one rebuy and the win bonus, so... No kit. Was it just too frantic? They couldn't find it. I don't know. They'll have to live with that. Round 21 belongs to OG. Via time. The retake looks sick. I mean, the fact Flames gets caught off in A main, that's a little sketchy. All about Buzz. Yeah, he was just so quick after the first kill. Flames, like, thought he had a second to get organized. Caught him slipping. Ooh. Ooh. Speaking of slipping. Okay. Flame F to the wayside. Buzz it bad again. Flash goes deep. It's fantastic. Can he get more than one? They're coming back at him. They want that trade. A1S goes dry. Glaive turns attention onto Donut, worried about main, but that's not his problem. However, he burns somebody in the background at the same time. So he ends up equalizing this at a 2v2. Viku, he's gotten covered by Nexa. Oh, Zipix! In with the insta headshot. And Fiku, who clutched in the pistol, now has to do it versus two. Gets back into main. And because they lost vision of sight, he could be temple. He could be just cowering behind some kind of a box. But you'd think a main makes sense. And this time, kit on Zipix. This time, device with smoke. He's going to put that on top of the bomb. Opens a door for Fiku to come out on the flash. One tap. He challenges. Zipix has to get back on this. Device needs to give cover. No! They do it again! Nexa said they wanted to set Fiku up to be the closer. And what a time to deliver. If that was his wish. Well, it's 11-11 for OG. Versus now no buy. After this, it looked over. They could have swung with two. They trusted the front player. That smoke. And the smoke is bad. This is a fired up OG. OG getting amped. And it's an Astralis who have watched their lead disappear. In classic heartbreaking Astralis fashion, they're on the back foot. Quick little push down the ramp. It's a bunch of damage and an easy cleanup from Nexa. They're gonna waste no time. Go ahead, transition to the hit. Buzz, Deagle, connects. A second. What? But then that cave play comes out. And if Neofrag's not there, I'm telling you, Buzz, on the brink of another. Blame F with a chance to shine. But off the mark at first. Frag grenade could get some damage in. Sure enough, lowers Degster. And that bomb safely behind Pillar. Blame F will take his invitation to exit. And OG will take that invitation to a lead. Yes. Well, Buzz is playing without pressure, man. It felt like he was playing out of preparation in those first two maps, in a lot of the maps here in group, but here he's totally just, it feels like, lifted his shoulders of all the stresses of those previous losses. Maybe he's resigned to the idea that he could have lost this match already, and so why be worried? Why be, why be scared? Playing to not lose is, of course, the worst thing that you can do. But it's so much easier said than done. But either way, it's OG with a lead. Three alive. The buy will come in from Astralis. Anybody can win this game. We already saw Astralis lackluster in Vertigo into an insane close. Not even needing overtime to win that match. OG, no, that could happen again. Guns back in. Met by fire, Doing flames. The same, same calls again here from OG, but they've been working. We've seen Device play on the front of that main entrance. They're prepped specifically for this round. Look at the okay. setup right now with okay. three players. 
It had to be changed. It didn't feel like that AWP on its own was going to be enough. And the retake was one thing, but they still lost that round. So this is different. Blame F trying to set him up. Buzz from around the box, single kill, but at least it gives Blame a chance at second serving. Stegster goes over top that backside. He very well will catch them off. Blame F losing track of the situation. Degster clambering over boxes, getting into the corner, and then creating a crack in this defense. Neofrag, he's got the flank. He's getting closer, but Device still takes one down. The trade's there at least. Glaive, who's played out of his mind, has Bomb in front in the open, and knowledge to their positions. But they're gonna use that util, try and come in. A clean headshot out of Glaive, his 23rd frag, and he's gone. Oh, he knows as well that he can play this in a couple of different ways. It's the long con. Neofrag will molly this out. I think he'll be aware of the potential donut rotation on the box. Does he feel like he can move? Smoke comes down. Is this a, is this a saving grace? Is this an invitation to just come through? Neofrag turns back. Glaive, sitting duck. Oh. Neofrag ends the hopes of Astralis. A new setup, an opening kill, a chance. But Degster from the back of that corner draws it back. They had a double layer rifle defense with donut control, with device in that position. Normally they've been playing one here. They paid for that error too many times. And now they literally triple up and still lose. And I guess we see why OG are comfortable doing this again to basically every single team. They stayed patient, won their trades. And now can maybe win the map. Astralis evening out the money. Blame the one good gun. Draw a score at 60% on CT side in their last five maps. Did too much on T side and now it's not enough on CT. It's not the story you would expect. They've got one win in the nine of this defense. That A site's completely clear. Go for a bit of a gamble. Let's blame F. Excuse me, I forgot about him. He's real deep. We haven't seen something this aggressive. Fiku, oof, rounds the corner, but goes down at the cost of half of Blame's health. And now they've shifted pistols into oh position. My God. A bit of heroics coming through. Glaive with the flash. They've got them corralled, and the T's have to fight out for Bomb. Degster again trying to save the day. Blame F no longer in main. Didn't waste a second. Instead, he sits behind this box, and he is just holding for the perfect moment, and that moment is about to come. 20 seconds on that clock. Dexter has Bomb, gets back into the donut, but he needs to come back into this. They have perfect spots. Don't move a muscle. How are they going to figure this out? Nexa has to give the cover. This is the only place he can plant. If Playmap peaks right, it does get stopped. There's still seven seconds. Nexa, hand's gonna be busy, and here comes that 5-7. He gets the frag, but the trade's from Zip, and Astralis back in with a win. Positionally perfect. The statue of Blame sitting on his favorite angle there with the one gun of the round on top of the positions opened up because they have control of that. Buzz sitting here. Would it be possible without Blame? Glaive in that position. Zipix coming in on the flank. All due to them playing around their one rifler. These are the ideas you want to see on their force buys. Variation. We didn't see any ingenuity when it came to their Inferno force buys. Nothing. They were playing 2-3 to sites, waiting, losing rounds. That's Ooh. it right there. One final timeout. And even though OG lose this round, they still have a one round lead. They're still in critical territory. But Mo, they're kind of broke. They can, they can, they have a round to work with. Do 10 right things in a row, make one mistake and lose the game. Two rounds now, we get different setups in that A site. We're at the point of the game where you're going to be racked with guilt if you lose, no matter what happens, because it's so close that if you played it back a hundred times, it would be near 50-50. Who plays better that day? Who's feeling it? Who made less errors? Waymath, not gonna waste a moment. 
Not gonna waste a bullet. Neofrag gets popped. Blame can sit on this pedestal all day long. He's got a teammate down beneath him for support. Glaive and Buzz still topping this scoreboard. Ooh, easy pick up here. Blame F. Just waiting around, waiting for the chance oh. to strike. OG want any kill that they can get, man. Every little moment matters right now. Economy could play a factor. Astralis almost perfect. One death, tie game. Two maps already, 16 14. Oh my god, yeah. It would be 90 rounds to get to Washington. Losing this series is not going to feel good. Expecting a full on eruption from the winners. Both of these orcs starved for wins like this. Oh, oh my god. With just enough bullets. Are you telling me that Blame F? Punished instantly. In the final few rounds, is all of a sudden going to crank that dial, throw his name See, back into the hat? That's why Astralis wins 60% of the CT rounds. Blame F top fragging CT side consistently. And he has yet to show teeth in this match. In this map. Oh, it's clean. It's so clean. Whoa, the 5v4, they go for an aggressive move. Is it worth? This is uh, Nexa. This is an opportunity for Nexa. How's he going to think about this? Zipix with an AUG. And no kidding, an AUG might be the best gun you could possibly have on this angle. They have donut control. They would have loved to have the two riflers versus the same hit coming in previously. But they've got one down early from Blame F. Astralis kind of know what's coming, but they did last yep. time as well. They've got to be able to stop it. Blame F preoccupied with middle, so Glaive looking to lend a helping hand to Zip, who still pays. He's oh, dead in an instant. He Deleted. Glaive also just rocked by the headshots. OG's individual level as they finally decide to come creeping out from main. Simply too much. Dexter and Fiku, 25 they health combined. They haven't planted yet. The Play math. Oh, he's going to try to challenge. If he gets that kill, now, now three of the four, so incredibly low. And Device inching ever closer. They're going to take this chance. They're going to try to make this happen. One backs up and next up point blank. Easy upgrade into the op. Play math. Do you make this play? Don't you dare save. They have no kit. I mean, sorry, they have no they have no utility to work with. He wants to go at best get this op from device. There's no way for him to win. Oh. He's out. That hold is abysmal. Zipix walks out and gets mowed. Oh my god. He cleans oh. the board. Oh, and then they find out exactly how much health was remaining. So he saves. He saves. He and saves, and people criticize it. But this time, he clears out all that money. We were he just having a conversation. There, but they lose five. Yeah, exactly. Money, money still in question. If we're talking thirty rounds of Counter Strike, then Blame F just made more impact. But back to your point, abysmal hold, dude. Yeah, Zipex could have just pre-fired from the side of the box and done more than that. Just went from a just went for a peak. They did such a good job tethering off each other last time and still lost. This time was way worse. And again, they knew it was coming. You could tell. Blade made that final rotation over towards the A site and they were locked in. It was one choke point. OG have almost won this map off that one choke point alone. Oh. And now they explode into the site. Glaive and device. It's three kills already. Make that a Zipix impact. Oh my god, they try to keep this one simple. They actually didn't have that much going into it. Nexus out of utility. 1v3. Oh. He gets the first two. Hold on. There's still another double to take. We've got Buzz on the late rotate. We've got Blame F in the far right corner. Nexus of 43 health. The walk up's coming in. Blame F doesn't want to let him get away. And Buzz slides out. Astralis tie again. And guess what? Now OG have no money. Oh my god. They, they put a lot of bank into that call. They decided to go fast towards B. The kills from Blame F at the end of the round 
influence the decision, certainly. Low by, you move fast. You know, Nexa already wants to do that when people have full kits. They've got nothing. Now he has to squeeze water from stone with no money to spend. Nothing. OG defending against map point, series point, Washington point here. They were so close to ending this. And now they're looking almost at what happened on Vertigo again in the same night. Three 30 round maps of Counter-Strike. Blame F leaving that economy bruised and OG will wince into this round with everything they can afford. Astralis, no, without a shadow of a doubt, it's an anti-eagle, but they run out mid. Oh. Man, he doesn't die. He holds one and buzz in from the top of Red Room, just over top that smoke. It's ambitious from OG, and they want to come and reclaim that gun. Maybe pick up these pieces, but buzz has had enough. He's going to go wide on the USP, and Fiku just reeks of desperation. All those counter-terrorists take what they want, and Astralis have one match point. Old Buzz from an hour ago would have walked away from that fight, smoked it, and left. But now he's playing to win. He believes in himself. It's showing in each and every single one of these rounds. Bullied all week long. Perfect timing on the push, and again, staying, disrespecting utility. We haven't seen him do that. And on round 30, it's the same buy again from OG. And again, without a shadow of a doubt for Astralis, they know it's Tech Nines coming their way. A massive information edge. God forbid they choke this. They prepare again for that full A hit. And this time it's layered. We've got a temple player over top of the box guy. Blame F. They're coming. And he only stops one. Now Buzz turns attention. A critical turning point again. But empty handed. And Device has already revealed this op. It's a desperate rotate out. Glaive and Zipix trying they, to throw themselves the into bomb. it. They have to <gasps> delay in the site because they left the bomb. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's three TTs here. They don't have information, and now they're starting to retake things. These T's have to be active, and they know the peaks are about to come. The bomb has to connect via long. The now, is holding it. That should be it. That should be the anchor, but my God! Fiku with the deagle stops them, and we are on the brink of OT. Oh Sloppy CS. <laughs> Device. It's uncanny. Again, that I, I, same the, angle. The fact that this happens again. OG left the bomb and had the entire site with tech nines. The CTs are holding oh, long with him. No! Oh. You couldn't have asked for better spots from the players no! remaining. Let's go. Let's go. OG thought they lost this already. They could see it. They could see the threads, they could see the criticism. They would have been laughed at to lose in that fashion. And now they're in overtime. Let's keep it going. Astralis, they're gonna throw Device up into Donut. He's gonna try to dive back. Secured position on green. Now the op connects. And Buzz looking for more, but OG simply don't seem to go down. Flame F pinned behind box, fire on his feet. And the T's, well, they're flashed, so they hold back. Nice headshots again. OG, immortals, somehow don't die. Oh, they need a clutch from Glaive. Listen, this would be the easiest of the bunch. Two players so low. They're looking for him on the flanks. And Glaive is getting into a spot they can't be ready for. But Glaive doesn't know what they're trying to do. The only thing he knows is that they have to get the bomb. Now, he can flank around through Donut. I don't know. I think he has the best place to, to play from. And he knows they're not coming in this direction now. Listen, this should be an easy 2K spray down. They have left long. They had their back in Donut. They expected him to come on the full flank. They think he's coming through CT. He's in the most unlikely position. He hears the rumblings of the utility. That's going to be a little more info here for Fiku. Bomb oh, grabbed. Oh, no. Oh, my God. They got it. Everything you said is still true. 
it should be an easy 2k spray down, but now he doesn't know where they're operating, and Neofrag's gonna hear that rotation. Oh my god, they're, they're sending the bomb in his direction. <gasps> he's gonna spot this, but now he's Here comes playing. Neofrag! Yeah. Creeping up behind, but he's got the cover from the box! Wait a second, he gets the information! Ten seconds! He knows now! Neofrag, did he shoot a bullet? What or the fuck? <laughs> the Glaive just figured this out! I don't know what's happening! I hate it! I hate it! I hate it! <laughs> but the CS keeps going! And his draw is half 16! It was a layup. There was never a chance that he could lose that. I, I don't I don't know, man. I I just did 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 Neofrag shoot? I don't I don't think so. I don't know. He must have, right? Like how would Glaive even think to turn in that spot? Just being aware of it, open to the box. Why did Fiku push into him? Yeah, your words exactly. Wait, what? <gasps> All right, well, Astralis, they'll take it. This map's not over. It's also very serious. It's nerves, it's pressure, and it's creating crazy situations that seem to keep on delivering. This encounter strike's not always beautiful, but it's sure as shit entertaining. And now Zipix, when at one point he couldn't even shoot a bullet, he gets a double on the AUG. Dexter sends one bullet back. And he's gonna keep on going. Molotov into the temple. Nexa plants the bomb in the corner, and we've got a post plant yet again for OG Glaive. Stuffed as smoke fades. It's gonna be a double A main flank plus a member of Astralis retaking through the donut. Dexter deep temple position. Nexa tries to split these CTs. Presence of mind. Splattered heads. And there goes the next one. OG sharp as ever. Oh, all they do is go A and it's because they're so damn good at it. They love these angles and they finally get the round. Zipix gets punished for spamming through a smoke on this position. It's not the first time Dexter will find one through a smoke with his op. That's a 3v5-1. With three alive, actually. Two ops here for Astralis. I think they need six players to win a round on A. <laughs> Even with double man advantage. all across the map. Get that bomb creeping out middle. They'll make contact. Top mid peak. Glaive on the off. And then Zipix pinned into this fight towards Cave. Able to stop Nexa. And he wants the little that's left of Neofrag as well. One bullet, enough to drop him. Reloads in. Neofrag still picks up the difference. That's a silver lining to OG. It's the T-sides that deliver. And Buzz, having pushed through main, creeps through mid. It looks really good for Buzz in this spot, but let's see. Yeah, he's got a timing. Bomb gets dropped forward. See nades cascading over the site. That looks like the two players left over will be shoved into a bad decision. Neofrag goes down. Glaive wins one, and that's the first OT out. And we look back on the first half, and we see 10 rounds for Astralis. But the back half of that was an OG comeback. Mm -hmm. That's what's most relevant. Four straight. So this will come down to who learned more, and maybe the pressure will also play a factor. As it has already. Yeah. This one's round by round. Double off adaptation gets Astralis the edge. I mean, they've had some diversified T side. Oh, not. Oh, oh, you got it. Wow. Neofrag came back for that fight. Blaze stuck around. Pays the Piper. And man, when they got leverage here inside a window, that's when they won the most. But they aren't actually going too quickly now. I mean, Flames is just sitting in the crosshair. 
the re-aggressions. Wow. Fl Flames is going to phase this, but he's not looking in the right direction. Blame just turned. Oh, Blame avoids it. They're oh stuck my in God, this fight. He's not dying. There's two here from the T's. Nexa gets the better of him. Dexter kills off Buzz. Now, all of a sudden, transition into this B play. If you're fast enough, you'll get there before OG's top mid players can double back. And it's Zipix at the front of it. Nice flash, but now they've regained vision, and he regains control. A big... Oh, my, oh my God. God. The bombs no. in spawn. They have to... Oh, okay. But it's back in with the they guns. Don't even need it. They it's don't... back in with the impact. There's 40 seconds for Dexter to rip this from their hands. This point is... And as he goes back towards middle... Oh, God. Dexter gets a second... They win this. Maybe it's good luck that they... T-Team drops the bomb and spawn. Oh, man. Dexter, slight timing. Just misses Glaive. Zipix still facing that smoke back on CT spawn. Yeah, he's given himself a chance to win this. Doing something interesting here. It's going to be hard timings to read into. Zipix could easily back up into this. If he just splits this, Dexter good for a flick. Oh, my God. Zipix pinned into the corner. Dexter starts to get into the site. Neither player watching. Now he's got cover, but he needs to clear the corner and he won't. Oh my God. Oh, he just slides between and dies for it. Both positions safe. And to be fair to Astralis right there, they cover two options. They cover two options and they have 18 rounds. They're one away. Two chances here on T side to end this game now. Going above 90 rounds in this series. And nearly surviving everything. But how many more mistakes will be made? And if any, does it cost Astralis both chances to close this in OT? Far too much compensation inside of Window in this spot. Dangerous game for Flamesy to play. But he doesn't want to let this go without a kill. He's floating. They're approaching with two. Flame F back at it. Up close. Oh, insta headshot. But then, turned back by Dexter. Yeah, 2v2. As both teams know that this is the number one point of interest in these defaults. <gasps> but I would still rather, no! oh my god, be the tease up until that moment. Attack comes in. Dexter gets traded. Zipix off of the shelf now, turns attention back. We've got Nexa not alone inside of the caves. And Zipix inching closer. He's holding. The bomb's inside of middle. They haven't decided to go B. Neofrag sits inside of Donut. Buzz is sizing up a main. Hoping for a mistake. Time on the clock here for Astralis. Feels like this one's stacked against Zipix. But OG Stoic, don't move. Can't find the late re-aggression. But Zipix, again, option coverage. He's aware of the cave push. It doesn't mean he'll get the frag. 35 seconds and not a muscle moved. Everybody statuesque. They nearly cross into the territory where one mistake means no bomb plant in this spot. Neofrag. It looks like it's coming towards him. The one player inside Donut. He goes back towards mid. He hears this sound. Nexa, <gasps> aggression, goes forward. Glaive stuck inside the smoke, and Neofrag will stop it. Buzz, what are you made of? It's a frag in front of him. Players close. First one falls. He's got to grab it and go, but the bullets will find their home. All right, setting up for a double overtime is what OG <laughs> oh wanted to God. do. After the trades go down in mid, it's Dexter's kill. Maybe that makes a difference. Even though it's traded back, taking out Device is huge. They hold in all their spots, but they OG take just the right amount of space back where they don't overextend. That and then shot. all the utility comes down. Yeah, right into his angle. It's the fight that Device wanted and nearly locked up. Nexa goes through the Molotov. Yeah, and that's, I mean, a great play again. They have to pick the site. Unravels it all. If they were going to go B, they would have already turned that corner. OG keep on fighting. Device. What's the move? Locks into the pocket. Blame F doubles back from middle. We've got a whole bunch of Danish bodies sitting outside this. Device didn't take the boost when it first was offered. Now he's going to creep upwards. Ooh, if they walk into this angle, that's great spam oh, onto heard, Nexa. Heard that jump. Flash will come. Oh, Easily caught. It's not good. Not expecting him to be there. Is this Device's chance to put Astralis into the Spring Finals? It's a 4v5 for OG. And Neofrag sniffing out the flank, drops the bomb. Again, it's going to slow things down. And again, Dexter finds his impact. Device continues to go hunting. Oh, third! 
it. And with that, the bomb sight cracked wide open. Deep smoke down towards spawn, and OG trying to survive again, but smoked off with two flashes to the names of Astralis and full belts of utility on the likes of Degster. They have to somehow break through on separate sides of this site. Finally, Astralis, a year of showdowns and two kills away, two kills secured. We'll see you in Washington. Oh, they make it happen. What an absolute movie. And it had tragedy too. OG went through it all. Damn near 100 rounds in that match. And Astralis finally closed out. After that first map, I had no hope for this series. Man. But on Ancient, it delivered and more. What a way to qualify for Astralis. Listen, it's messy. It's sloppy. There's comedy. But that's every good love story. And this is the return of the king. Device back with some of his favorite teammates. Buzz performed. It's good enough. It's good enough to best the team who constantly qualified to finals through groups. That was the story of OG in 2022. And they were that close. 16-14, 16-14, and an overtime win. A game that goes down to the wire, and I think one that is the perfect cherry on top to close out the Blast Spring groups. Incredible stuff. And we'll have James with an interview here with Banks to close out the series. Blame. What a series and what a way for that all to go down. Back and forth. So much opportunity for both teams. But let's start on the end of this ancient, right? You, you're up 10-1 first half. It's looking phenomenal for you guys. Ends 10-5. They get a few rounds stringing at the end. But then you got off to a slow start and they were stringing rounds back together. What was the turning point for you guys? I think honestly there were so many close close rounds that we just had to like have that like a couple rounds in a row because we had so many close rounds that we never really built any uh, economy that was that uh, nice so yeah it was just very stressful freeze times and you know it's very t-sided ancient now like after all the updates so it is also hard to string around like a lot of uh, like in a row you know and build up a good economy but yeah i think just if some of those clutches will have gone our way we had so many rounds against them where they also had like they just got broken. They had like 1400 or 2K and all that, and we lost some of them. But I think if we would have converted those earlier, we would have had a way better game. And what was it like when you got into the OT part of things? What was the what was the mood like in the team? Because you guys were getting like lightened up by every round, I would say. I think it was rough because we should have won those last couple rounds in in the regular time. But I do also think that when we got to overtime, we felt like we had them because we had a really good start on T side. We, had, we felt like we knew how to play against them on T side. And on CT side, as soon as we started getting the rounds, like we, we got more of them, you know, in a row. So I think we felt very comfortable as soon as we knew that now we have the economy to actually do normal rounds. So yeah, it was just, it felt uh, comfortable. And you've made it to the spring final, you've made it to Washington. I want to touch on, on Buzz because he came into this last game as the lowest rated player of the event. There's obviously heavy criticism when you put the Astralis journey, jersey on, but he performed incredibly well, especially on Ancient here. Are you proud? Yeah, I am for sure. He's a great teammate. He does what he's supposed to do and he like puts the team first and he just, you know, wants to see us succeed. And I think he could be very proud of his first tournament with us. Like. We haven't had much practice together and all that stuff, you know, and he comes in and we qualify. And last time, actually, I think we lost to OT trying to qualify for the the Royal Arena one, you know, so it, it's, it's progress since then. Yeah, so I think he did a great job. Progress and a bit of revenge as well. Now, I've got a couple of questions from Blast TV for you to answer here. May our viewers at home get to have a say in what's going on over on Blast TV. And the first thing is, who is the player of a rookie level that you think will do the best in 2023? That's hard to put me on a spot like that, honestly. <laughs> These questions are never easy. Mm, I can't remember his name, but there's one guy from Navi Junior. Like, uh, they have like a rifle that's really good. Okay. I can't remember his name. Well, uh, it's annoying. I, I, I definitely know who it is when I, when I see his name, but like, I can't remember his name. But I know they have like one guy who went a little bit under the radar after like a hit trick and Monet and all that stuff. Okay. But I think he's been banging up lately. He's probably one of the guys with the good stats, you know, probably. Maybe on care? No. Okay. Not that guy. <laughs> there we go. Poor guest slam straight away, not him. I can't remember his name, honestly, but I know they got some bangers from that team for sure. Okay, and then the other question is, who would you rather face in a 1v1? Kenny S in his prime or Simple today? 
Kenny S, because I wasn't even playing back then, so I, I, I hear a lot of like hype about it, but I never seen it myself, you know. So I hear a lot of people saying he's insane back in his prime, but I just didn't play back then, so I don't know what, like you know how good he was. So I have to choose to play against him. Okay, I love it. Blame, congratulations, thank you very much. Thank you. Man, we use the term emotional roller coaster a lot, but that map, that was the very definition of that phrase. Let me remind you guys that Astralis started off with a terrifying T side of their own, up 10 to 1 versus OG. OG then somehow answered back in that second half, but man, it all comes down to overtime. And we might as well jump into the last round right away because that was the entire story of this map going down. Honestly, a crazy game of Counter Strike begins here with Device, as you see, 18 to 17. A nice little play right here where a teammate is spamming and kind of forcing Nex out of position. Neufrag coming in with a reflex, spots the bomb as well. Dexter getting another kill, and you think at this point, ooh, it's going to be very tough for Astralis to fight their way back into the round. But all you need is Device on a Terra. Three kills, three entries, and a player who throughout the ancient game didn't have the best performance, all of a sudden steps up and single-handedly win them the game. Absolutely outstanding game of Counter-Strike. Sure, at times, wasn't the most pretty, polished Counter-Strike, but in terms of pure entertainment value, it doesn't get better. Such a roller coaster. I feel like our story has evolved like in 10 different directions throughout this game. Started with the Astralis, absolutely decimating OG. We thought, man, we, we won't have a game on our hands. OG will completely fold. They then come back, take over the game. We started getting romantic. We think about, and it's going to do it again. They're finally going to get over that last hurdle. And then towards the very end, it just gets messy. Messy. And personally, it might not be the cleanest Counter-Strike, but this is my favorite type of mm. Counter-Strike. When every rule just goes to hell, every clutch is a millimeter or a millisecond, and everything is possible, and we were at the edge of our seat this entire overtime. That's what we love, and it's so poetic to be ending out the spring groups in that fashion as well. Some incredible Counter-Strike going down short, not the most beautiful, but getting down in the mud, that's what we like to see. And it was arguably the story of the unsung heroes coming into this one as well. Glaive having a star-studded performance, Buzz as well, showing up when he was needed. Mess Massive, massive performance coming in from Glaive. He was at one point on Vertigo, 6 and 20, couldn't get anything going whatsoever. This time around, that first half, that calling on the T side, the individual impact Glaive was having in this game, absolute outstanding. And then we got to give it to Boss, yes. right? We were yes. after him and he's been, he's honestly been terrible in some of these opening duels. He's been terrible in, in the beginning of the rounds, but I said on Vertigo, he was starting to show glimpses of what he can contribute with. His Deagle, his pistols in general, this tournament so far has been good. Yes. And finally, it all came together on Ancient. He was a difference maker for us. He was helping carrying the team at times and a big part of the reason why they mm. can be proud and why he actually ended up being part of this win first. I think he's showing character. Yeah. He is showing character. That's what I'm liking very much about these young players that, of course, there are some hardships. Of course, there are maps where he feels like he's invisible and having a hard time. But still, he'll find it in himself to have impact on that ever so important last map. And I think it was Londres who mentioned at the cast, it, he said, it seems like he's not following the strat book right now. He's not following what he thinks sure. he's supposed intuition. to do. He's playing with instinct. He's playing with intuition. He's being more aggressive. He's taking more risks. And that in itself, to me, is more valuable than knowing what path you have to take on a strategy because that's what you're made of. And I think for Buzz, this last map is a great victory. Well, you mentioned the word uh, hardship. Unfortunately for OG, heartbreak at the final hurdle. But let's get a few closing words courtesy of Nexa. Nexa, not the ending you would have wanted, especially when we consider how well you guys do when it comes to Blast. But I think you can be very happy with the effort and, and, and the progress this team has made. I'm just going to come and focus on this ancient side of things. It's a map we know you guys have loved. It's a map you started off playing the event very well with. The change is all positive. But this, you were down 10-1 at the beginning. And for me, that was very uncharacteristic. It was only at the end you started to come back. At that point, though, when you go into the second half, did you feel like, OK, look, we can do it. We're getting our game back together. Because it looked like you all just had a change of momentum coming into the second half. Yeah, I think the main problem with our city size right now is that we make too many individual mistakes or we leave too many gaps to the to the opponents and um, Astralis, they, they basically knew how to exploit um, our, our, our play style, I guess, you know, and um, yeah, like we, we, t we said to ourselves, you know, if we can just somehow grab a couple of rounds, we can bring it back on T because um, historically we've always been better on, on the T side of Ancient um, than, than anything else. So, yeah, we just kept believing, you know, and I'm, I'm happy that the guys didn't give up uh, no matter what the uh, result was. And that's the thing. One thing you didn't do is give up. You guys were fighting in every single round there was a chance. Did it feel as close as it was for like what we're seeing when we're watching at home? Did it feel like you just had them on the edge the whole time? Yeah, it definitely felt super close. A lot of clutches, a lot of rounds that, you know, we, we messed up, they messed up as well. You know, I think at the end of the day, they just made less mistakes, you know, and that's why they won. What does it come down to though when you go into the OT? Like, are you playing more mind games? What did you say to your guys? Because obviously you have such an inexperienced roster in comparison to say the Astralis roster. 
I think the main thing I try to do is like um, call the rounds we feel most comfortable doing. So kind of eliminate as much of individual decision making or, or, you know, trying to put pressure on themselves as like players and just, you know, have a clear waypoint, like know exactly what they need to do. Everyone knows their role perfectly and then kind of go with that. Now, sadly, obviously, we will see you in the showdown. Some more official practice was sorted, but later in the year. But you're going into Katowice next. What does this do for you guys? And, and how happy are you with the overall games you've had here? I think um, overall we showed some good signs, you know, and I, I think um, I'm glad that we played some different maps like Vertigo, for example, to actually see where we stand on this map and what we can improve and, and fix on it, you know. So uh, we have some homework to do. And yeah, coming into Katowice, I think we can Basically, the main thing is to, to, to solidify our map pool so that we don't have to play all the time like Ancient Mirage and, and whatnot, you know. I feel you, man. Well, next year, you did very good. Thank you very much. Sad to see you go. And that series has to be a tough pill to swallow for OG because, man, I was personally ready to write them off over that heartbreak mm. of Vertigo, the fact that they come back into Ancient. They show us some fortitude, some tenacity, but not enough to avoid the showdown. And the worst part is that I don't think there is any magic formula for OG to avoid these moments. I just mm. think they have to go through them. I think they have to live through them. They have to live through these overtime games where they lose on a couple of clutches, lose on a couple of moments, because somehow, somewhere, once you've done that and you've lost and you realize that, hey, you know what? the earth still is turning, everything is spinning, life is fine, then you can go into the next one with a little bit less pressure and maybe Neofrag peaks from middle instead of hiding. I know I'm getting technical, but that's a fact. I think they need to learn to play their normal game in these high pressure moments. Yes. And that is not a given, you have to learn that. No, I think that's super valuable going forward. But a gentleman, let's not end on the lows. Let's end on some highs in our CS okay. Money Play of the Day. Of course, this is the final one that you guys can get involved with with the screen groups at home over on the Blast Premier Instagram. So Jacob, kick us off. Well, we're starting off with a bit of Sirson Magic with the AWP. Again today, he had a great showing, nice double entry middle right here and the no oh. scope is just dirty for Mr. Sirson. Finishing it off with a nice little cheeky kill through the smoke. Clean work from Sirson. Second possibility for you guys at home, we have Stan from Heroic. Of course, one of the unsung heroes, actually a very much sung heroes on that map of Inferno. A horrifyingly beautiful clutch from Stone here on Inferno. That last flick is just, mm, even Kenyon had to step on his feet and be like, what the hell is going on, Stone? What are you doing? Don't take my AWP, I like to play that role, please. It's so dirty. It's so dirty. That one? It's so good, it's so good. Another player who was so, so good in the last deciding map is, of course, Mr. Boss Fast Riders. I'm happy we get him in here. A nice rifle round, really, really determined. Getting a nice entry right here, and then he's stuck on the side. It's a 2v5, and he's playing it super calm, super collected, isolating his duels and getting every single one of them into a 1v1, but of course, he's also delivering in this scenario. And magical round coming out of Buzz. Yeah, what a huge moment for Buzz as yeah. well. Not only uh, getting a highlight of the day, obviously, in our CS Money Player of the Day, but also progressing onwards towards the Spring Finals. As ladies and gentlemen, we do have the six teams that are going to be progressing forward from the Spring wow. groups. And man, this is looking absolutely stacked, gentlemen. I don't have any complaint. I am very it's satisfied beautiful. with that, at least. Simulation is working, at least. Anders has done a primal job. Well done, Anders. Good for you, Anders. And perhaps for you. Obviously, we have two spots uh, coming in from the showdown as well, but that will be going on at later on in the year to see who else will be progressing to Washington. But that does wrap up uh, the spring finals for now. So we need to check in with James to see who's won our Mersk MVP. Oh yes, it's time to see who is going to take home this beautiful Mask MVP trophy. You guys at home over on the Blast Premier Twitter were able to take your vote over Zyru, Simple or, or Simple, Zyru or Brokey. Got the wrong name in there. But which one is it going to be? Who did you guys vote for? It is Zyru, a 1.42 rating overall. Dominant from start to finish, doing everything he could to make sure that Vitality got over the line. And they are looking incredibly crisp. Some of his shots and plays you see throughout this is ones that he was able to win multiple rounds with, clutch out opportunity for the team and continue to deliver. Now, people often say that Zyru doesn't start off the year looking too hot. So far he did and Vitality are looking very scary going into the start of the year. Looking, hopefully, to grab that Blast TV Paris Major. That's what they've been talking about. That's where their focus is. But Zai will be very happy that the fans have voted for him to grab this MVP trophy. And he is going to love every moment of it. So I'll hold on to it for now for him. Bank had to be cheeky and get that one in there. Didn't Wait, hold on a minute. Uh, now, but... Hold on a minute. How, how does he get to hold on to that MVP title when Zai was one? And I, can I, should, should I not be the one holding that title? Maybe. And he just play... Like many different favors, like he, yeah, first I, he snuck well, that like simple in there as if simple was in Matthew, there. Matthew, he is just over there. So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and go get and that done. You know, have a conversation, man to man. French representative, obviously. 
that's where you hail from. Your kid's France. done now? Or... <laughs> sorry, 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 uh, father. Where should we, what should we do now? Do you have any? Ask the host. <laughs> I think you should stay tuned in if you're watching on Blast.TV because we have the exclusive overtime show coming your way. The final one here for the spring groups. And man, we are ending on a high indeed because Device is going to be joining Lorna's and Danny down here on the chairs. Uh, you don't want to be missing a second of that, do you, gentlemen? No, I'm just happy that Device ended up winning that game. Otherwise, that would have been a, a rough one for him to, to go into the overtime. We've but always... it's good to hear from Device. And guess what? It's good to see him back on the server as well. Yeah, no, Very it's happy. been incredibly exciting. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for production. As always, make sure you're heading on over to Blast.TV to join in with the Overtime Show. Bye.